a bit em embarrassed yeah. as, as he turned to he uh, to umpire Adnan and sort of grinned at him and shrugged and you know I think I've been there once or twice. <laughs> well, do you know, <laughs> How uh, did that take away? Yeah, wicket? the level of cricket oh. I played, people sometimes exactly. used to say, R "Rubbish gets wickets, Adrian." Yeah. You know, <laughs> he goes out to Prentice and bowls, and Hill drives into the offside. Fielded there by who was that in there? Ali Orr. It was Ali Orr who took the catch as well. It was, as they say, all a bit clubby. Yeah, all villagey. Um, five in the match now. I've been Hudson Prentice. I yeah, they do. you won't mind how they come. No, absolutely. And Just as Sussex needed one, actually, and if they'd have, you know, they'll, 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 they may rue dropping that chance. Rishi Patel given a life when he was on uh, 27. Yeah. In comes Hudson Prince again, bowls to Lewis Hill. He's forward, plays down the onside. They were thinking of a single, but it wasn't there. And Put it by Curry, no run. If they can go bang, bang, as, as they say, Sussex here. Yeah. So I'm just standing with these these levels of points. There are levels of disciplinary, and, and they tot up, and I think it goes against the player and against the captain, doesn't it? So, it, you know, the captain's meant to control the players. Yeah, it, up to a point, yeah. And the captain can, uh, Colin Ackerman, um, who captained Leicester for a couple of years. Some printers in again, bowls. Oh, that's good delivery. Beats hit outside the offside. That was Lovely. a good delivery. Lovely. Taken by Carter around his midriff in front of first slip, just moving away from the right-hander. He had to miss a, a match a couple of years ago as a consequence. But, I mean, Leicestershire have, have suffered horribly um, through ill discipline. They obviously last year were deducted two points from the T20, when which made the complete difference between them qualifying for a quarter final against Surrey at the Oval, a, a match that would have resulted in them, would have produced at least a six figure sum for them. Wow. Um, Comes Hudson Prentice bowls that go outside the off stump. Not just in prize money, yeah. but obviously in their share of the gate, because the oval obviously would have been full or was, yeah. was full. Yeah. Um, but they were unfortunately on the totting up procedure, and they knew it. That, you know, it was hanging over their head, and, and, I, and I said on air at the time that um, you know the, the the player concerned needed to shut up here, mm. <laughs> and he didn't, and he was reported. And it tipped the balance. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, personally, I think it's inexcusable. I mean, everybody wants to win, but there are boundaries, and they're professional cricketers. They know the boundaries. Now, my understanding is that Sussex have already had some issues this season around disciplinary, and that's why I wanted to find out exactly what those are and who the players are and what that means for the club. I mean, everybody wants to win. I get that. But it just struck me with that wicket that immediately something was said in the way that Budginger turned round. He looked at the group of Sussex players, and the umpires immediately spoke. Um, so we'll have to try and get to the bottom of where these disciplinary points, how they rack up. Crocom is in bowls outside of some. A little bit of fizz to that delivery, but too wide. And Patel lets it go through. They seem like such a nice bunch as well. A little bit yeah, of white, a bit, sure. bit of white line fever. Yeah, and, and it's sure. that's understandable, but but not. There if. is a line, isn't there? And you know, we all want yeah. to win, and you know, we see it in all sorts of other sports, with in football and rugby. You see all discipline. But I, I, I just think it's um. Send-offs are so unnecessary. Oh, ridiculous! I, I just, I just don't understand it. Then I'm not a professional. But I, I just don't get it. Crocom bowls forward goes Patel, thick inside edge. I mean, I the, the level of cricket I've been off onside. Sorry, sorry, sorry Richard. Richard. I mean, the standard of cricket I played was very lowly. It was village cricket, uh, and I wasn't very good. Um, however. I, I came from the, the, the school where if, if, if someone got a 50, you applauded, and if someone got a 100, you doubly applauded. And, you know, we, we, we even used to applaud players to the wicket when they walked out. I mean, it was that polite. But there were others in the team who said, what are you applauding a 50 for? You know, we, we want to get him out. So I, I do, perhaps I, you know, perhaps I was too much the other way. But um, I, I, just, I just don't really get it, these send-off business. Crocom is in. Bowles driving again is Patel. Not entirely convincingly. It's along the ground all, all the way out towards the sweeper who's out there already. A little bit surprised. But on the other hand, 57 for one now. Leicestershire 103 short, therefore, of making Sussex bat again. Runs do matter. I, I played all my league cricket in, in Yorkshire. We certainly didn't applaud the batsmen to the wicket. Yeah, right? we did. We or, or anything like that. Yeah, but, we but did. We, we, we used to, whenever a new bat came out, we'd say, man in, and everyone would applaud. 
<laughs> oh goodness, that's, that's terribly, how terribly nice of you all. <laughs> In goes Crocombe and, uh, and Bowles Hill. Edges caught, beautifully caught at first slip. Really nice catch by Tom Allsop to his right, two-handed. Crocombe's been threatening to do that. Got the one to move away from Hill. Thick edge flew quickly, but Allsop took a very neat catch. And well, Sussex have gone bang, bang. Hill goes without scoring. He's been one of uh, Leicestershire's mainstays in the batting lineup this season, Sussex cock a hoop. Absolutely good catch by Tom Allsop. You've called that absolutely right, Richard. That was that it was um, it was waist high, but it was travelling, and it was a really good catch by Tom Allsop. He was very very good in that position. And Henry Croker, I think, would have been one of the bowlers who would have been slightly disappointed with his performance yesterday. Eleven overs, he bowled uh, one for fifty-seven, and it was he and Brad Curry who got a bit of tap from Chris Wright which I don't think was um, desperately impressed the, the, the Sussex coaching staff. Um, but he's bowled much better this morning. And uh, that's a fine catch. And certainly there's a bit of pressure on Leicestershire here. Oh, yes. Ackerman, a man who started the season in form. He isn't in form at the moment. Uh, come on, Sussex. Man in. Durham of one. Durham have beaten York. Have they? Wow. So they got across the line. That's a big win. Huge win. That's a big win uh, for Durham, who have started the season very, very well indeed. And Sussex beat the first game of the season. That was a good scalp. It was. Looking better by, by the day, isn't it? It is. That's three wins for Durham, I think, now. Yeah, let's check where that uh, leaves the table. I'll go into the BBC website and have a little look. Crocom is in to Ackerman, who is beaten outside of stump. Oh, did he curtain rail the bat back inside the line? But a good line, whatever, from Henry Crocom. Let's have a look at the table. Oh, it hasn't updated the points yet. Yes, yeah, you're quite right there. That'll be a third win for Durham. And they extend their lead at the top of the second division, beginning to look like it's going to be Durham and one other. thought with the way that um well, is Matthew Potts for a while with the ashes because they will yeah they will Ben Rain bowling well yeah. I understand Crocom is in dug out rather by Ackerman full delivery played firmly out towards mid on well bowled Henry Crocom important wicket removed the opposition skipper three overs one for nine for Crocom 57 for two Leicestershire still 103 short of making Sussex bat again. You're listening to live cricket. A very good morning, wherever you're listening from. I understand the stream is up and working. So well done, fellas. And I'm, I'm going to stick up for you know for the clubs who try to make these streams work because some clubs have a lot of people working on the streams and others don't. I think Leicestershire are probably in the latter category, as indeed are Sussex. And there are days when it's very frustrating. Which has got to do an update for us. goes Hudson Prentice and Bowles. Forward goes Rishi Patel. Well, Leicestershire made a good start this morning in the persons of Rishi Patel and Sol Budinger, but Budinger has gone. He was caught in the covers, a long hop from Finn Hudson Prentice that uh, the left-hander didn't get hold of at all. He's gone for 17, and they've also lost Lewis Hill. The captain didn't get off the mark before edging Henry Crocombe to Tom Allsop at first slip. So wickets falling at 56 and 57 for the Foxes. They are still close to 100 short of making Sussex bat again with an awful lot of work to do to save the game. That one from Hudson Prentice beat Patel on his outside edge. He bowled really well for he Hudson has, Prentice yesterday. He's he bowling well here today. Well, you described him as sort of getting nip, and that's what he does. He's got that extra little bit of yeah. nibble and nip. And there's something there that he, that he finds usually, often off the seam. He makes things happen. Runs in and s gives it up, sort of as he gets to the crease. Yeah, so he, he, lost, lost, he lost his run there. I don't think there uh, was a, any sort of change in the field. It certainly wasn't Colin Ackerman who, uh, who moved away. Just seeing replays of the Hill dismissal. It was a super delivery. Just outside off stump. Perhaps had to play at it. 
Watson Prentice is in down the wicket goes Patel playing out to mid off we've sort of swapped haven't we because of that update do you yeah. want to finish do you want to oh yeah, should we go sure. back this yeah. to where we were so two slips in a gully deep backward point extra cover mid off mid or mid wicket and a fine leg so live cricket on BBC Radio Leicester and Sussex Adrian Harms and Richard Ray here on commentary on a lovely sunny day good morning for Sussex so far they picked up a couple of wickets but Rishi Patel is still there on 36 he has been put down this morning Hudson Prent is in bowls and forward comes Patel very solidly plays into the offside no run it was a a difficult chance to Tom Clark diving away to his right in the gully he got both hands on it Managed to scoop the ball in the air and then agonisingly he had to lie on the ground and watch it as the ball just dropped a couple of inches in front of him and he couldn't scoop it up again. Would have been a fine catch. And since then, Sussex have picked up a couple of wickets. Budinger for 17 and as Richard was saying, Lewis Hill, the skipper, without scoring. Hudson Prentice in, bowls, good delivery again. Pitching around middle and off and Patel is not to be tempted. He's forward and plays into the offside. And again, there is no run. And the magic figure for Leicestershire um, to make Sussex bat again is 160. A change in the field now as James Coles comes up from his position at the deep backward point to an orthodox point, saving one. That's because they want to get Colin Ackerman on strike. But for the next over, Ackerman, who uh, is on a pair, and Prentice in again, bowls and forward comes up Patel, very solidly, very soundly, played into the offside, fielded by Ali Orr, there is no run, Sussex running between overs because the over rate on the scoreboard is still showing as plus two, and as um, we mentioned yesterday, Sussex already deducted four points this season for a slow over rate, well, we'll be very keen not to incur the wrath of the umpires uh, in this game, so they're getting a little bit of a move on. And it's going to be Henry Crocombe who picked up a wicket in his last over. Who's going to come into bowl to Colin Ackerman, who will be very keen to avoid the ignominy of a pair. Crocombe. Very straight run in and bowls. Really good bounce and lift. But outside off stump, Ackerman leaves, taken almost shoulder high by Ollie Carter. That one uh, really did hurry through from young Henry Crocombe. Yes, I mean, he's got the ability to bowl quite quickly, Henry Craig. Well, I think quicker than the other seamers. But you are seeing that it has run up to have a word with him. Mm. And Change now, your field. Yeah, again, the, the Sussex are a little bit guilty of this. You know, we're halfway through the over. We, you know, we're changing fields around again. They're going to have a mid-wicket or square leg or someone out deep. Square leg, it would seem, and mid on. Crocombe is in. Ackham bowls very straight and on a length. Ackham and blocks it back down the pitch to him. Yes, Durham uh, now, Richard, played 5 1 3, lost 1, drawn 1. They've got 82 points. They are 23 points clear of Glamorgan, who are in second place. Sussex will go above Glamorgan, whatever whatever happens here. Well, lose. draw or yeah, draw they're not going to lose. They're they're not gonna they're gonna draw or win, they'll go second. Yeah. Crocombe in bowls full oh goes for the drive and misses it taken by carter to his left behind the stumps this is super stuff from crocom yep. almost had his man there Ackerman. it looks so good in the first two games form can be fleeting it can <laughs> Class. It's supposed to be permanent, <laughs> isn't it? That's the theory. That's what they say. <laughs> Mr. Gower tells us. In goes Croke and Bowles. Ackerman leans forward and defends pleasantly. Mm. Out uh, correctly. Pleasantly, but there is something pleasant about no, it. There was. A correct defensive shot pushes it out to Pajara, who is covering both mid off, trying to cover both mid off and extra cover sort of shot that gives a player confidence, I think, Richard. That was right out the middle of the bat. Stands up tall, Ackerman, as Crocombe is in. Bowls to him. He's driving, and he should get off the mark, or tumbles to his right. He's, he's deep-ish at backward point there. 
just to give himself uh, time to see the ball. Ackerman, he's off a pair at any rate, so that, that will be, despite his experience, just a, a little si in an internal sigh of relief, I'm sure, about that. Just look some more details on that, Durham win. It was just by one wicket. Uh, ben Rain finished 50, not out. 50? Yeah. Well done, Rainey. Um, Potts oh. was out for 25. Bryden Carls did need to bat. In goes Croke and bowls left by Patel outside off the stump. Good over from Henry Crokem. No wickets in it. Just one added since Hill was dismissed. Well, that was an exciting finish. Yeah, it was. So, so all results possible until the very final ball. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ben Rain. He's a good cricketer, isn't he? Well, yeah, he was here for seven years, I think. Rainy, with various nicknames. Purple was one at one stage. Um, an extraordinary game. Da -da -da -da. The run chase looked easy at 147 for three, but then dead at 173 for eight. Um, Rain walks off to a hero's reception, 50 not out. In comes Hudson Prentice, bowls let go by through to keep a carter there is no run um so pots made 25 before being to smith with just two needed and it says yorkshire's barren run continues they haven't won since april last season but they've got close so many you know they, they were close against leicestershire they've been close against durham they're just not quite going for them at the moment no. i hope there isn't a sort of knee-jerk reaction But also, it's a terrific delivery. And he had um, Ackerman groping outside his off stump. The ball goes through into the gloves of Carter. No run. He's really got the ball with a piece of string here as Hudson Prentice. Um, Bryden Cast came out as the last man with a runner in that game. So it was okay. a bit drama. Did he face any deliveries? He did. He got the final runs. Did he? Uh, yeah. A little nick down to third man. Ooh. Immediate reaction by uh, I mean obviously there'll be criticism, but I hope there isn't it doesn't result in anything more than that. Put some prejudice in bowls up on his toes is Ackerman and plays that into the offside fielded by all there is no run. A lot of Yorkshire supporters were sort of on various social media, etc. after the defeat by Leicestershire saying, Oh how, how can we lose to Leicestershire? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Otis Gibson, head coach at Yorkshire at the moment, he, his first reaction was well, what a great game of cricket that was. What a, what a great final day. And, you know, it was a, a win for cricket. Yorkshire supporters don't yeah. tend to see it that no, way. Well, unless I, I, they win. <laughs> I, thought it was, I thought it was the sporting story of the weekend. I've got to say, in comes Hudson Prentice and Bowles. And Ackerman is forward, plays to mid on no run. That was the weekend, I think, of the Masters. Um, and there was some good football that weekend as well. And I remember thinking the sporting headline for me of the weekend was Leicestershire winning at Headingley. <laughs> you know, brilliant run chase. Um, I've had some response actually. We were talking about disciplinary matters, and clearly there was some sort of an issue when Sol Budinger was out. And Collins went in touch, and he says, "I do understand your stance on this matter, but it's time for Sussex to show their teeth. Don't forget, these guys have gone through the mill for three seasons. Let's get on with it." And that, and if that leads to it, how many in a minute? In comes Hudson Prentice Bowles, played to backward point. There is no run. He says, "Let's get on with it, and if that leads to a fine, so be it," says Colin. Well, I, everyone's entitled to their opinion. I'm, I'm a, I, I do understand. I just think there is a fine line between wanting to win, aggression, determination, but there is a line, and I think as professionals, everybody knows where that line is. And I, whatever, uh, clearly something was said, Colin. I don't know what it was, and maybe it won't be part of a disciplinary. But um, it, I, it's just personal, really. I, I just don't like to see it. In comes Hudson Prentice over the wicket bowls. Really good over from Finn Hudson Prentice, really making Colin Ackerman play. Ackerman survives, which is to his eternal credit. He's one not out. Leicestershire are 58 for two. Rishi Patel is on 36. Leicestershire still needing another 102 if they're going to make a uh, Sussex batter game. Yeah, they've come grinding to a halt, the Foxes. Not quite reasonably quickly to 56 without loss, but... Uh, since Budinger was out, just the two runs added. Sussex in control 
at the moment in every respect. The ball arrives in the hands of Henry Crocom at the top of his run. A couple of uh, walking strides before knees start pumping, runs down the slope, bowls to Patel who drives pleasantly, but more or less straight to Orr at extra cover in front. In front of Orr, a very used track, a track that's I think used for practice, for warm-ups and things like that, so not easy to feel there. No, it's not. He's a good fielder actually, Ali Orr, isn't mm. he? He saved a number of runs in this game. Yeah, very much in the game, but extra cover as Crocombe bowls and uh, Patel is going to pick up a run there. Thick inside part of the bat deflects the delivery off leg down towards long leg. Takes one, moves on to 37, 59 for two. Brings Ackerman down on strike. Just the single off 13 deliveries for Colin Ackerman. Fourth slip, James Coles goes in for the South African as in goes Croke and Bowles to him. It depends on the back foot or off stump. Coles runs across towards point to field. There's no run. Warming up down at uh, mid on it looks like Brad Curry. He's going for a warm up with the head bolt. Hudson practice very sparingly. Can't wait unless he's doing a little dance to it. Uh, It's been a super spell, one for 11. Might be another over in him. Comes scampering in and bowls squared up a little bit is Ackerman. He edged, he edges the delivery down th through Coles and that's actually going to run down to the third man boundary for four. So an extremely fortuitous boundary to Colin Ackerman. It wasn't a chance, it, it bounced a long, long way short of Coles. Carmela is doing some really extraordinary <laughs> calisthenics now on his back at uh, mid-on with his great long legs extended in the air and then sort of doing cross-scissor twists of some kind which will probably leave us needing traction, Adrian, I, I suspect. You'll be all right, Richard. Well, I don't know. John Brody, the Sussex sister, is just chatting away to Finn Hudson Francis just down below. So. Short and wide, and Ackerman lifts his bat over the line of the ball, lets it bounce through to Carter. Um, Phil Tibbs has been in touch on Sussex Cricket at bbc.co.uk. Good to hear from you, Phil. I'll read your email in a moment. You can tweet us as well at Fox's Creek, C R I C K 2023. And having said you sent us an email, for, oh, wait, wait, send us a picture. Um, Phil is. My app's telling me it's 16 degrees here, which we're very grateful for, I hasten to add, because it's been in single figures up to now. Carvalho's running away from us in on bowls and forward comes. That's how it plays into the offside no run. Yeah, actually, um, I was watching the weather yesterday, or whatever, the day before, and they said it was the warmest day of the year. Uh, in Great Britain, I think it was somewhere in Northern Ireland or the west coast of Scotland. So like 22 degrees, Northern Ireland or the west coast of Scotland. So like 22 degrees, and the guy presenting the weather forecast said, he said, mind you, there's nothing to shout about, really. <laughs> um, it really has been very cold. 
Yeah, morning, miserable. morning to Robert, who's who's been wild swimming in the River Cam. Oh. That was uh, invigorating. In comes Carvalho's bowls. Oh, we've very nearly breached Patel's defences there. The ball wrapping him around the five pad bounces down in front of Rishi Patel, and there is no run. Yeah, we were talking, weren't we? I don't know if it was on or off air, Richard, about the uh, about river swimming, and certainly the rivers around where I live. You, 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 in fact, I went out. I did a report on some wild swimmers in in the River Way, uh, in, in a town called Godalming, and the people there they do test the water before they get in to yeah, make sure you have that, to. that there's these not, days yeah there's not any you know horrible sewage floating around in it. Here comes Carvalho's bowls let go outside the off stump there is Daryl. They're in there with they, they took some samples and then they got their sort of lit, almost like litmus paper yeah. before they gave the all clear for everyone to get in. I saw some awful pictures of, of the Trent this morning, not too very far from here, which are discoloured and stinking. Yeah. Unfortunately, they seem to be able to do what they want in terms of discharging sewage these days. Mm. Yes, we'll try not to get political, but it's not great, whatever way you want to look at it. In comes Carvalho's bowls, and up on his toes is Patel defends to mid on. There is no run. The scoreboard has almost ground to a halt, which, um, from a Leicestershire perspective, they'll be pleased they haven't lost any more wickets. But Sussex will be pleased that you know, all the time, you know, this is just keeping the pressure on the Leicestershire. Absolutely. They're not going anywhere, are they? No. Morning to Mike, who can't be at the ground today to other commitments. Happy that the stream is now working. Uh, Callum May has been in touch. I'll read your email in a minute. In comes Carvalho's bowls to who plays into gully, fielded by Tom Clark, and there is no run. And Jake's eyebrows raised, the stream starts working and we start losing wickets. <laughs> <laughs> Callum says, I'm calling this one. If Sussex can win this, it'll show we have the the minerals, what if that should be materials, to, to finish the season in a promotion spot. If we let it drift away, then we're looking at Division 2 stuff again next season. It's about attitude and will and stamina and all that stuff. I would love to know what Steve Smith is saying to his younger and less experienced colleagues. Um, he's cl and uh, Callum is cleaning his bike in the back garden in northwest London. Henry Crocombe bowls outside off stump to Colin Ackerman. It swings away and Ackerman lets it swing away. Um, this was only uh, what I heard from a very reliable source this morning. Um, a couple of things about Steve Smith. I mean, he may not have had the best time with the bat here, but what I would say is that whilst he's been here and done at Worcester last week, he's signed every autograph he's asked to sign. He's posed for every single selfie. Um, and why wouldn't you? But, you know, I, I think that's pretty good for a to do that. Crocombe bowls. Ackerman drives hard down into the ground, but two-handed to his left. Crocombe, like a... Very competent goalkeeper, makes an unfussy save. I did hear that, that last night he, he was sitting around a, a group of the younger Sussex players in the hotel chatting away. And one of the great thoughts was that he, you know, when you get a player of his experience around a group, that the younger players will pick up on his experience. And I think that's happening as well. So it may not have happened on the pitch, but off the pitch he's made a good impression. Croke and bowls, Ackerman leaves outside off stump. Leaving what he can at the moment, Colin Ackerman, five off, 19 deliveries for him. Um, so I wouldn't be quite as extreme as saying if they don't win this, it means Division 2 next year. I, I, th I think it would be a big statement from the bowlers because the big criticism has been, well, not crit well observation, it's a fact, Sussex haven't been able to bowl sides out. So this is a, a big opportunity for these younger seamers to show they can do it. Crocom is bowling. Ackerman is lifting his right foot as he drives and Pajara did get a right hand to that one as he sort of tumbled across to his right, slowed it down, saved three runs at least. He's a bit cross with himself. Just gives his uh, thigh a little bit of a slap and self-admonition. Midon ran across to complete the fielding. Ackerman picks up one, moves on to 664 for two. Square leg or mid-wicket retreats to deep ish mid wicket stroke square leg as Crocombe is in and bowls short delivery up on his toes is Patel defending it nicely down at his feet off off stump when Callum says he's cleaning his bike I'm presuming he means his, his push bike um, yeah up in 
your first London. Do you, do you do that regularly, Richard? You have to, I'm afraid. The, uh, Keep the chain. Exactly, yeah. It, once you start going out in these sort of damp conditions, it picks up all sorts of gunge and mm. wears quickly as a consequence if you don't keep it clean. Crocum is in and bowling outside off stump goes for the big drive patel and misses taken by carter and he gets away with it rishi patel maybe a little bit of frustration there lack of scoring lack of runs coming so another good over from henry crocom his sixth one for 16 just the single from it 64 for two leicestershire it was three weeks ago richard um, a friend of mine I went on a charity bike ride around the, the Surrey Hills, and there are some hills in Surrey, some quite nasty hills. They're on Zwift as well. <laughs> and my uh, my bike is a is a mountain bike with very wide tyres, which wasn't really suitable for a road. As in comes Ari Carvelas running in over the wicket bowls and lets that go. Good delivery and a good leave by Ackerman through to Carlton no run. Famously Box Hill. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. And actually Fox Hill, funnily enough, as well. Uh, and Talk about the foxes. Leith Hill. Yeah. All pretty but uh, the guys I were with all had pretty good bikes with slimmer tyres. And I know you should never blame your tools, but dear, oh dear, I, I did huff and puff my I way around. Were, dear, yeah, oh dear, I was in, on a mountain bike. Yeah. yeah. You were spinning away, were you? Oh, it's hard work. <laughs> I've got to the end. I've never been so relieved to finish. Comes <laughs> oh, well. Carvajos. Bowls and forward comes Ackerman defensively into the offside field by all. And there is no run. Yeah, the long old climb, so it is. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Callum. He's followed up his, uh, his email. Yeah. Um, so he's been busily cleaning it. I don't know if Callum, you're from Sussex and now living in northwest London. But uh, thank you for getting in touch. So this relatively short run is in and bowls and it just drifts away he, he just bowls a nagging line of length he's not quick is he Ari Cavellas but he's he's a sort of bowler he, perhaps he can't well last time I said this he got hit for four but when he bowls that length it's, it's he's just nagging away he's working his way just outside of off stump was it 21 or 22 overs or so he bowled in the first innings so he's up to eight and a half now so he's approaching 30 for the game yeah, 21 overs, 5 maidens, 4 for 79. He's in again. Bowls. Oh, he's hit on the pad and he's given out! And Colin Ackerman is on his way. And that nagging line and length again does the trick for Adri Carvelos. Prodding forward, Colin Ackerman. He didn't get all the way forward. The ball hit him halfway up the pad. And I think Carvelos thought he got his man pretty much before the umpire's finger went up. Colin Ackerman sort of looked towards the umpire, whose finger was raised. And Sussex get another important breakthrough. And it's Ari Carvelos who picks up his fifth wicket of the match. Ackerman is gone for six. And that did look a pretty good shout from here. I'm afraid palpably leg before wicket. Sort of half forward, leaning forward. Where's the umpire going? To the loo, I think. Yes, so he is. he's using the facilities at the, at, at the Bennett end, but uh, he has time. James Middlebrook, Ackerman's poor trot continues, I'm afraid. He never looked comfortable out there, did he, really? The four he got was fortuitous. I mean, the ones really have dried up because... 25 balls he faced for that six. Um, because Leicestershire were 56 without loss. They were, and all of a sudden, 64 for three. But this happened in the first innings, didn't it? From 70 for one to 79 for four. Budinger, Hill, Ackerman. On that occasion, it was uh, Patel, Ackerman, and Hill. They really do need Peter Hanscom now. You asked me at the beginning of the day which of the Leicestershire batsmen were the likeliest to uh, occupy the crease for a, for a long period for straight Sussex. Well, these are the two. Peter Hanscom. Who's coming to the crease, Rishi Patel, who's been at the crease since yesterday evening. Break this partnership before lunch. And Sussex really will think they can go on. I think I'm sure they would anyway. I mean that possibly would have taken three wickets in the in the morning. Four or even five. And they'd be 
delighted. Rishi Patel and Ali Orr deep in conversation at a distance. Yes, that's it's an interesting one. Hmm. Well, maybe they know each other. But Indeed. Uh, where are we, are we in the 26th? Yeah. 25.4. So um, it was 17.1 overs when Budinger was out. So I think that's eight overs to add eight runs. And comes Harry Cavalos, comes in a bowls. Oh, he lets that one go outside the off stump, taken by Carter. And there is no run. He was very angry with the shot himself with the shot he played in the first innings, Hanscom. When he was uh, caught by Carter, reaching for one from Curry. He's almost metronomic, isn't he, in his approach here, Harry Cavalos. It's, um, it, it's just this delivery. It's you know, pitching round about middle and off, making the bats and play. He's in again. There we go again. As Hanscom is forward, plays to mid-wicket, and there is no run. There's a good over by Erica Vallis, who's doing a good job for Sussex in his first game of the season. He's picked up five wickets. He takes his hat and um, sunglasses from the umpire. Gets a pat on the back from James Cole. 64 for three are Leicestershire. 37 to Rishi Patel. Peter Hanscom is yet to score. The men out, Sol Bullinger for 17. Uh, Lewis Hill without scoring. Colin Ackerman in that over for six. Still 90, uh, no, uh, yeah, 96 needed to make a Sussex bat again. I suspect what will please Pajara and the coaching staff is that wickets taken by different Sussex bowlers. Three, three wickets, three different bowlers. They're all contributing here, and that's what they need to do to maintain the pressure and that with Curry coming back into the attack to replace Crocombe is what he needs to do now as well. Out with a helmet comes the 12th man, Ollie Carter will stand up to the stumps. Rishi Patel being inclined to uh, get forward or step forward, step out of his crease against Brad Curry to try and negate the, the swing a little bit. Now, is he, come on, get on with it here, Sussex. Machara is unhurried yeah. in, in his captaincy as well as his batting. Yeah, you know, again, you know, they're rearranging the field. So, the, so you know, Patel has been ready for probably 30 seconds. Now the helmet is bought out. Now they're rearranging the field. Now Tom Clark isn't sure where to go. I know it's just an observation because Sussex do need to watch this over rate. They're plus two already. Curry is in, bowls on the legs of Rishi Patel, and he's comfortable with that one, turning it down through backward square, down towards wide long leg. Comes in to meet the ball, and one is taken. Patel onto 38, 65 for three. Leicestershire limping, wounded, slowly towards their distant target. Very pleased with my friend. I was talking yesterday about uh, my local Indian restaurant, and it's run by some excellent Bangladeshi guys who are all off to Chelmsford today to see the one-day international. And last week when I got my takeaway, sounds like a weekly takeaway, he said, oh, I hope it's a nice day next Sunday, Adrian. And it is, and he'll be very pleased. Curry is in again onto the legs of Hanscom, who's hurried a little bit as he turns the delivery out towards mid-wicket, where Crocombe. it is fielded by Henry Crocombe. They're playing at Chelmsford, Bangladesh, 123 for two in the 21st over, and that will be a packed house at Chelmsford today, and I hope everyone's having a great day. It's the second of the two one-day internationals. Bangladesh won the first one with three balls to spare. A good day being had by all, I'm sure. Curry leans forward into his run. Ball to him! Straight through Peter Hanscom and Sussex now all over Leicestershire. Hanscom leant forward, heard the timbers go behind him, stump out of the ground, the off stump that is, and uh, well, one of Leicestershire's main hopes of saving the game, Peter Hanscom comes and goes horribly quickly as far as they are concerned. Just the three deliveries for Hanscom loses his off stump and Leicestershire now in all sorts of strife on 65 for four. Well, you made the point, uh, Richard, that what will please the Sussex coaching staff is that uh, the wickets have all been taken by separate bowlers. 
Hudson Prentice, Crocum, Carvelos and Curry have all picked up a wicket this morning. Um, and um, without wishing to add salt to the wounds, Leicestershire have lost four for nine here. I mean, they reached 56 without loss and looked in relatively relative comfort. There was a, a sharp chance that was put down by Clark um, and a big appeal against Sol Budinger. But there we are. It just goes to show how games can change. Good, accurate testing bowling. It is indeed. Nothing wrong with the pitch here, folks. Leicestershire will be very disappointed the wickets that they have lost. Well, Vian Mulder, who showed hints of form in the first innings, played some lovely shots and then he got out straight after T, didn't he? Just didn't look interested when <laughs> he was pinned leg before uh, wicket by Ari Carvelas. Well, he's got a huge job on here. Can he stay with Rishi Patel? He has to until lunch at the very, very least. Curry is in and bowls to him. He leaves outside off stump. A little bit of shape back in to Carter. Well, the morning has gone better than Sussex could have dreamed, I think. I said this morning that I thought a draw was the, the most likely result. I mean, this is a, it is a good pitch. There's a little bit in it, and it, and it has been the whole time, I think, if you're prepared to pitch the ball up. But it's not a minefield by any manner of means. It's not. It's not a pitch on which you should be losing four wickets for nine runs. Curry in. Bowls onto the legs of Mulder. Clips him down to long leg. Oh, super diving stop down there by Ari Carvelas. He judged it to perfection, Carvelas there. He was running diagonally towards the ball and dive towards it in the end and just managed to get his right hand to it and saved two runs. He lost his sunglasses in the uh, in the process. Oh, that's a small price to pay. Good stop. And the quick bowler who oh, I'm sure he's got a few aching limbs. His first game of the season but it was a good chase. But that's why you do your pre-season fitness training, isn't it? You know. Yeah. Back, backing up his fellow bowlers as well. Curry in past umpire Middlebrook bowls. Forward goes Mulder. Slightly closed back face as he pushes that one out to mid-off. But another successful over. And uh, Mulder's going to have to change his bat. Another successful over for the Sussex bowling attack. Their fourth of the morning. Curry, one for 20 from six overs. Big wicket, though, that of Peter Hanscom, yes. the Australia Test batsman. Gone without scoring. Leicestershire, 67 for four. Still needing 93 more to make Sussex bat again. Uh, Zach Crawley out for 56 for Kent, Kent 122 for two, still trailing Hampshire by 156 at Canterbury. Looks like he's heading for a draw at Old Trafford, Somerset 193 for four, leading Lancashire by 228. Uh, Middlesex collapsing this morning at the Oval as in comes Ari Carvelos over the wicket bowls, let go outside the off stump by Rishi Patel, and there is no run. Um, Middlesex 198 for eight, just leading Surrey by 27. Up the M1 at Derby, Gloucestershire 267 for no, they're not, they're 264 for seven, leading Derbyshire by 13. If you missed it earlier on Durham with a nail biting win today, they've beaten Yorkshire uh, by one wicket at the Riverside Brighton Cars. Was actually injured, came into bat and got the winning couple of runs. Ben Ray making 50 not out. Carvelos in, bowls forward comes Patel, defends into the offside. There is no run. Two slips in a gully, backward point, cover mid off. They're all saving one. Then on the onside of mid on, a square leg. Henry Croak in deep conversation with the umpire and a fine leg. It's Carvelos off a shortish run. Let me see if I can see how many steps is one, two, about 13 paces in a bowl. Well pitched up, driven nicely down the ground, but Pajara is very quickly across, throws the ball and hits the stumps. But uh, Rishi Patel was um, very safely home. And it's just uh, a single to Rishi Patel who goes to 19, 39. I might have to go because I've got my update. I've just realised, Richard. Sorry yeah, about no, that. No problem. Yeah, Carvelis is run. 13 steps but he's got such long legs you can feel he could do it in about three strides if, if he really stretched out but uh, 
he takes quite small steps. One for 24. For Carvelas, the wicket of Ackerman to his credit. He's now bowling at Vian Mulder. Runs in, bowls, Mulder leaves outside off stump. He's rotated his bowlers nicely. Pajara, Seam, all morning, understandably. And still the ball is only 27.4 overs old. So four wickets for nine runs in the space of sort of 10 overs or so. Huge damage being inflicted on Leicestershire second innings. Carvelas in, Mulder thick inside edge as he leans forward into that defensive shot at a straightish delivery. Runs out into the onside where Henry Crocombe is the fielder. It's forward of square, not quite at mid-wicket. Lovely morning weather-wise here in Leicester. Not so much for Leicester Shire. In goes Carvelas. A little bit short outside off stump for one. Smulder up on his toes looking to force it out into the offside. Doesn't really time it and all. Makes a comfortable stop on about the third bounce at extra cover. End of the over. 68 for four off 28 Leicestershire. 74 overs remain. To Sussex to take the remaining six wickets and, if necessary, score any runs that they require to be scored. Rishi Patel, who's watched the carnage at the other end on 39, will be facing Brad Curry from the Bennett end. Curry is in, bowls down the pitch, little shuffle. And then a forward defensive from Patel as he blocks it out into the offside or with his orangey-yellow reflective shades on the back of his Sussex cap runs into field. No friends of Grace Road today, alas, in the afternoon. As Curry is in, bowls, forward goes Patel, deflecting the ball down towards Gully. Bouncing rather to his left from backward point is Tom Clark, so no runs. And no cake post to lunch. But the way Sussex are bowling, how deep into the afternoon might the match go? Another one before lunch. But less Shabbatted better in the second half of their first innings than, than, than the top order managed. They're going to have to do so again if they're going to save this game. Curry is in. Patel, big stride forward, back up the pitch it goes between Mulder and the Stumps, Pajara Fields. Moving across from mid-off. They were 135 for six and 160 for seven in their first innings. Having been 70 for one before Rehan Ahmed, Chris Wright, and uh, Will Davis restored a certain amount of respectability to their first innings. Curry is in. Carter standing up to the stumps now again. Patel forward and defends off off stump into the offside. Once again, the scoreboard going nowhere really, so Pajara has a certain amount of freedom to set as many close catches as he wants. There are just the two slips at the moment. Allsop at first and Smith at second slash third. Standing a little bit wide. In goes Curry. Defends again Patel. Nice high left elbow. Pushes it back towards the bowler. And Clark's at a sort of deepish gully. It is, it is a catching position because he takes a couple of strides closer uh, before the ball is delivered. In from the cover boundary. 
comes James Coles. Ian Ord sort of gesturing at each other, rather. In goes Curry. And Clark is uh, going to be chasing that one, and he's not going to get there because it was a little bit of width from Brad Curry and a rare moment of release for Leicestershire because Patel strokes it away backward of point two, the backward point boundary for four. He moves into the 40s, onto 43, 72 for four. A rare boundary in recent overs for the Foxes, who are now 88 short of making Sussex bat again, avoiding the ignominy of an, of an innings defeat, at, at least, if they do that, if they, if they get past 160, but long way to go. Carvelas is in to Vian Mulder outside off stump with that now familiar grunt of effort. Mulder just uh, lets it go and walks away towards short leg. Well, there have been some happy listeners, uh, Adrian, in, in the Brighton area and on the south coast when you told them that four wickets had fallen since your previous yeah, update. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, there was a rather lengthy weather forecast that I was listening to before I did my cricket update, and it was saying some of the, the low cloud hasn't quite cleared the Sussex coat, so I had a great joy in telling them how lovely it was here in Leicester this morning. <laughs> As in comes Harry Carvelas running away from us to bowl to be a mole who drives down the ground. Carvelas stops the ball with one hand. And there is no run. And the other good news was I, the, the long range forecast I'd seen was not that great for next week. But I think they're saying um, not particularly warm um, into next week and a few showers earlier on. But then a bit of high pressure coming in and hopefully um, staying largely dry, which might augur well for next week of the game at Hove. And Sussex play Glamorgan. Let's hope so. And comes Carvelos Bowles. Up on his toes is Via Mulder. Runs rather cramped and plays into the offside. There is no run. And you'd have thought with a with an array of you know the, the Labashanes and the Smiths and maybe the the Nieces and the Robinsons, hopefully all playing in that match. Um, if we get a bit of decent weather, be a few people coming down to Hove to watch the game. Let's hope so. Let's just hear off next week to the lovely ground, which is Worcester, one of my favourite grounds. In comes Carvelos and Bowles. Let go outside the off stump. There is no run. What I really enjoy uh, down at Worcester, Richard, is that we're all, all the press and the... Um, it's a fairly antiquated press box, but it, it, it's perfectly serviceable and very nice. And I, I love the chatter and the, and the banter you get in the press box at, at Worcester. It's really great fun. I thoroughly enjoy my days down there. John Curtis, sir. Yeah. Long time denizen of said press box. Oh, he's really good. And he runs around, John. He was so upset last week. One day the food didn't arrive and he was running around getting the lunches. It's, it's just great fun. In comes Cabellos. Bowls and played onto the onside. There is nobody. It's just that sort of camaraderie. I, I, I just thoroughly enjoy it down there. Now the only issue is it's not the greatest view, is it? No, it's not. No, <laughs> you, you have to say it's a sort yeah. of quite a wide angle. Yeah, uh, and last week we were very lucky because the wicket was set towards the Graham Hick Pavilion. So from where uh, the okay. commentary box yeah. is, we were, we were in it. But if it's over the other, and it's a big square, if it's set towards the River Severn, um, you know, you could be a long way away from the action. Um, but I, I made a mistake down there last week in calling one of the stats. I'll tell you in a moment as in comes Carvelos running away from us in and bowls. And forward comes a cautious via Mulder plays into the gully. There is no run fielded by Tom Clark. End of the over, 72 for four. Patel on 43, Mulder is on two. Um, yeah, Ollie Robinson took 14 wickets in the match. As he took his 14, I said, oh, that's a, a career best for Robinson. Should have done my homework. And cause I've, his previous best, I thought, was 13 against um, Glamorgan in Cardiff a couple of years ago. And John came running and he went, no, no, he wrote it down. He said, no, he got 14, Ollie, against Middlesex at Hove a couple of years ago. So, yeah, it was, they're just very good people. Anyway, you'll have fun next week. And I'm sure we'll have fun as well with Eddie Bevan and Nick Webb up from, from South Wales as well. Leicestershire not having much fun at the moment. Got to be said as Brad Curry comes in and bowls to Rishi Patel, who is Shop. playing beautifully through the on side to the deep mid-wicket boundary. Uh, obviously, deep mid-wicket boundary, that's where boundaries tend to be fairly deep. And that is for just drifting onto his legs where he is... Uh, Pretty strong, Patel, 
and he put that one away with some ease and with a lot of style. He moves on to 47, 76 uh, for four. Nice shot, wasn't it? Beautifully timed. Yeah. It was all about timing rather than power. He raced away towards the Melton Building Society family stand as in goes Curry and Bowles again to edge all oh! dropped he did get a hand to it diving did. to his right all sop went between him and Smith at a catchable height almost seemed to sort of send him the wrong way his initial movement may have just been with his weight on his left foot then he flung himself to his right just got his fingers to the ball Patel has had one life on 27 well he's had another one on 47 he has it, again, it would have been a brilliant catch, but the fact you get your hand to it. Long way to his right, Tom Allsop went, didn't he? Don't like these gaps. You know, he and Smith are standing, you know, first and sort of third, and went right between them. Curry is in again. Patel is forward, blocking the delivery out into the off side. Did he not get? No, he didn't get a run, I don't think. He must have got a good hand to that then. Yes, he did. He sort of put, he almost sort of, it, was a, it, it wasn't that dissimilar. It, it, I mean, the Clark one was very low down, but also sort of parried the ball, didn't he? Yeah. But there's a big gap, as you say. I mean, Tom Allsop's at first. I reckon Steve Smith's probably at third. Exactly. There's a huge gap between the pair. Smith didn't move. Allsop had a long way to go. He looks ruefully at his fingers as Curry is in. Bowles, Patel is forward. Defending the ball down the pitch on the on side. Well, might mean nothing. Score 76 for four. But, uh, well, they could be five down Leicester. She couldn't know. And Patel on his way. The man who's in, so to speak. Two lives. Can he make the most of it? He's going to have to. One well, feels if Leicester are going to save this game. Well, he might feel it's his day. Curry currently feeling it isn't his, charges in and bowls, and Patel strokes it back past him, but only as far as mid on. Um, Michael sent us a lengthy email, but he's talking about all the great streams on at the moment. He caught some club cricket yesterday at Finchley, which has got him in the mood for the new season. He said, I think when, when you get to mid-May, the season is really getting into shape. Uh, I agree with that, and... Football still very much dominates the agenda, doesn't it? But uh, you know, you get some nice weather and everyone starts to think about cricket. It's why it's just so important to get some good weather at this time of year. Curry in bowls forward goes Patel. Might just have held that back a bit, Brad Curry, and he was reaching for it a touch, popped it up into the onside off his front foot, but no danger, no close catches on that side. End of an over in which Brad Curry might have picked up his second wicket. We'll feel perhaps he should, but he did his very best. Tom Allsop flung himself, diving away to his right. Got a hand to it. Couldn't hang on. It would, would have been a super special catch. Oh, it would have been. Really yeah. would. It would. Well, I saw Finn Hudson Prentice warming up at the far end, and we're going to get a little blast of Finn, who's picked up five wickets in the match. He's Sussex have bowled really well, particularly today. I would say that Hudson Prentice has probably been the pick of the bowlers. Six overs, five maidens, one for four. He comes in and bowls to a Viamold who drives to mid-off. No run fielded by Pajara. Uh, we were talking earlier on about sportsmanship in in cricket. And I was saying about applauding players to the wicket. And uh, Michael goes on to say, um, he says, Yes, clapping opponents, landmarks, greeting them to the wicket. I enjoyed all of that before I embarked in a little league cricket from time to time. Well, that would rarely occur. Yeah, I mean, uh, the cricket I played was pretty low-grade stuff. And I think in league cricket, you probably wouldn't. But we always did well at the, the level that I played. In comes Hudson Prentice bowls, and that comes a little low. And Mulder did well to dig that out, play to mid-wicket, no run. Well, and we certainly didn't do anything like that, but sledging was almost unknown. I can't I can't remember any real incident. And that's the Yorkshire Leagues. I mean, I, did, I can't remember any real incidents of, no. of sledging per se. One or two sort of side of the mouth comments, but not aimed at the batsman. Nothing, no. nothing sort of personal, anything like that. No. That seems to be kind of crept into club cricket. 
Got some apprentice in the bowls, and that's why I got the off stump swing away from the right handed mould, who has nothing to do with it through to Carter, no run. Yeah, it's just. Um, I, I just think it's unnecessary. But uh, perhaps I'm a bit old fashioned. Three slips in place. There's a backward point cover and mid off. They're all saving a single, a mid on mid wicket, and a fine day. Certainly Sussex is morning. Mm. 76 for four. Mulder and Rishi Patel just desperately trying to see Leicestershire through to lunch. Got some Prentice in and bowls, and Mulder plays uh, to backward point, fielded there by Henry Crocombe, and there is no run. The wicket shared around. Had some Prentice, Crocombe, Carvelos, and Curry. Uh, Charlotte's been in touch. Charlotte Burton down at Hove. Hello, Charlotte. Lovely to hear from you. I'll read your email in a couple of moments' time about Sussex women. Wait for the uh, email to come through. Lovely morning here. Barely, a, barely any breeze at all. Got some apprentices in bowls and runs here for Mold, who cuts this one away. And I suspect that may reach the boundary, although Henry Crocombe is in hot pursuit and he's going to overhaul the ball just inside the boundary. Good chase by Henry. And Alior was chasing after him, gets in the relay. They save a single and gets the applause from the skipper who says well fielded fellas Crocombe chasing back towards the boundary with uh, Alior. Charlotte Burton is the women and girls development officer at Sussex County Cricket Club and a fine job she does as well so I'll read you the email um, at the end of the over I think Charlotte she says I hope you're well Joanne uh, could you give a shout out please absolutely delighted to and I'll do that in a moment's time as in comes some Prentice over the wicket bowls. Mulder defends into the offside. No run. 79 for four. Mulder on five. Patel on 47. So um, we're at Sunny Hove today for the Regional Vitality Women's County Finals Day. Please could you give a shout out to the Sussex women as they take on Berkshire in the second semi final at 1.30. Entry to the ground is free today. So if anyone is in Hove looking for something to do, then come down to Sussex to see the women looking to retain the T20 trophy. Uh, just to say, enjoying the stream while watching the first semi-final, watching the guys on the stream while doing some work as well. Yeah, doing some work. Although I found that I walk away from the stream, we take wickets. We'll keep walking away, Charlotte. Hoping for a double Sussex win today and the men and the women. So there we are. Thank you so much, Charlotte, for getting in touch. And if you aren't doing anything, why not go watch some cricket at Hove this afternoon? Brad Curry is in two. Mulder, who edges wide of third slip down towards the third man boundary. Clark is in pursuit and he does stop it. He does manage to drag it back, flick it back. And Mulder again has to settle for three when he might have hoped to pick up four. Really good work. Chasing back there by James Coles, actually, it was. I've struggled with that was. for some reason. Coles Clark thing throughout the entirety of the game. Apologies. I don't know why. No, no excuses. <laughs> Incompetence, pure incompetence. In fact, the, the, the sunshine's got a little milky here, hasn't it? We've got a little bit of cloud mm. just drifting. Oh, in it has, yes, actually. From the west. Yes, it has. A slightly darker cloud. Maybe we're just going to get a few hours. <laughs> we're talking about a day. In goes Curry, and uh, driving is Patel. Pajara can move to his left. He's deepish at mid off, and as a consequence, it is just a single. Rishi Patel moves on to 48. Lived dangerously this morning. He's applied himself. He was determined to sell his wicket dearly, at least. He's 48 off 93 deliveries. 83 for 4. These two have to be there, probably at T, to be quite honest. In goes Curry, Bowles, Mulder. No, I exaggerate a bit. Pushes that one into the onside. I think that Leicestershire certainly, certainly still have to be batting at T. Could yet get her. I wonder if we get the sort of situation where Sussex need 80 off 7 or something like that. Or, you know, just to win. Yeah, could well be. Yeah. We had almost, almost had that situation before it descended into farce at Derby last week when Derby thought that they needed 54 off three because that's what they were told by the umpires. But that was news to the rest of us. As Curry is in to Mulder, who pops one up off a leading edge into the offside and hands on heads. 
among the Sussex fielders. He just tried to turn the bat face on it, did so too early. And popped up into the offside, well short of or an extra cover, but very much a false shot from Vian Mulder. Yeah, the umpires, Billy Taylor and Paul Pollard, suddenly decided that you didn't take two off for the change of innings if you were in the last hour. In goes Curry Bowles and Mulder defends and he's calling for the quick single and it's a good call in the end. Patel goes and <laughs> Curry is diving out of the way. He was running across towards the ball. In the end, Crocombe uh, running onto it got there first. Curry dived out of the way. Crocombe threw to the striker's end because that's where Rishi Patel was scurrying. The throw bounced but didn't hit the stumps. I, I think Patel probably made his ground anyway that was rather well, I read about that Richard so I mean the, the, this was oh well has that rule changed then suddenly we were all under the impression that obviously you took two off for the change yeah. of innings whenever it was in goes Curry Bowles bounces up into the air there's an appeal for both leg before and court both are turned down Smith thinks it might have been inside edge onto the pad and it lobbed up to second slip an easy catch for him if not, it was leg before wicket, but I suspect it hit him outside the line. And high-ish as well. Either way, umpire Middlebrook shakes his head. 48 to Patel remains his score. 84 for four remains the Leicestershire score. Yeah, and, and but they were telling the problem was the umpires were telling the players out on the pitch that, but they didn't tell anybody else, including the scorers, who That's were under the impression. Yeah. And then Sort of, so when they went off saying, actually, there's three overs, you d we don't take two off, and uh, not one over. In comes Hudson Prentice bowls to the uh, Mulder outside the off stump, let go to Carter, no run. It led to 20 minutes of chaos as they phoned the ECB for clarification. Really? Unless it's just saying, well, where has this come from? And none of us, has there been a change to the rules? And, you know, rule books were and law books were being faxed and pages were being you know read out and all sorts and in the end they realized i think that they'd, they'd made a, a mistake hudson prentice is in bowls Mulder plays from the crease to back will point no run so the umpires were wrong essentially yes right they, they suddenly invented this and uh, did that mean there was a quick chase or did it not come to anything because they needed 54 off one instead of 54 off three uh, which so obviously they didn't do that. We had that over because Leicestershire needed to bowl a quick over to avoid a losing a point for. I'm with you. Um, I'll pass the baton to you, Richard, if you like. We'll just do this delivery and then I'll do a quick update for BBC Radio Leicester. Hudson Prentice is in and it's outside off stump left by Mulder. It's been a horrible morning for Leicestershire at Grey Road as they fight to save the game against Sussex. They've lost four quick wickets. There's a Sol Budinger for 17, Lewis Hill without scoring, Colin Ackerman for six and Peter Hanscom. The Australia Test star also without scoring. Four wickets going down for the loss of four, just nine runs. Rishi Patel is standing firm. He's 48, not out, but he's been dropped twice on both 27 and 47. Sussex all over Leicestershire at the moment. Foxes need 160 simply to make Sussex bat again. Lunch is approaching. Leicestershire are 84 for four. Outside off stump, that one from Hudson Prentice is left by Vian Mulder. Interestingly, um, Martin Mahoney's been in touch in sunny High Wycombe, which is obviously west of here. But Martin says, talking of the weather, would have I write in thinking that not one county championship match this season has not been affected by the weather or bad light? I think you're probably right. In comes Hudson Prentice. It's very cloudy here now. As in comes Hudson Prentice bowls and drills down the ground off the back foot by Mulder. Remains nine not out, and the sun has completely you, you disappeared. You can see a sort of the can. absolute line of, of cloud, the way it sort of drifted in from, from the west. Curious. I think I think that was the forecast, that there was a weak front, perhaps preceded by some cloud. Behind it, I can see there are some, some pale blue skies. I, I think the forecast is that we're not going to get any rain today. Famous last words. Hudson Prentice is in bold. Well, that's probably the worst delivery he's bold. Down the leg side, and Carter did pretty well, actually, to get a hand on that. Has he hurt himself? No, no he's, he's just all right. Um, 
he's okay. Dived across goalkeeper style, and um, he hasn't bowled too many poor deliveries, Finn Hudson Prentice, but that was one. His figures are outstanding. Eight overs, uh, five maidens, uh, one for seven for Finn Hudson Prentice. We've got five minutes to go uh, until lunch, and um, Finn Hudson Prentice gives Ollie Carter a bit of a cuddle there. So sorry about that. Um, and uh, everyone's quite happy. 85 for four. Uh, Leicestershire, and I think probably two overs to go to lunch. I wouldn't be surprised if I don't try and slip it over in here from James Coles because Sussex are still showing plus two on the over eight. But for the time being, it will be Brad Curry bowling to Vian Mulder. Two slips and a gully as he runs in and bowls. Mulder is forward, pushing it foolish delivery out towards backward point where the aforementioned Coles still in his long sleeve sweater. Actually, they probably do need them now. Although the wind isn't there that, that has had such an effect on temperatures in the first over the first three days. It is still at least uh, reasonably mild. Can, can I use, dare I use that word? Certainly not warm, but, but mild. Curry. Long striding is in. Mulder is calmly forward on off stump. Thirty f coming up. This is the thirty-fifth over. So Rahan Ahmed yesterday saying that when the ball got to about sort of thirty-five, forty overs, the game became altogether easier for the batsman. So we're sort of getting towards that stage. Sussex, if they can, if they can nip one more out before lunch. They would still be very, very confident. In goes Curry, bowls. Forward goes Mulder, defending out into the offside. I think they still will be confident. I suspect if you'd offered them four wickets in the first oh. in the morning session, yeah, they'd have probably taken it. Oh, most definitely. Yeah, I, th I, I think so without question. And they would have definitely taken it if Patel, if the catches, um, one of them had, be, had been taken. Clark at third slip or Allsop at first. Both tricky chances. I like that sound. A, a happy baby. Yeah. Down below us somewhere. Enjoying the cricket. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Curry is in. A clipped off his uh, legs neatly by Mulder down to the fine leg boundary. A 4-4. Four four. Curry has his hands on his head because he would have certainly been appealing for leg before had will they not get anything on that but uh, Leicestershire's all rounder did he moves into double figures onto 13 89 for four a partnership of sorts starting to develop between Patel and Mulder 24 for the fifth wicket it's gonna have to be a lot more before Leicestershire will start to breathe at all easily 89 for four. Curry is in again. Mulder is tucking off his legs, taking his uh, bottom hand off the bat as he does so as it comes back in, trickles out towards backwards square where Crocombe runs across and fields. Mulder takes his single 14 to him. 70 now needed by Leicestershire to make Sussex bat again. Temperature's dropped, hasn't it? With that cloud coming in, you can just feel that the you know. The it has, but as I say, without that wind, it's still bearable, isn't it? Yes, it, it is. Yes, it just is. about. You might be all right in your shorts. <laughs> you might not be. I may regret it by the end of the day. <laughs> in goes Curry. Bowls driven by Patel, but there is a sweeper. James Coles out there on the boundary, so it will be just a single. To Patel, he moves on to 49, 91 for four. End of the 35th over. We will get one more before the close, but it won't be bowled by James Coles. It will be FHP. It will indeed. He's got the very good figures, um, which are going to go on the scoreboard in a minute, but something like eight overs for seven runs. I'll give you the confirmation. Brad Curry has bowled ten overs, one maiden, one for 39. Uh, he picked up the wicket of Peter Hanscom, which is, a, as Richard said at the time, a huge wicket. For Sussex, Sussex, for Leicestershire at one stage, were 56 for out loss. So it's been hard going since then, but these two are trying to repair the damage. In comes Hudson Prentice, 
Over the wicket comes in and bowls to uh, Patel, who's on 49. And very circumspect. He's had a couple of lives, both very difficult chances, as Richard was saying, Tom Clark and Tom Allsop not taking those. They both would have been very good catches, but they do go down as chances nonetheless. Lives on 27 and 47. That's apprentice wheels round in front of us. Two slips in a gully in place. The slips on this occasion are very close to each other. As in comes Hudson Prentice bowls. And Patel is solidly forward. With a high left over and plays straight back down the track. And Hudson Prentice wanders down and picks up the ball and then scrapes away at the crease as he wanders by. And then throws the ball, I think, to Pajara to shine some more. Uh, no, he doesn't, actually. He hangs on to it himself. Luke Wells used to always be the ball shiner for Sussex. Now it's uh, Lancashire. And the skipper seems to have taken over that role, but Hudson Prentice is working away on the ball. And now they're having a natter. Now, I'm not quite sure why that is. Oh, well, it's because Ollie Carter's coming up to the stumps. He's standing up his carter. Hudson Prentice is on his way. Running away from us, he's in the rolls. And again, a good delivery by Hudson Prentice, who, very much like Gary Carvelos, makes the batsman play all the time. There's very little peace when Hudson Prentice is bowling. It's when Hudson Prentice is bowling. One o'clock. No, I don't, I don't have an update, but I'm fine. In fact, it's, it's very old at the weekends. I, now, I don't, don't do an update to the listeners till half past two. It seems slightly odd, but there we go. Um, you can enjoy but, a full three-course yeah, lunch. But, 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 but <laughs> it's all above my pay grade, those sort of decisions. <laughs> comes on some reds and bowls, and a good take by Carter. The ball swinging away from Rishi Vatel. Ground staff with their various uh, wheelbarrows and... Buckets of paint and brushes and shovels. And yeah, they're already over on the far side. The good news is they're not getting ready to pull on the covers. Although it has got very cloudy here. It's it's high level cloud. And there is some bluish sky uh, following on. Let's have some prentices in and bowls. And Patel drives very pleasantly into the offside field. by or not for the first time in that sort of short extra cover position prevents a single being taken and now Pajara is in his role as ball shiner he's got a big red smear down the back of his right thigh another, another maiden in sight it could be nine overs seven maidens, seven maidens. one for seven Hudson Prentice Patel clips this firmly to mid on, and there we are. That is the case fielded by Eric Arvelos, and that is lunch. And Richard is dead right. Nine over seven maidens, uh, one for seven for Finn Hudson Prentice as the players leave the field. And that's a really good morning as far as uh, Sussex are concerned. Handshakes all around uh, from the Sussex players to each other. The players wander off in the direction of the pavilion for lunch. And, uh, very much Sussex's morning. Absolutely. Leicestershire still need another 69 simply to make Sussex bat again. It's been a really good morning's work, a solid morning's work. And uh, as we've been saying, all the bowlers ha have contributed. All four of them have been wholly admirable as far as Chetaswar Pajara and the Sussex coaches are concerned. Rishi Patel goes to lunch on 49 not out, Vian Mulder on 14 not out, a partnership, as I say, of sorts. Just at the moment, stopped the rot as far as Leicester are concerned, but they both, these two batters, have an awful lot to do in the afternoon session. We will be back with you after what we anticipate will be another excellent lunch in the Charles Palmer restaurant. Hopefully your Sunday lunch will be likewise, but just uh, for now, from the Upton Steel County ground, Good afternoon from Adrian Harms and Richard Ray.
You show your support. Wear the shirts with pride. You back our foxes. In the moments that matter the most. A county steeped in tradition. Decorated in triumph. Where the lows only elevate the highs. So many moments have mattered in the past. They are why we love the game. We want you to be there for the ones that are yet to come. Be immersed in the passion.
Good afternoon, everybody, from the Upton Steel County Ground, Grace Road in Leicester. The afternoon session on this final day of the LV Insurance County Championship fixture between Leicestershire and Sussex. The two umpires, James Middlebrook and Hassan Adnan, arriving at the wicket, followed by the Sussex team, followed in turn by the not out Leicestershire batsman, Rishi Patel, and Vian Mulder, Leicestershire. Absolutely under the pump at the moment. They are 91 for four in their second innings. Still needing another 69 simply to make Sussex bat again. The uh, slight front of cloud which drifted over before lunch seems to have uh, dissipated or at least uh, drifted over and beyond the ground. And it is, again, lovely warm 17 stroke 18 degrees which believe me is warm for what we've had in this game up to now conditions out there Mulder has 14 Patel has 49 I have chocolate orange bread and butter pudding my colleague Adrian Harms of BBC Radio has a, a Sussex has a, a very mess a eat sort of eaten mess style puddings of necessity that famous pop group once again being eaten <laughs> in the commentary box. <laughs> it's, it looks fantastic at eating mess, doesn't it? Uh, I'm sort of, I'm thinking it's got the, it's got the five a day, but there's some berries in there, Richard. So that <laughs> makes me feel better. <laughs> From the top end, it's uh, Henry Crocom who comes in and bowls outside off somebody's caught behind. No, he's not. There's an appeal for a catch behind. I thought Mulder, as he did yesterday, went was going to go straight after the interval. He was drawn into the drive at Crocom and. Uh, Oh, the field, the slip fielders went up Crocom too, but uh, the sound, if there was a sound, I suspect was ball, uh, was bat on ground. You could see it sort of, Mulder's bat hit the ground as he went for the drive, but goodness me, might have been heart in mouth time for Mulder. Vian Mulder searching for some sort of form with the bat. Crocom is in and bowls outside of some good lift and taken at the second attempt by Carter because it bounced up quite high and he, he took it sort of almost chin high with his hands in front of his chin and it popped out of his hand but popped up nicely for him to catch at the second attempt. Uh, a difficult balance here for Leicestershire isn't it because they'll, they don't want to lose wickets but by the same token runs will be important because once they can and if they get into positive territory that's going to take time out of the game. So I need to try and get that balance right if they can. Broken. Down the slope. Bowls. Mulder is forward on off stump. Playing with an angled bat out towards backward point where James Coles. Yet to be seen with ball in hand in terms of bowling anyway in this Leicestershire second. He's said there it's only 36 overs old. Over, um, overs shared between the four seamers. All of whom have picked up wickets. Mm. And it's the same conundrum for Cheteshwar Pajara because he'll 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 know that if someone came in and played an innings a la Chris Wright or 
uh, Rehan Ahmed yesterday. It, it makes life very interesting. Crocombe is in. Mulder, no big stride, just leans forward and off stump, plays it out to Orr in the covers. Um, that could be a really fascinating... I just wonder whether we're going to be due a sort of a... Who knows? Maybe sort of a, a, a run chase you know, late afternoon. Could yet get tight at the moment. Sussex well on top. They might, might find themselves chasing a few runs in a few overs. In goes Crokem. Bowls driven or looked to be driven by Mull. They didn't time it at all. Rehearses the shot. It rolled quite slowly in the end out to Pajara at mid-off. It was an elegant looking shot but not timed at all. Good over so far by Henry Crokem. He's, he, you know, he's pitching the ball up. I say he didn't bowl particularly well yesterday and he'll feel with others taking wickets that he wants to come to the party as well. In he comes and bowls looking for the Yorker dug out by Mulder back to Crokem. It goes. He does have the, the, the one wicket to his name. And an important one it, it was as well. Lewis Hill, Leicestershire's captain, really good delivery that he edged to Orsop at first slip. End of the first over after lunch. A maiden for Henry Crocombe. Seven overs, two maidens, one for 16. Now, I said that the Friends of Grace Road might not be operating today. I can see that they are because are they? They, the hot drinks and cakes um, <laughs> shop. Shall we? Can we call it a shop? Where, 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 where is it, Richard? Can you can just see it? The, oh on, yeah, on the, on the yeah, ground yeah, floor of the meat down there, cent cent centrally positioned at the bottom Hot of the meat. cakes and drinks. And so it looks like they do have a few cakes uh, left to dispense. Right. Well, it's going to be Eric Havelos who's going to pick up the first over from this end after lunch. Comes in from the pavilion in bowls to uh, Richie Patel, who gets my head on the glove and shakes his right hand vigorously goes into the slips there is no run that slip cord there are two slips in a gully a backward point cover mid off mid on mid wicket and a fine leg and if you've just joined us for the afternoon you're listening to the BBC BBC Radio Sussex and Leicester Adrian Harms Richard Ray if you're watching the live stream that's provided by Leicestershire County Cricket Club as in comes cover this in milky sunshine comes in on bowls and Patel lets that go outside the off stump he just bowls this nagging line of length as Harry Cavalos, he's just always trying to lure the batsman into a false drive outside the off stump. But tell on 49, he's faced 103 balls. He's had two lives, both of them would have been good catches. Tom Clark agonisingly diving away to his right in the gully, sort of parried the ball up and then just couldn't get back quick enough to, before the ball dropped on the ground. And Tom also a slightly higher chance to his right hand side. Both would have been brilliant catches. Um, they both went down. In comes Carvelos. Bowls let go by Patel. Taken low down by his bootlaces by Carter. Mm -hmm. And there is no run. Um, we've got a high level cloud here. Behind it, away to our west, there's lots of pale blue sky coming in. So the, the forecast is certainly we're dry for the day. And actually, an encouraging weather forecast I heard a little earlier on that uh, certainly down in the south, that maybe next week um, it should be a little drier from later on in the week, which is good news. As Carvelos makes his way in again, bowls and puts this forward into the offside, no run. <coughs> Excuse me. Nice hush around the ground. Everybody realising this is a real mm. well. It, it, it's going to be an absorbing day, I think. Here, whatever happens, as Leicestershire tries to sort of inch their way um, towards this total of 160, whereby Sussex will need to bat again. Orsop and Smith in the slips. As Carvelos is in again. Bowls and hammered down the ground. And that's uh, going to go for... Oh, Ooh. six. Landed on the ropes. Yeah, and signal to six. Down below us. Well, what a way to go to your half century. Slightly overpitched. And Rishi Patel just hammered the ball over Chetishwa Pajara at mid-off. The ball landed on the rope right down below us. Six runs. A lovely shot. And what a way to go to your half century. He's played very well, Rishi Patel. He's had a couple of lives... But he's made the most of it, and that's a fine way to go to your half century. 106 balls. Completely out of character for the rest of the innings, actually. Carvelos in bowls, and Patel defends into the offside or makes a tumbling save. End of the over. Sussex running between the overs because the over rate is still showing 
at plus two. Uh, 97 for four, another 63 needed uh, before Sussex will need to bat again. Ten fours and one six. So bearing in mind that 46 of those 55 runs came in boundaries, 107 balls. Awful lot of balls from which he hasn't scored, but uh, that very much um, a sign of where the game is and not a reflection on, on him at all, really. Leans on his bat and watches as Henry Crocombe runs past umpire Middlebrook and bowls outside off stump to Vian Mulder, who leaves as it bounces through into the gloves of Carter. Not usually a pudding man, a pudding's man. In fact, I hardly ever eat them, but that bread and butter pudding that the Charles Palmer restaurant <laughs> produces, usually, usually on the last day, I must admit, I do enjoy a, bread, a good bread and butter pudding, so I have indulged. I have to go for it. I have to add a couple of miles to my run. In <laughs> goes Crocom and bowls all oh, goes past the outside edge of Mulder's bat. Solitary aeroplane. Drones low overhead. Can't see it though. Pos possibly heading for East Midlands Airport. Possibly for the Leicester Aerodrome, which is about four miles away from the ground, over to the sort of south east a little bit. Maybe it was Mr. Agnew. Sounded a bit powerful for that. In goes Croak and Bowles and turned uh, slightly short off his and onto the hip of Mulder. He turns it down towards long leg. Takes the first quickly just in case, but Carvelis quickly to the ball and gets his throw away. So just a single to Mulder. He moves on to 15. 98 for four. 62 now needed. Not that that really sort of makes any immediate difference in the price of things if Leicester should go past that 160. But it does mean that Sussex will have to come out. They'll be two off for the change of innings, and you know they might have a few to score. Crocom is in, driving in the air a bit is Patel, but he's done that almost throughout the innings. James Cole sprints around the boundary in front of the orange seats alongside the meet, gets quickly to the ball. He had to sort of sprint past it because he's, he's left-handed. Picked it up left-handed. Got his throw away. Patel takes one, moves on to 56, 99 for four. Still the two slips and a gully as Crocom is in to Mulder. Again, a little bit short, and Mulder tucks it one-handed, taking the bottom hand off the bat just in case and uh, pushes it out into the onside, then rehearses a pull. That uh, Had it been a little later in his innings, he might have essayed. Chose not to on this occasion. Beginnings, this you kind of feel for Vian Mulder. Crocombe is in. Bolts to him. It rears a little bit. Bounces at him and he jerks his head back. He managed, I don't know whether it came off the glove, but it bounced out into the offside towards point. Well short of point, but Crocombe, as uh, he sometimes can, Finds a little bit of something extra, a bit of bounce, and almost produced results. Mulder absolutely startled by that one, but he survives. End of Crocombe's eighth over, one for 18. His figures, 99 for four, remains the score. Actually, I thought Via Mulder played that pretty well, but it's a sort of delivery that can put a, just an element of doubt in the, in the batsman's mind. In comes Ari Carvelos from the pavilion in bowls to Patel, who lets that go through the top of the stumps taken by Carter, no run. Foxy Phil points out that Rishi Patel's landmark innings this season have all come on a Sunday. Right. 100 at Yorkshire, 50 at Derby, today 50, and 100 against Glamorgan. So only on a Sunday as far as Rishi Patel <laughs> is concerned. Well, maybe it'll be his day. He's had a couple of lives. Other than that, he's batted very well. Carvelos is in twin bowls, and again, he lets that go outside the off-stump. Just that drift away from Ari Carvelos towards the slip cordon where Tom Allsop and Steve Smith. I wonder if it says something about characters. If you score 
your big runs in the second innings. Quite a lot of batsmen score big runs in the first, but don't in the second. Mm. But maybe, I don't know, it's more pressure in the second, which so that's a good sign. I don't know. Well, he looks very organised and he's waiting now as Cornelius is in bowls. And again, he just has to let that one go outside. So he hasn't had to play in three deliveries in this over, Rishi Patel. He's just nagging away, Carvelos, outside of that off stump. Wanders quickly back to his mark. He does get on with things, Carvelos. I, I, I do like a bowler who, who, who's quickly back. He's already back to his mark and he's already on his way in. 99 for four, oh, Leicestershire. Carvelos in the moles, but for the fourth time in this over, the ball just drifts past the off stump. And he'll just be a little irritated with himself. There. He has a got the line of course he gets a little nick on this one we'll say well bold maybe he's going to bring one into the right hand this fifth ball of the over two slips and a gully weight coals at backward point or an extra cover skipper pujara at mid off spatel waits bat raised Carvelis is in bowls and this time he does have to play from the crease plays it out into the offside Ali Orr very eagerly comes running in and fields the ball, immediately throws it to Bajara, who then vigorously cleans the ball on his trousers. We've only had, what have we had? This is the 40th over. So we've still got 62 overs left. I was thinking whether new balls come into this. Probably not, to be honest. If, if Leicester is still batting by that time, they'll, they'll be home and dry. Carvelos in again. Bowls. Oh! It's that, oh, crumbs. I thought for a minute he'd played on. He's going to get possibly four runs. No. Just a single down to final goal. That, he very, very nearly played that on. He was looking to punch it away on the offside. He got a big, thick inside edge. How the ball missed the stumps, who knows. But it did. And Rishi Patel picks up a single. He goes to 57. And 100 up for Leicestershire. They're 100 for four. And they need 60 more runs if they're going to make Sussex bat again in this game. Well, Rishi Patel has applied himself admirably, but he's had three huge slices of fortune. Dropped on 27 and 47, and that, I still don't quite understand how that missed the stumps. No. It couldn't have got any closer without dislodging a bale. But as you said, perhaps it's uh, it's his day. Henry Crocombe endeavouring to prove it isn't, comes in and bowls to Patel, who blocks it back down the pitch as elegantly as ever. To Crocombe, who picks it up and throws it to Orr, who drops it, and uh, it has to run back a yard or two to... Pick it up and throw it to Pujara. Come on. I think that's Tom Clark at third slip. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Calling to his teammates. Crocom is in and bowls on off stump. Patel leans forward with an angle back, pushing it out through the vacant point area. Coles is back on the point boundary for the um, expansive drive that Patel sometimes plays or sometimes tries. And so he has to come running into field and Patel can take one. He moves on to 58, 101 for four. So 59 now short of making Sussex bat again. Crocom runs in. Bowls, good line, good length, but ball getting a bit older and there isn't quite a much no, there movement isn't. around for him. He did get that one to rear at Mulder in the previous over, so there is still a little bit of something there, but having to work harder to extract it, the Sussex bowlers. Curry swinging his arms. Down the slope, bowl short and uh, cut away off the back foot, punched away by Mulder, out to the extra cover boundary. Pajara jogs really after the ball, knowing he's not going to get there. Crosses the ropes, he picks it up in front of the uh, Upton Steel stand. Mulder moves on to 19, 105 for four. I think you've just got to be patient on this wicket as a bowler. <coughs> and Henry Croker would pitch it up on four occasions. I think he was a bit frustrated. He bowled a short one, and he bowled it short and wide, and it was just asking to be hit for four. I'd be disappointed about that. Uh, Mulder obliged. Yeah, poor delivery. 
and two balls left in his over is in balls. That's a better delivery. And wasn't quite sure whether to go forward or back there, Mulder. In the end, sort of a bit of a halfway house. Played it late though, steering it out towards backward point where Coles was fielding. He comes in for Mulder, goes out for Patel. It's definitely the line though, isn't it? Yeah, you've got to pitch the ball up on this track. Give yourself a chance. Croke and Bowles. Outside off stump, oh, chopped ball. away for four. And again, width and Mulder did not miss out. It wasn't quite as short as the last delivery, but it was almost a wider. And Mulder, eyes lit up, especially with Coles up at point rather than on the boundary and cracked it away wide of him to the boundary for four. Mulder moves on to 23, 109 for four. He scored 24 in the first innings and looked in pretty decent nick before going leg before wicket to Ari Carvelas. Delivery just, watched the replay, so he just didn't look interested in it, just sort of yep. <laughs> leant forward and absolutely plumb. But uh, he'll be hoping to go well past that this time. 109 for four after 41. Yeah, we disappointed Henry Croker with that because you bowled a number of good balls and you bowled two four balls in, 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 in that situation. Um, that's not really what's required. There's a delay here because... The 12th man was still yeah, 12th man 15 was still yards on the, on the pitch. When um, <laughs> Dan Ibrahim had run on to give something to Tom Allsop. And Carvelis was on his way in to bowl, but he wasn't off the pitch, so he had to go back again. All these little minutes, seconds add up. And over eight, Carvelos in bowls to Patel. Let's that go outside the off stump taken by Carter. No run. Yes, I think it, Patel entitled to step away there, given totally. that uh, Ibrahim had also had a dark jerkin on, was running sort of in his line of sight as well. Just didn't look back, did he? He was running, he was sprinting to get off, but... Uh, yeah, not quick enough. Harry was anxious to get on with things. Anxious now as he runs into bowl to Rishi Patel. Patel is forward to a ball of good length, plays it down the offside of the track, and there is no one elsewhere. There's just one other game going on in Division 2 of the County Championship, heading for a draw. Gloucestershire 333 for 8 in reply to Derbyshire's 251 for 9. So that's going to be a draw. Good win for Durham today, but one wicket against Yorkshire. <laughs> just imagining, can't listen, obviously, we're commentating here, but Fletcher's commentary might be. Yeah. On the lugubrious side, <laughs> game's going nowhere. Three runs out of five for Durham. In comes Carvalho's bowls, let go by Patel, through to Carter. There is no run in the first division. Looks like Surrey on calls to beat Middlesex. Middlesex bowled out for 240 today. Surrey just needing 70 to win there. Heading for a draw at Old Trafford. Trafford Somerset 223 for five, leading by 258. And... Well, there's still a little bit to play for down at Canterbury. Kent 155 for three, still trailing Hampshire by 123. Carvelos in and bowls. Patel forward back down the track. Carvelos builds up his own bowling. There is no run. And in the one day international at Bangladesh, 241 for five. After 43 overs, that game being played in front of a full house at Chelmsford. Joe Root is finally getting an innings in the IPL. Is he? Yeah, that'll prepare him for the Ashes. Yeah. <coughs> Not. I mean, I presume when you go to the IPL, I mean, do you get paid if you yeah, don't? Oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, oh, absolutely. Contract to contract. Well, perhaps we could get a gig out there, Richard. <laughs> 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 I could do with some of that money. In comes Carvalho's bowls. Patel defends, plays down the offside. There was a coach just yeah. pulled up in the car park at the far end of the ground. Being loaded on or loaded off. It's not the Sussex team coach, I know that. I can see cricket bags being carried towards it from the indoor centre over there. Oh. So. With the seconds of a game, perhaps. Perhaps they're off somewhere on a trip. Yeah, I don't know. Could be. Carvelos in milky sunshine here. Grace Road comes in and bowls to Rishi Patel. Patel lets that go outside the off stump. I wouldn't be surprised. It's tidy enough from Ari Carvelis, but just for this, not quite the threat here since lunch from Sussex. 109 for four. Patel on 58. Mulder on 23. These two coming together when Leicestershire were in all sorts of grief at 65 for four. So they've added, what, 44 uh, for this fifth wicket. And we are going to get Henry Croker considering, but it, it may not be f too long before we see a bit more of. Uh, Finn Hudson Prentice, I suspect, who I think has carried the greatest threat for 
at Sussex. But Leicester just inching their way towards this target. Crocom. In from the Bennett end, bowls to Mulder, who's going to pick up runs there as he steers it wide of Gully, down towards the third man boundary. Coles is in very hot pursuit. He can't get there. Mulder picks up his third boundary. I make it in the last six balls he's faced from Crocombe. He moves on to 27, 113 for four. His highest score of the season so far. Leon Mulder. Very nice, playing against Sussex. Big score last <laughs> year. Yes. He likes to feel the sun on his back as well. He's probably quite enjoying it. In goes Crokem. Bowls to him. He's driving wide. Edges wide. Don't know if it was it. Well, judging by the slips reaction, it might have been in the air as it passed uh, the right hand of the reaching Gully Clark. Couldn't get there. And a fourth boundary in seven deliveries for Vian Mulder into the 30s. He moves 31, 117 for four. Yeah, and these are all really important runs because they're edging Leicestershire closer and closer to this total of 160. There's a lot of people going, hanging around that coach at the far end now, Richard. Indeed. Bits of green we can see, so mm. it may be the, sec the second team. Crocom is in on off stump. Mulder defends again. Slightly short of a good length, so he stays sort of on the back foot and plays with an angle back down towards Coles at backward point. I think as it's coach Paul Parbrose will be watching this with with great interest because I, th I think the feeling was yesterday that maybe when Leicestershire were what were they, 160 for seven. Crocombe is in and bowls straight, punched off the back foot by Mulder, but not really timed. Midon can make a comfortable enough stop. But it's in that partnership and a really good partnership of 69 between Chris Wright and Rehan Ahmed, which my general feeling was around the Sussex camp. I was like, perhaps they just let Leicestershire get away a little bit then. Crocombe. Bowls, thick inside edge as Mulder leans forward. The ball runs out towards short leg. No, says Rishi Patel as closing on the ball is Curry. Sun hat wearing Brad Curry. Claps his hands having fielded the ball. Yes, I mean Curry is the other option together with Finn Hudson Prentice. Chechish Wabajara has rotated his seamers throughout the year. Uh, course of the match but Sussex I feel needing a breakthrough here. Crocombe is in again that effort delivery that just rises a bit not quite as much as the last one that leapt at uh, Mulder but even so bottom hand off the bat handle and then shakes his right hand a little ruefully as it thumps into the top of the bat out into the offside goes the ball so there is just a bit there, but not as much. That's the bottom yeah. line. That the bowlers have got a lot of overs in their in their legs now. I thought they bowled beautifully this morning, to be honest, Indeed. as a group. Yeah. And they're going to have to continue to do that this afternoon. Just well, Bajara gave Henry Crook a little pat on the back at the end of that over. It almost looked like the sort of you know thanks for now Henry type pat. We shall see. Harry Carvelas continues, comes in and bowls to Patel. That's a better line. He making Patel play, probably pitching round about middle and leg, moving away from the right hand. And Patel had to play it to mid wicket. There is no run. Previous over is just a little too wide outside the off stump. So those two slips in a gully, backward point cover mid off, mid on mid wicket, and a fine leg. Well, five of Leicester's 14 wickets in this game have been leg before wicket. Interesting. Carvalho's in again, bowls, and again that's a better line again. Gets applause from his teammates, which suggests that bowling straight is a a useful option if nothing else. No, no, absolutely, <laughs> it kind of always is. Of course, it always is, but you don't need much movement. Patel's been very adept at leaving the ball. Yeah, this over the, the two delivery so far, he's had to play both of them. Carter claps his gloves behind the stumps. Carvalho is on his way. 
this time he doesn't have to play, that is too wide. Can't to take there is no run. There are 58 overs left after this one in the day. Oh yeah, I made the point that 11 boundaries to Patel, 46 of his 58 runs have come in boundaries, so that's 11 balls that have gone to the boundary. That still leaves 114 <laughs> from which he's scored, you know, just a few singles, essentially. Yeah, yeah. The rest, as you say, is, is left or defended. And this time he does play straight back down the track. He bowls with no great pace, does Ari Carvelis. He just bowls um, a nagging line and length. Very polite young man. Yes, he is. I saw him uh, getting various congratulations from the Sussex faithful as he as he came off, or always going on. And mm. to each and every one, he, he he acknowledged and said thank you very much. Yeah. He's in bowls, and this time he does let that one go. Just Rishi Patel outside the off stump. There is no one. No, he's always very amenable. He says, you know, hello, how are you? I think he's, he's, he's glad to get this opportunity to play first-class cricket. I think it's, it's taken a long while coming for Ari Cavalis, who is, where's my little book? He's 29 years of age. So relatively late into first-class cricket in England. He's played a bit in South Africa. Right arm over the wicket bowls, and Patel is forward, plays it down to mid on. I, I see he's bowled tidily enough. I, it's been quite the threat for Mary Carvelos after lunch. What he has done is kept it relatively quiet, and that will be part of the Sussex plan. But the runs required to make Sussex again now are 43. Now, Henry Crocom is going to bowl. Um, I thought he got a little pat there from Pajar as if to say thanks very much, Henry. But maybe it was a keep going, Henry, to Henry Crocom. So he's going to bowl the next over. <coughs> Excuse me. It was a, a one more, Henry, and um, maybe it was. Yeah. Real effort. Then you can have a little break down the slope from the Bennett end. Charges Henry Croak and bowls goes past the outside edge, and uh, Mulder is cross with himself. He sort of whacks at the air with his bat in annoyance for playing at that one. He could have left it. He was drawn into a defensive push, and the ball slipped past his outside edge. All sorts of expressions, aren't there, for when you're your skipper of a side, or you, you know, in a, the, you want the bowler to have a rest. You know, okay, have a have a, have a blow. You know, thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. In goes Crocom, and again, draws us something of a false shot from Mulder. He was looking, I suspect, to drive straight. It was not quite there, and hand bottom hand off the bat again, as he pushes it out into the off side. Yeah. Played with a few skippers. <laughs> yeah, well, that'll do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was rubbish. Croke <laughs> 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 and bowls. A bit short of a length, and uh, consequently, Mulder a bit, bit more comfortable on the back foot. Blocks it out into the offside. I think generally if the bowler bowls a poor over, it's at the, you know, towards the end of a spell. He, he kind of knows, doesn't he? Um, you know. How many times does a skipper go up and say, just, you know, just one more, then they get a wicket, and then the skipper's then got that dilemma, well, okay, then keep your order for another one. Crocom is in. Ooh, appealing for leg before, but mm, very much too high. No. And certainly no appeal from behind the stumps, but he did find a little bit of movement there. The, the appeal was, I suspect, one born of frustration as much as anything. He squared Mulder up, beat the bat, but much, much too high. Yeah, just need to keep their patience here. Sussex. Hudson Prentice starting to warm up at mid on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Haven't seen him since lunch, have we? Crocom is in and bowling. And again, Mulder. Well, it seems to be a, a post lunch characteristic for him. Takes his bottom hand off the bat as he looks to drive it out into the offside. Most overs you've ever bowled in once off off the reel. Me. Oh, Crumbs probably know one about five or six. <laughs> Yourself? 22. Really? Yeah, I remember it well. Figures of? As Crocom is in, bowls. Oh, that little patch again, Richard. A bit of extra lift Indeed. there. It was something like four for four for 60 something like that I, c I can't quite remember we won the game though it was a, it was a 45 over game 
and we only had two bowlers. I was one. I got the uphill up on the cliff top there <laughs> at Suwabi. Sounds great. It was, yeah, I enjoy. I mean, it, it probably wasn't for everybody else. You know, probably got a bit boring, really. But um, you got your match fee. You got your values worth that week, Richard. Yeah, uh, it was fun. But you get into it. You sure do get into a rhythm. Then, <laughs> as long as you're not getting tonked around. Well, Finn Hudson Prentice is going to bowl us. Just a wonderful figures. Nine over seven maidens, one for seven. Yeah, this is a big spell. You it kind is. of feel if he if he can nip one of these batsmen out. And he's the man most likely he can expose to Leicestershire's sort of all-rounders. In he goes and bowls. Patel, with a lot of time, it's a bit of a loosener from FHP. Just turns his wrists on it, pushes the delivery out to mid on. He obviously advanced down the pitch because on comes Ibrahim with uh, the helmet for... Can't he just keep it out there? Well, I, I mean, I, Behind I, him somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, I think this is poor... You know, when, when you are, but you know, when you're behind on overs, I would have thought absolutely keep the helmet out there. Well, you know, because then we've got another. And I don't think this is the thing that does sit well with umpires. I think they find this a bit irritating. So we've probably lost, and he's still not off the field. You no, know? he's in, in Patel, but he would be entitled to step aside. He doesn't. In goes Hudson Prentice, bowls to him, and Patel strokes it out to Pujara at mid off. Yeah, I mean, I would have thought it's probably. You know, if the keeper, when they go out to field, you take your helmet out with you. I, I know if the ball hits the helmet, it's five extra runs, etc., etc. But, you know, take it out with you, then you can, you know, it's there to be used rather than having to be bought out. And it's once in a blue moon that it it's hit and you concede five as yeah. a consequence. Hudson Prentice is in, and uh, it's That's that whip away into the leg side that way. just occasionally... Patel explodes into, and once again, he's picked it up quite beautifully, and he's hit it for six into the uh, advertising hoardings in front of the meet. Beautiful shot when he when he times it, and he usually does. That's the shot with which he went to his 100 at uh, Yorkshire, and uh, beautiful pickup. He moves on to 64, and umpire has to examine the ball because it took a bit of a pounding there, and in fact... We can get another bit of a delay because umpire Adnan has seen that the ball has taken a bit of a battering, and it did. Patel, second six in recent overs. He went to his 50 with um, an off-driven six, but that was that leg side pick-up over mid-wicket. Beautifully picked up as well. So it's six or, six or four or, or yeah. the very occasional single for, for Rishi Patel. Can he keep this one going? Can he go to a... A third century of the season. They've lost the ball, haven't they? No, no. He's oh, has, he, has he got it back Yeah, now? yeah, no. He's, they've had it. They've, they, they just got a bit of a battering. So umpire Adnan was fiddling around with it. And, and umpire Middlebrook perhaps has some scissors. Perhaps a, a bit was... Chunk was, uh, was loosened. Part of the cover. Sometimes get little bits out of it. And the chips out of it that hang off as... In goes Hudson Prentice, waits in the crease, Patel lets ball hit bat rather than the other way around. Guides it into the offside and there is no run. Brad Curry is uh, beginning to warm up so happily is the air temperature. Positively balmy. Yeah, it is, yeah. It was actually as I walked out after lunch, I thought, oh, this is nice. Mm. 58, this partnership worth now. It's a... Uh these two have batted really well. They, 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 that letter were in dire straits. They're still not out of the woods, but um, they're edging there. Hudson Prentice is in. Thick outside edge. Goes through about fourth slip. Smith is in pursuit. He's not going to get there. James Coles, likewise, isn't going to get there. Patel picks up a lucky four. It was in the air for a long old time. And uh, a disconsolate Tom Clark sort of bangs his hands against his thighs. Nobody moved. It was absolutely in the gap between Clark at Gully and Smith at second slip. Patel, 10 in the over. He's moved on to 68. Hudson Prentice is in and bowls. He's gone for that big hit over the leg side again and it is going to land just short on this occasion, down to wide, long on it goes. So, Hudson Prentice 
A very old-fashioned look and a word with Rishi Patel, who studiously ignores him and continues his conversation with Vian Mulder. Hudson Prentice still muttering away, I suspect, underneath his, his breath, but uh, to no avail. Patel, well, took the initiative in that over. He's moved on to 72 of 134 balls. Leicestershire on to 131 for four from 46. Suddenly, only 29 needed to make Sussex bat again. That's happened quickly. It has, and these two have, um, have batted really well. Um, it, it, it pushes, puts all the pressure back on Sussex there. There's a change of bowling at the Bennett end. It's Brad Curry who's going to come into the attack. He's certainly switching his bowlers around. He's elected not to go for spin so far. Two slips in a gully. Three men saving one on the off. Two on the leg. And a fine leg as Brad Curry figures a one for 39 in his 10 overs is running in bowling to Ovia Mould. That came a little low. Mould is happy enough just to play the ball defensively to mid off. And there is no run. So, what have we got left over? 56 overs left to be bowled, potentially in the match. That's the maximum. The arrears are 29. There's still a way to go for Leicestershire to get themselves out of this hole, but they're really making a good job of it at the minute. Partnership of 66 between these two. Curry is in bowls and Mulder on the back foot punches the ball down the ground to mid on and there is no run. But we have seen in this game the wickets have fallen in clusters. There were those four that fell for nine and Sussex just need to keep believing here that one might lead to T, two might lead to three. We've just got to keep plugging away. This ball is now, it's at 46 or 48 overs, Richard. 46.2. Yeah. So we were saying the new ball's probably not going to come into this because by the time it's available, Leicestershire will pretty much be home and dry, you would think. In comes Curry. Bowls and played by Mulder. That comes a little low. Stop my clerk in the gully. There is no run. There's just a little bit of uncertainty there from Via Mulder when he just wanders down the wicket and does a little bit of gardening. Touch late, didn't he? Yeah, it was played late. Yeah. Not quite so much sort of um, shouting and hollering out in the field there from the Sussex players all egging each other on. There's a lovely hush around the ground. People just thoroughly enjoying the, uh, the battle. Curry in again. Bowls. And it hits via Mulder. Right about the thigh pad, or maybe even somewhere a little more painful than that. Uh, but he's okay. And goes down again and does a little bit more gardening, prodding of the pitch. Steve Smith doing some stretching exercises at second slip. Tom Clark clacking his hands. James Cole's hands on hips in his sun hat at point. Cheshire Pajara encouraging his side from mid off. is in again. Bowls and clipped away by Mulder. That's a nice looking shot. Well placed wide of Henry Crocombe who chases the ball towards the mid on boundary. I think the ball's going to win on this occasion. It just does. Henry Crocombe is very fast across the ground but the ball was always getting away from him. And that's a nice looking shot from Via Mulder. He goes to 35. Just clipping the ball away. Nice timing through mid wicket for another boundary. So the acceleration has certainly come here since lunch. 135 for four. Went to lunch on 91 for four. Did Leicestershire. Curry is on his way again. Bowls and Mulder just plays this to mid wicket fielded there by Alion. There is no run. 135 for four. Patel 72. Mulder on 35. You're listening to the BBC live cricket from BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Leicester. Adrian Harms. And Richard Ray on commentary as Tom Allsop comes trotting off for Sussex, perhaps for a comfort break. Uh, Daniel Ibrahim comes on the field to replace him. I can see uh, <laughs> Brad Curry. Is that down there? He wants a drink. He does. Out. Definitely. That was the signal for yeah, I need me a drink down need, to need some long leg, please. It is warmer out there. Yeah. No question about it. Both the, the Leicestershire batters in uh, short sleeved shirts. Hudson Prentice having been dealt with summarily by yes. 
Patel in his previous over will be anxious for an element of revenge. Comes running in and bowls. Patel is stroking it out towards mid-wicket. If this throw hits, it could be close, and it does hit, but Crocombe sort of picked it up, and then he, he kind of lost balance a little bit, and by the time he'd sorted himself out and got his throw away, which, as I say, was an accurate one, just that sort of half a you know second or two Patel had made his ground, but there was a moment of hesitation between the two. Then Patel went. Crocombe at mid-wicket ran across, picked up, but kind of as he did so, just lost his balance a little bit. And by the time he sorted his feet out and got his throw away, Patel had made his ground. Almost an opportunity, but Patel on to 73, 136 for four. Hudson Prentice runs in and bowls to Vian Mulder, who gets a delivery outside off stump that he tries to cut away through the offside, but doesn't time it at all. Hits the bottom part of the bat and bounces out towards Coles in the covers, and there's no run. I've added 45 here uh, since lunch. I did make a note of the overs, actually, at lunchtime. Uh, 66 remained, so... Uh, last night, we had six last night, so... 66. 36 overs. Okay. I, I did, yeah, Thank there we go. Thank you. At lunch. In goes Hudson Prentice. Good line and length delivery. Mulder blocks it. So we've had, what, 11.2. Which time they have added 45. Yeah, so again, we're going to crawl a bit and over. They suddenly stuck in, suddenly Rishi Patel with that. Yeah. Big six. And still, they're still talking to each other, Hudson Prentice and Patel. You're going to try that again. Oh, try that again. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> it's a Patel. Not one of those batsmen who's, who usually ignores the bowler. He's quite happy to indulge in a conversation. Hudson Prentice is in. Mulder leans forward and blocks it out to mid off. Finn is the cry. Into his 11th over of the innings. Sorting out his man bun slash ponytail. Elastic band being applied. Turns. Shuffle to get into his run. It's a longish run. Vigorous one there, goes in bowls short outside off stump. Oh, cut away, but a brilliant diving stop. Uh, saves three runs for sure at point. It's uh, Ali Orr out there because that one was travelling. One is completed because although he got his right hand to the ball, it still went eight or ten yards behind him. But as I say, otherwise that would have been thumping into the advertising hoardings in front of the manual scoreboard. Dave scoreboard, Dave Goodacre of fond memory. Operated it for years. Hudson Prentice elbows jutting runs away from us and bowls to Mulu. Drives pleasantly but picks out Bajara at mid off. End of the over. And Hudson Prentice just checks studs on the bottom of his right boot. What's he checking? He's just checking his right hamstring, actually. Mm. And just, just stretching it slightly crossways as well. And again, just, just reaches down with his hand to behind his right knee. I just wonder here whether Chetis Bajara just might consider something a little different. It's I think Sussex are running out of steam, but they, they, j they just could do with a breakthrough here. Might be one or two tired legs. Brad Curry is in and bowls. Good take by Carter outside the off stump as Mulder lets that one go. He's on 36, Patel on 73. And still those two slips in place. And the gully. Standing there, had a sharp chance that went down earlier on. But had two lives, once on 27, once on 47. Neither of them were easy. They'd have been very good catches, but they did go down. 
Curry in bright sunshine from the Bennett end is in and bowls down the leg side. That's a very good take by Ollie Carter, who appeals, but um, Mulder didn't get a nick on that, or else it had been given out. Down the leg side was a good take. In fact, he rings his left hand as uh, Ollie Carter. And there is no run. So 23 needed for. Leicestershire to basket. And that's when you get into the realms, don't you? I mean, there's a little way out yet. There's still 53 overs to go. But if someone then does come in, if, if, you know, if a Riyad Ahmed comes in and, and you know cracks a quick 30-40, that starts to take the game very much into draw territory and away from Sussex. Curry in and bowls. Let go again by Mulder, taken by Carter. And again, there is no run. I just wonder whether he might think, Pajara, just to switch things around a little bit. Might, you know, just a little bit of James Cole, just to make, you know, perhaps them think a little bit, something else to think about. Some well, Armour definitely got a little bit, one or two to turn in his brief spell yesterday, so you never know. Just might be worth a try for a couple of overs. I'm sure it's on his mind. There's Brad Curry. Bowls and clipped away by Via Moldham. All runs here. There's at least a couple. Harry Cavalus has got to chase all the way around the boundary edge. They might even come back for a third. Uh, one for the throw? No, not one for the throw. Well, there was one for the throw because it wasn't <laughs> a very good one. <laughs> and, uh, that was another expression I did quickly. Oh, one for the throw. Um, but Harry Cavalus. Often is in club cricket, isn't yeah. it? But, uh, but uh, it certainly wasn't over the top of the stumps and they could have easily got a third, but in the end. Old is quite happy to settle for the two. He goes to 38, the total to 139 for four. Brad Curry in his 12th over, figures of one for 45, I think that says. In comes Curry and bowls wide of the off stump, taken by Carter. And there is no run. He just examines his boots, does Brad Curry. And wanders back to his mark. Fair, it's got a little flat out there in the field. Not quite the, not quite the the banter that there was earlier on. Well, it, it, in both senses, really, pitch has gone a little flat in the sun. The ball has gone a little bit dead because it's nearly 50 overs old now. Yeah. So, understandably, Sussex so not quite as buoyant as they were. Curry, in again, bowls to old who clips this one down to fine leg. They've taken one, and there will just be one on this occasion because. Arrow Cavalas is in, and that's a much better throw over the top of the stumps to Ollie Carter. So end of the over, 140 for four. Mulder 39, Patel on 73. Good partnership between these two, now worth 75. A steering Leicestershire to within sight of the 160 they'll need if they're going to make Sussex bat again. Um, I've got to do an update, so I'll leave you with uh, with Richard. Danny Wim comes running on. As the pads are brought out, so it does look like we are going to get James Coles. He is starting to warm up. Not not next over, the one there after, I suspect, because Ali Orr has uh, come across the boundary. That's why Ibrahim is, has come running on. And uh, he's sitting in a sort of director's chair that uh, Sussex have, have put out. And he's getting the pads on, so... In the meantime, Ibrahim has taken his place at point. Hudson Prentice is in. Bowls outside off stump. Mulder leaves and, and he's turning away well before almost it's in the gloves of Carter behind the stumps. That's gone quiet, that's for sure. Out there. Should have said to Adrian, t take five, and, and when you've done your update, pop down to the Friends of Grace Road, see, see what's left down there. But uh, I did have the bread and butter pudding, so perhaps not. In goes Hudson Prentice, outside off stump and left. Update coming for BBC Radio Leicester as well. Uh, 
at 65 for four, half an hour before lunch. Leicestershire were in deep, deep trouble, but a really good partnership so far worth 75 between Rishi Patel, who is 73, not out, and Vian Mulder, who's got a season best of 39, not out, beginning to drag Leicestershire back into the realms of saving this game. They've put together a partnership of 75 so far for the fifth wicket. 140 for four, the Foxes. They still need another 20 simply to make Sussex bat again. But the sun is out at Grace Road. The pitch is flat. And really, this is a game they should save. It's just the one delivery from Hudson Prentice, which Mulder left outside off stump. Hudson Prentice in again, bowls again outside off stump. Again, Mulder steps forward, gets in position to drive, but leaves, allows to bounce through. Still bowling very tightly, despite that one over of, of carnage. From Hudson Prentice when he was hit for 16. I think it was by Rishi Patel. I think it's still pretty good <laughs> coming up to the end of his 12th over. Two balls left to go in it, and one for 23 includes seven maidens. Runs in and bowls. Again, it's wide, and again, Mulder lets it go through. Hudson Prentice, again, just right hand touches the back of his right knee. Just a, uh, felt a little twinge, a bit crampy. And bowled so many overs this season. Rubs the ball right in that spot, actually. He uses the, the back of his right leg as his uh, polishing position, polishing location. A better description. Then turns and runs away from us. Bowls. Mulder leaves that side off stump. Again, end of the over. And we are going to see James Coles now. Ali Orr comes back on, padded up underneath his whites, carrying the helmet. And on two comes the Leicestershire 12th man with a drink for Rishi Patel. Mulder, too, gets a drink, takes his helmet off. 50 overs, so 14 overs have been bowled in the afternoon session, 49 runs added. Run rate for the innings as a whole is still relatively low, 2.8. But they have begun to accelerate a little. So, Coles. Carefully paces out his, his run up. He's going to bowl left arm. Looks like left arm. In fact, it's Smith who's pacing out a run up at the. Interesting. At the pavilion end. So maybe we're going to see a bit of leg spin from Steve Smith as well as James Coles's left arm spin from the Bennett end. Photographer alert. Coles is going to go round the wicket to Patel. Bowles, outside off stump, cut away to the sweeper on the offside boundary. Takes one. The aforementioned sweeper, who I think is Crocombe, overthrows Ali Orr, but plenty of backup, so no extras. Patel on to 74, Coles into Mulder, short and cut away, this time to the boundary. So just the first two deliveries. Well, first one was a little bit wide, not too short, but the second was both short and wide. Mulder took full advantage, cracking it away to the boundary in front of the meet for four. He moves on to 43, 145 for four. Partnership now 80. Coles is in again. It's uh, wide. This time he gets away with it because Mulder cuts again, but Tom also has gone to not quite on the 45, but very much backward of point. And it runs straight to him at a fair old rate as well. Coles is in wide again. This time 
just watched by Mulder into the gloves of Carter. He's got a very silly mid-off. A couple of yards from the bat. Coles is in, tosses it up, and it's uh, forward goes Mulder. Driving, but no weight in the shot. Pujara makes the stop. Coles pushes the hair back from his brow, then steps to the crease and uh, bowls. And Mulder is, well, getting away with one because he went for the big slogging straight hit there. Got a edge that is running down towards third man, and it's going to cross. No, it isn't going to cross the rope. Really good work down there by Tom Olsop running back, tumbling and just stopping the ball before it crosses the ropes. Mulder picks up a rather fortuitous three. But the runs continue to flow. Mulder on to 46 now, approaching what would be his first half century of the season. Picked up five wickets, remember, in the Sussex innings. Also picked up five wickets in Derbyshire's innings uh, last week at the Encora County Ground. So form starting to come for Vian Mulder. But he got a little bit lucky there. 148 for four partnership now worth 83. Well, we aren't going to see Smith perhaps, uh, well, yet anyway. Might in due course. But Hunter's Apprentice for the time being will continue from the pavilion end. The slope he goes and bowls. Advancing down the wicket is Mulder, but Hudson Prentice sees him coming. Bowls accordingly, and Mulder just blocks it out into the onside. Come on, Finn, come on. Can Hudson Prentice just find a little bit of inspiration from somewhere. It's not easy with the old ball on a flat track. In he goes, bowls, and oh, almost did on that occasion. Mulder trying to punch it into the leg side, got an inside edge onto the pad, and it uh, trickles out into the off side. There's no run. That's all right. I was a little longer. The uh, you're never quite sure with the updates at the weekend, but um, anyway, I think they'll actually have forgotten me. How could that? How could anyone forget you, Adrian? <laughs> well, they do, frequently. <laughs> Once met, never <laughs> forgotten. <laughs> they were just playing a, a, the song they were playing. I'll, I'll come back to it in a minute. <laughs> Hudson Prentice is in and bowls, worked by Mulder off, just outside off stump, down towards backward point, but Coles fields and there's no run. They were playing It's a Miracle by Culture Club. Um... It would just occurred to me, I mean, Sussex don't need a miracle, but they're sort of reaching territory here, but they need, certainly need something. Because these two have batted really well. Let's be honest, this is a partnership now worth 83. Um, but people will look at the scorecard and think, oh, the, we, we weren't good enough to... You know, if, if Leicester should save it, in goes Hudson Prentice and Bowles outside off stump. but And it's a left by Mulder. But you have to know about how the ball is, is so different after sort of 40 overs it, it you know the, the seam is is off it's not seaming the pitch is flatter it's an entirely sort of different to the early overs with with the new ball i think to be fair pajara is doing everything he can he's rotating his bowl he's given the spinner an opportunity i can see ari carvelos is warming up again so he's doing what he can well, as Hudson Prentice is in and down the wicket goes Mulder, but he sees him coming and bowls wide, and Mulder lets it go through. I saw Steve Smith pacing a run out yeah. very carefully from this end as well, and uh, a few photographers probably perked up yeah, at I'm the other sure. side. <laughs> sure but uh, <laughs> well, one, one would have we haven't seen Curry, I don't think, from this end. Uh, no, we certainly, haven't. Certainly not today, anyway. No. So that, that, that's an option and that changes things a little bit. But, well, Mulder's sachets down the wicket have persuaded Ollie Carter to put on the helmet. Happily, there's one out there. Yeah. There's two out there, actually, as Hudson Prentice is in bowls wide, cut oh. for four. And that is Mulder's 50. And it's been a really fine knock by Vian Mulder. He's been uh, desperate for runs, Mulder. And he'll feel so much better for that. It's come off 92 balls.
good knock, wasn't it? You were saying he hasn't been in great touch this season, but he's a quality player. And you always feel with someone like Beer Mulder that, you know, sooner or later he's going to get into good form and um, just when it was needed, to be honest. Eight fours. Very good. Hartshire now 87 between these two, and you just get the feeling it's steering Leicestershire through these choppy waters. Well, just eight short now of making Sussex bat again. And then, of course, time becomes something of a factor. Yeah. Uh, ben has been in touch. Hello, Ben. Um, we were talking about the fact he'd been to university in Leicester yesterday. Mm. He's been oh in yes. touch today. He says, Dear Adrian and Richard, in comes James Coles running in. And Patel, uh, sorry, yes, Patel is down the wicket driving firmly to mid off. There is no run. And he says, I would love to take my son to Hove this week so we can see three fantastic test cricketers play for Sussex in his first match. However, I was going to say it sounded like a butt was going to follow. There is. Coles in. Bowls and driven again by uh, Patel to mid-off again, fielded by Curry. However, he's only seven months old and his <laughs> mum, in brackets my wife, is far from convinced it's a good idea. You might not appreciate every nuance. <laughs> Comes Coles. Down the wicket is Patel. He's looking to hit him over the top. I think it's a good captaincy by Pujara because he's got his mid-off and his mid-on halfway to the boundary, so Patel could well be tempted to come and try and drive the ball over the top. Wouldn't fancy being Ali Orr in there at silly mid-off, mind you. In comes Coles, and Patel flicks this to mid-wicket. There is no run. Um, I think he'll be fine. Michael Park is pushed here near the deck chairs and far from any potential rowdiness. What do you chaps think? Um, in comes Coles. Down the wicket does come, but tell hits this high wide and handsome, and that has gone for a maximum. Club down the ground by Rishi Patel. He likes that on drive. He hammers the ball down the ground. As I say, I think fair play to Bujara. He's keeping his mid on and his mid off up. He's encouraging Patel to play that shot. And I think as a spinner, you're never desperately upset to see that because he's taking you on. But it was a really good over up to that point, and yeah, Patel to 80, and now just two more runs needed before Leicestershire are in positive territory. Coles shifts the ball from hand to hand. He's in and bowls and swept, Oof. and that's going to go for six more. Wow. Pulled away, oh, he's swept away. To the, oh, they did bounce four. just short. Did it, just yeah. short, was it? So, James Coles expensive. It's worth a try, but his two overs have gone for 18. And now Leicestershire are in positive territory. They're actually two for four, you could say. And that prompts a debate between Pujara, Smith, Ali Orr, Tom Allstop. They're all getting in and having a word. Um, so what should Ben do? Um, well, I think at seven you'll probably find your son sleeps quite a bit. If it's a nice day, I, I think if the young man wakes up, I'm sure he'll have a little wander around the ground. I think it'll be fine. Yeah, it depends on the weather. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and actually, the forecast I heard earlier on was that next week is... I, th I thought the forecast was miserable again, but I think it's not going to be desperately warm. But the, the forecast I heard at lunchtime was it was going to be a little drier. So, I, li I like that Ben has started in indoctrinating him early, poor, yeah. poor, poor little soul. Yeah, and a bit of and a bit of sea air as well. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Good for everyone. Yeah, I, I think go for it, Ben. But don't say Richard and I said that was a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> He'll probably get in for nothing though. I hope so. <laughs> oh, one would hope so. Well, Curry is going to come on. It's not going to be Steve Smith. Good spot, Richard. Um, he's going to have a go from the pavilion end. Rishi Patel has now hit four sixes in his 84. And uh, tell you what, they've been cleanly struck, haven't they? Very good shots. Um, Clive Jacobs has been in touch. I'll quickly read his email. He says, hello, Adrian. Thanks for the coverage of Sussex as they tried to take more Leicestershire wickets. It's a nice surprise that at last Sussex have found an attack that can take wickets. And we're now bowling as a unit. I understand why Nathan McCandry is not playing as he's had to make way for Steve Smith. We've got a consultation gone here about the ball. I think. Yeah, they're, they're, they're picking bits out of it. it. It's taking a bit of a battering. Now, it may be about to change. The Sussex won't be too unhappy about that. No. 53 overs. I, to say, I understand why Nathan McCandry is not playing as he had to make way for Steve Smith. And whilst it would be nice if he made runs for Sussex, I would rather he made low scores for Australia. <laughs> And not for Sussex. I doubt Steve Smith's going to get another opportunity in this game to, to bat as well. Um, yeah, well, Sussex are, if they bowl Leicester out, they are going to have to bat again. But uh, I don't anticipate, however much however much is needed, that there'll be a massive change in the order. Because 
Messrs Orr and Haynes are the quick scorers, aren't they, at the top of the order? And yeah, I think uh, I think I think you're right. So we, if indeed Sussex do get to bat, because there are only four well, only there are 49 overs left in the day. Yeah, take off two for the change of innings, and of course the over that we're in. So it would now be 46 mm. if if. Brad Curry takes all six wickets in this over. Yeah. But uh, so we still <laughs> no point doing those sums yet, is there really? Because Leicester are only two ahead. But Tom, I, I was I was making the point, and I saw it again at lunchtime. And um, you know, I, I, I think sports people should, wherever possible, sign autographs and have photographs taken. But certainly in an arena like this, where players are very much more accessible than in the Test arena, and. Um, uh, Steve Smith, thanks. Been very good since he's been over. He was signing a host of autographs at lunchtime. He was posing for photographs. So, um, you know, he's certainly done the PR bit very well here this week. So, hats off. Got to earn his money somehow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's not no, fair. No, well, you do. No, that's I was, not fair. I was, uh, but, I was, I was yeah. covering the Albion the other week. We went to Stamford Bridge, and there, I won't name the players, but there oh, were a couple. Do, of, do. Uh, there were a couple of Chelsea players who came wandering out, who people have been waiting for, and were there with yeah. cameras and autographs books, and the players just walked past, got in their cars, and drove off. Well, there was a, there's a, a video clip of Leeds players yeah. leaving the hotel that went viral, didn't it? Just yeah. walking past youngsters waiting for autographs and. And, uh, the club has apologised about that, but it didn't. It looked awful. No, it doesn't doesn't play out well. In fact, there was a, a, a lady shouted out, "We paid a lot of money to watch you." Which was fair enough. Brad Curry is in and bowls to Vian Mulder, who turns it to mid wicket. Crokham picks up and hurls the ball Ouch. like one who means it at the stumps, misses them, but hits the leg of Rishi Patel as he ran past the stumps, and uh, looks like it's. A avoided the pad as well sort of the inside the out the outside part of his, his right knee behind the pad so to speak so he's just limping around a little bit the back of his right knee that will sting it will sting that's painful Mulder moves on to 51 Patel third century of the season within reach he must not give it away now because said this I think the last game that when he got a 50, it's the hundreds that people notice. Weight of runs, yes, that's very important. In goes Curry Bowles to him. He's turning him off his legs down towards square leg. Again, Crocom is the fielder. This time he's got a bit further to run, so it is a very comfortable single. But centuries really make people sit up, and three centuries in what would be, he says, nine innings yeah. is, a, is a decent return along with a, a half century as well more than decent return well, he's not 25 until July Richard Rishi Patel no he's, a, he's, a, he's a still a very young man came from Essex in goes Curry driving in the air is Mulder but he's got it into the gap Coles very quick across the outfield picks up a yard inside the ropes at extra cover Mulder takes two and that is the century partnership between Vian Mulder and Rishi Patel and that is a century partnership that was very very badly needed by Leicestershire came together when Peter Hanscom was uh, cleaned up by Brad Curry without scoring 65 for four four wickets had fallen for just nine runs at that stage and it wasn't long after that Patel was dropped for the second time. Tom Walsop diving to his right. Couldn't quite hang on the bowling of Curry. What a difference that might have made. Curry is in to Patel, who is, I think, playing inside the line of that one. And it's not taken cleanly by Carter behind the stumps. And he's cross he whacks his gloves together in annoyance. That's not encouraging clapping. That's cross with himself clapping. Yeah. But it, uh, he was lucky it came off his gloves and bounced down to slip. I think Sussex just need to keep thinking here. Leicestershire is seven for four. If you think in those terms, it sounds a bit more positive. But these two are batting very nicely. Curry is in. Patel is clipping sure. through mid-wicket for four. Again, it was very over a few, good few feet, but beautifully Timed by, by Rishi Patel. Well, he's looking a good player. 
Yeah, he is. I was, I was looking at his, his, you know, born in Chigwell. Correct, I yeah. just called him Brent Wooden. He had a season for Essex Twos when I think he scored, he scored a vast amount of runs, but he could never get a run in the first team. Yeah, well, he's a good player. We, we thought, I mean, to be fair, we in the first innings we said how well he was playing and then we'd rather talk him out, but he's, he's he, he suddenly showed he is a good player. Waiting with bat raised as Curry is in bowls to him. He plays with an angle bat, but a good diving stop by S. Smith. Away to his right in the gully, saves a long chase for Coles. Will Coles continue from the Bennett end? Because it's the end of the over, 171 for four. Walder 54, Patel now 89. Partnership 106, the lead 11. Number of overs to go, 48. Yeah, his highest score in the book before this season was 99 against Sussex at home. Do you remember? Year. Yeah. That was in, in, that in, in the Runfest. Runfest game. Um, but played for Essex between 2015 and 2019. So he got into the Essex twos when he was a very young player. Awful lot of ability. And as I say, Paul Nixon thinks there's an international player there beginning, beginning to fulfil that. Yeah, Potential, perhaps. No, most definitely. What can Henry Croker do? Sussex need a wicket. Comes in and bowls to Via Mulder. And Mulder smashes that one away to the boundary for four runs. Slightly overpitched. And Mulder's starting to see this well. It was just overpitched and he just caressed the ball through the covers. It raced away for four runs. Beautifully played. He goes to 58. And Leicestershire to 175 for four. I tell you one thing we can be sure of, Adrian, is that the, these two will not break the fifth wicket partnership record but for Leicester against Sussex. No, that's 477. <laughs> <laughs> that's etched on our memory, Richard. Indeed. And Mulder played his part in that. He's Mulder and Ackerman last season. Yeah. Croken again. Comes in and bowls. And Mulder is four. Plays it to mid on. Uh, Carvelis is in from mid on, but. Um, there was never any chance of a run out because as soon as Mulder played the ball, he was off for the single. He goes to 59, 176 for four. Lead is 16. And probably Chetish Rapajara is taking it mid off. He's, he's sort of wondering where he goes here because I'm not sure the Hudson Prentice is. I'm not sure he's totally fit. He seems to be struggling a little bit with his ankle. He's looked the most dangerous, but it's, it's, it's quite flat. Now in comes Croak and Bowls. Let's take nothing away from these two as Patel plays to back will point. There is no run. These two have batted really well. well he's been holding his, the back of his right knee in this spell. He's, as I say, I just get the impression with Hudson Prentice, given his injury, there's, there's something of the old soldier about him. But, you know, obviously a lot of his injuries have been genuine. So he's understandably probably a little bit paranoid about niggles. plays to extra cover there is no run so this is the 55th over with this ball so Sussex would have to wait 25 is that right Correct, 25 yeah. overs for another ball to be available yeah, no my expression was one of sort of yeah there's a lot of overs to go with this old ball and if you know if if, if let's just score at four and over that's another 100 runs before the new ball is available they've already got a lead of 16 that's 116 and then you're really running out of time in comes Croker. Bowls clipped away. Bob well, a nice shot on a very tired looking Harry Carvalho's dive to his right. He gets a hand on it, but not before. Patel goes back for a couple of runs. He goes to 91. So Sussex are going to have to do it with this ball. 178 for four. Lead is 18. I think I'm going to start a campaign for the abolition of the heavy roller during matches. Yeah, you think it's had an effect here? Uh, I, I, there's no question that each game I've seen this season, the heavy rollers sort of changed the nature of the pitch for, for too long. It wears off, but usually too late. Crocombe in bowls, driven away nicely through extra cover by Batani. He takes a single, Bajara swiftly round, and the throw hits the stumps. He's a very keen eye, hasn't he? Chetish for Bajara. He very seems to hit the stumps with these throws, but uh, Batani was long home. He's on 92. 179 for four. The lead is 19. A couple of guys look like they're maybe packing up or going down to get a beer or something. 
Should, should, should you wish, I'll, I'll happily stand in for a, a few minutes if you want to visit the Friends of Grace Road. Oh, yeah, I will. <laughs> Yeah, they're open. They're right? unexpectedly open, so that so you never know what, what what might be in there. Right, well, let's go and uh, take, take, take your yeah, wear your badge just in case. They'll, under, uh, they'll understand. That. Yeah, well, let's go over there and get six what we can find. <laughs> um, let's see if we can I think I think you're safe for a good few minutes. You haven't got a top of the hour, have you? No, no, no. Are I'm, you okay? I'm, no, um, I might have one after four when the footy starts. Uh, oh, but yes. I'll go. Both of us, both uh, Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Sussex and BBC Radio Leicester have football matches to deal with this afternoon. In goes Brad Curry, bowls to Patel, who edges between first slip and gully for four. Well, it was a slightly airy push drive at the ball. Took the edge and uh, went between Smith and Allsop. And Patel, who well though he has played, Beautifully, though, he's played post-lunch. Has had his share of good luck in this innings as well. Dropped twice. 27 and 47. And now he's 96. Not out. Waits with bat raised. Curry goes in. Bowls to Patel, who's just defending that one. Keep going, keep going is the exhortation, understandably. It'll look a little bit uh, tired now, this Sussex attack. More to the point though, the ball is tired. And it is a very different situation in those circumstances. Curry turns, runs in and bowls. Patel is blocking him firmly, sort of straight driving on drive. He could pick up four. It's going to go down to long on and it is four. Rishi Patel raises his bat to the heavens. Another beautiful piece of timing. Rishi Patel has scored his third century of the season. Beautifully played by Patel. That is three centuries in just nine innings. Also a half century to him. And I think now he is the top scorer in the second division, Rishi Patel now fulfilling his talent in spectacular style. His 100 has come off 154 deliveries. It includes four sixes and 16 fours. Outside off stump from Curry, Patel leaves. Three sixes, I beg your pardon. One was almost a, a six, one of the fours. 154. Making a note. 16-3. And Leicester should move on to 187 for four, now leading by 27. Patel still has a job to do as Curry is in. Bowls to him and he's... Very studiously forward on off stump, pushing the delivery out into the off side. 46 overs remain in the day. If these two stay together until T, it's fairly unlikely we'll get them all. Because I suspect on that basis, the teams will be sort of shaking hands around about uh, 10 past five on the draw. But still, the opportunity is there if they can break this partnership, Sussex. In goes Curry, bowls, outside off stump, edge caught. Well, Patel's gone, they have broken it. Curry got a little bit of extra bounce. Patel went forward, took the outside edge, went past Carter. Whether Carter got a little bit of a glove on it, I'm not quite sure, but Allsop took the catch, two-handed to his left, uh, deep in deep at first slip, and Rishi Patel's innings comes to an end on exactly 100. Well, I was saying he still had a job to do, whether he just lost a little bit of concentration, looked a little bit tired, pushed forward at that one, thickish edge, might have come off Carter's gloves, we'll have to have a look at the replay. Either way, Allsop able to complete the catch and the breakthrough has finally come. The partnership was 122 and it's given Leicestershire a decent chance of saving the game, but it is by no means a foregone conclusion. Applause for Rishi Patel, let you hear that as he leaves the pitch. Well, 
little twist. The lead is just 27, so effectively 27 for five. Leicestershire, with Han Ahmed, who batted so well in the first innings, has a job to do in the second. Comes out to join Vian Mulder. And if Sussex can break this partnership quickly as well, the old bang bang, they'll feel they've still got a chance, a really good chance of enforcing the win. Let's have a look at the replay. Here it comes. No, that isn't the replay. That's a replay of a, a four. That he played previously and miles behind on the stream. So, end of the over. Curry's over. And Henry Crocombe will continue from the Bennett end. He should be invigorated. Sussex will be lifted by that wicket hugely. And rightly so, as Crocombe comes charging in and bowls to Mulder, who leaves outside off stump. Calm, restored from Leicestershire's point of view. Adrian is is back. I have news from the friends of Grace Road. Oh, it's got bad news. No, it? it's good news. Oh, is it? Is yeah, it? really good news. They, um, oh, well, go on then. Uh, well, well, the best news of going over there from a Sussex perspective was they've got a wicket. Yes, you go. Well done, you. <laughs> so I might go away. I'm out of breath. It's pathetic, isn't it, coming up those stairs? Crocom is in and bowls. Mulder defends out into the offside. I'm um, agog. Agog. Go on. No, there was loads of cake over there. So basically, they said, we don't normally open on the fourth day, as nope. you said. But because the first day was washed out, uh, there is cake available. And there were probably five or six varieties of cake. And I just didn't know what to choose, to be perfectly honest, Richard. So, for our tea, we have coffee and walnut or rhubarb. Both of which sound superb. In goes Croak and bowls. Thick inside edge. Mulder onto the pad. Says, do you want me to pick it up? Does so. And, uh, well, he obviously got the word from Ali Orr. Yes, please. And uh, tosses it to Orr. And just Crocom. Sorry, go on. No, sorry, and, and as I was getting a piece of cake, I suddenly... Cause there's quite a decent crowd in, you know. As you walk it around, is, you don't yeah, realise yeah, how no. many people are in. And so I saw Patel hit the boundary for his hundred. And as I was paying for the cake, the wicket went down. So I have no idea what happened. I shall tell you in a moment. In goes Crocom and a bowls outside off stump. Mulder leaves. He just pushed forward at a delivery from Curry. Took a thickish edge. I think it sort of came off the gloves of Carter. I'm not certain. I haven't, still haven't seen a replay. The stream is catching up with itself. This might be it. Um, and it was well caught by Allsop. Two-handed to his left at first slip. So I think it, it burst through. Let's have a look if this is it. No, that's not it. Any minute now. Next ball. In goes Crocombe and Bowles. Mulder leans forward and calmly defends out into the offside. So I shall make this big on my computer screen because I'm pretty sure it is this delivery. And you shall see it. And we shall see if it went through or off the gloves of cart. It just seemed to either that or it was a thick outside edge, thickish. It was a slightly tired push forward from Rishi Patel. You watch that, I'll watch that. In goes Crocombe and Bowles and Mulder defends back up the pitch. It was, that's exactly what it was. Deflected off the grabs, I reckon. He couldn't quite believe it, could he, when he was out? Here comes the replay, great. End of the over, so I'll be able to see it properly now. Let's have a look, see. But Curry's made a couple of important breakthroughs. Yep, straight off the gloves. So, a little bit of uh, ill luck. He, he had his luck in the innings. You, ha you have to say that, Rishi Patel. That that wasn't lucky, but and it was good luck for Ollie Carter in particular. But and good work by Allsop actually yes. to uh, anticipate. He yeah, reacted late flung himself to his left, took a good catch. And uh, luck has swung, and the, the game could change because new man at the crease, Rahan Ahmed, two slips and a gully go down. Gorgeous afternoon now, Curry in. Bowls, Ahmed is forward, please. Into the gully there is now. So I reckon that was a partnership 122. Correct. Between the pair. That could be a match-saving partnership. But I was saying that Sussex needs to 
take off the 160 so effectively you're saying let's just show a 27 for five with 44 overs left in the match so you know Sussex still very much in the hunt here oh yes absolutely um, absolutely curry bright sunshine bowls oh, they sit on the pad um that was an unconvincing appeal. I'd rather think that was pitching outside leg. And there is no run. Two slips in the gully, as Richard was saying. Cover. Um, point cover mid off, mid on, mid wicket, and a fine leg. Lots of people over in the um, getting the cakes. Good. You know, a good army of volunteers helping. And what a brilliant idea. They do, um, they do grand work, really. And as I say, they raise tens of thousands each year for the oh, club. That's really, really good. Brilliant. Curry is in bowls and Ahmed plays and picks up his first run as he plays it out to square leg fielded by James Cold. He's on his way, 188 for five. And one of the nice things about it is that they get to choose what the money is spent on. So it doesn't sort of go into the general pot. Yeah, yeah, that's know? good. That's um, really nice. So, so each year there's something that is done to improve the ground that the Friends of Grace Road can point to. And uh, I, I can think of three things. Obviously, the score, the score box, completely renovated. The manual score wow, box. Wow, really? Yeah. Oof. A couple of seasons ago, courtesy of the friends. Curry. Left arm over the wicket, bowls to Mott. Oh, I thought he bowled him then. Playing a miss outside the off stump. Carter didn't take the ball cleanly. He's not having the easiest of time standing up to the stumps, Ollie Carter. It's the right thing to do. But um, that was a little untidy. Yeah, he's struggling a bit, isn't he? Yeah. All those new seats in the um, members stand between the meet and the pavilion, they put in over the winter. Oh, actually, a couple of, a couple of weeks ago, that, that there was a friend who did that. And the ground staff have benefited from some splendid new machines in recent years as well, paid for by the friends of Grace Road. Curry in bowls. And again, Carter does <laughs> He's it. Yeah, I mean, that. that was low down, but he didn't take it cleanly, and he, he's having a rough time. He, he sort of drags himself to his feet. <laughs> didn't get anything on it. No, thumped into his pad, didn't it? Bless his but, heart. But that is brilliant, isn't it? You know how good that you know in these days of you know IPL contracts and millions of pounds sloshing around the game that you get you know some volunteers selling cakes, and that raises you know money for much needed machinery and seats. I think that's fantastic. Score boxes. And yeah, you know. Isn't that amazing? That you know, there's still a place for that in the game. In comes Curry, bowls, and that's a better take by Carter to a ball outside of the off stump. There is no run. End of the over. One eighty-eight for five. Molder fifty-nine. Richard Ahmed is on one. We will enjoy our cake at tea time. We'll get a nice cup of tea prepared. He's sitting at the back of the box, out of the way of the sunshine at the moment. We have glorious blue skies. Yeah, we do. The first time in the game, really. It is lovely out there, and it is tense as well. It is. An 88 for five, 28 for five, if you like. 44 overs remain. It would be 41 if all five wickets were to fall in this over, and Sussex would do it very easily indeed. The, the other thing about that, Richard, it just goes to show how much some people care about their club. I think that's, that's, the, that's the great thing, isn't it? People care about the club. Crocombe is in to Rihan Ahmed, short outside off stump, up on his toes, cracked away to the cover boundary. Coles chased his hard, but I think he knew in his heart it was always likely to be in vain. Ahmed picks up his first boundary in this second innings, moves on to five, 192 for five, touch of the gloves with Vian Mulder. It's nice actually to wander around the ground during play just for five minutes. Cause you is, of how many people are here. Much it? different, a hugely different perspective. We get used to sitting in the commentary box. Crocombe in Ahmed leaves outside off stump. Yeah, it's a, it's a because from we're, we're atop the pavilion building, flat roof up here, we 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 can't see any of the stands below us, um, which tend to be the most popular often because they're out of the wind if you know what I mean so, and them obviously the members and the restaurant down there and we don't always see how quite how many people are around from our eerie up here good view excellent isolated view. though 
Crocombe is in bowls and just left by Ahmed just to let it bounce through outside off stump. I, I, every time I watch Henry Crocombe bowl, I, I, you know, I just think that there was a, there was a good young bowler in there. Oh he, yeah, you know, for sure. You know, he bowls at a good lick. He, he he's comfortably the quickest of the Sussex bowlers. You know, he's quite lean. Um, you know, I, I guess if you're a bit critical. It's often with a young bowler, he bowls a couple of good deliveries, then a loose delivery. So he'll know he needs to improve that. But I just feel there is a good bowler in there with Henry Crocombe. Who bowls? Oh, almost Yorks, Ahmed. But Ahmed plays it, gets down on it, squeezes it off the edge of the bat, along the ground all the way. It runs through the slips and down to third man for four. So Crocombe just turns and marches. <laughs> his, his shoulders set. Like a, like it's a, so a bit, a bit like a teenager, a, a sulky teenager heading to his bedroom. Mm. Nothing of the sort, of course, but he oh, a bit f fed up about muttering to himself, yeah, yeah. No, no doubt about his ill fortune. His figures of one for fifty-one bear no real resemble, you know, d don't reflect on the quality of his bowling, which has been much higher than that suggests. Goes in and bowls to Ahmed. There's an appeal for leg before, but his appeal was just there was that half a second of delay. Yeah. And uh, you knew that although the slips had gone up, Crocombe's appeal was that of a man who knew it was going down the leg side. There's some late drama up the M1 at Derby, where Gloucestershire made 383. Derbyshire needing to bat out a few overs to secure the draw 28 for 2. Still trailing by 104. Mm -hmm. Crocom is in bowls. Ahmed is driving. Oh, oh what, what a catch. catch. Wow. Oh, my word. That was Brilliant Steve Smith. Diving. Catch. Unbelievable. What a catch that was, wasn't it? I thought that was past him. Well, that was worth the attendance money for those who've come to see Steve Smith. That was a remarkable catch, wasn't it? Unbelievable. It was. He went for the drive. Thick outside edge. Smith flung himself to his right, plucked the ball out of the air when it looked as though it was past him. And uh, again, another huge blow struck by Sussex. They are still in this fighting for the win. Ahmed goes for a nine. Such a dangerous player because he scores his runs fairly quickly. But on that occasion, his attempt to score the runs fairly quickly ended in his demise. Court Smith bowled the persevering Crocombe for nine. Sussex, well, 196 for six. Leicestershire still now just, what, 36 ahead. Mulder's still there, but down to... Well, you have to say Wright is now still probably an all-rounder. I was going to say down to the bowlers, but <laughs> the way Wright has played this season suggests that he, he's a bit more than a batting bowler, so to speak, but he's got a job of work to do. That was one heck of a catch. It was behind him, you know, when he caught it, it I reckon. It was. And if he does nothing else in his time at Sussex, <laughs> and that. Sussex go on to win <laughs> this game, well, Smith can say, I made a contribution. Well, we, we, we were saying earlier on about hold your catches, win your matches. My word, that was a bit special. Um, I mean, yeah, when I went to get the cake, I was thinking, you know, Rishi Patel made his 100. You, you can never tell with the game. That's the great thing about Champions cricket. And, you know, it may swing back the other way. But all of a sudden, this crowd, and there's a really good crowd in. I said to Richard, it wasn't until I wandered around, you'd see the people sitting in the seats that Richard was saying about the Friends of Grace Road and uh, 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 of finance. There's quite a few people in the ground on a lovely sunny day. And effectively, we were talking about how Sussex need to view this because Leicestershire are now effectively 36 for six with 43 overs left uh, i thought that they might just push right ahead of scriven but that would be wrong scriven is a genuine all-rounder and <laughs> has come out to the crease so uh, we are still in the realms of the all-rounders and here comes brad curry coming into bowl to vm molder he's in and bowls and molder is forward plays down the onside bit of responsibility now on vm molder he'll be the senior partner out there they cannot lose another wicket before T Leicestershire. If they do, Sussex will be strong, strong favourites to go on and enforce the win. Obviously, the favourites to win the game. But as opposed to the draw, I think it swung 70-30 in favour of Sussex winning. The draw about 30. Be about right. 
taken by Carter and there is no run they've still got to take the wickets um, and we saw how the tail really wagged for Leicestershire, Leicestershire lest we forget were 160 for 7 in their first innings those last three wickets had at 110 if they could do similarly today yeah, it's that, that, draw, that, isn't it? That, but yeah, it's taking the game away from Sussex. They've been very patient, Sussex here. Through that long stand of 122 between Patel and Mulder. And now they're getting their award. In comes Curry Bowles, driven with a very straight pat by Veer Mulder to mid off. Filtered by Chetish with Bajara at no run. Surrey back to the top of the county championship. They've beaten Middlesex convincingly at the Oval by nine wickets. It's a good battle though. Warwickshire having a good season. Um, they are just three points behind. So Surrey, Warwickshire, Nottinghamshire, Essex, Middlesex, Hampshire, Lancashire, Northamptonshire and Somerset in that order. Although there is a still game going on between Lancashire and uh, Somerset. In comes a Bragg Curry. Bowls, a lot of drives, lovely looking shots, and that's going to be four runs. That's a beautiful shot, Richard. I mean, he puts his foot right to the pitch of the ball. He just hammers it away through the covers for four runs. He's a quality cricketer. Five wickets in the first innings. And the shot of a very classy player. He goes to 63, and in so doing, he brings up the 200 for his side. 200 for six. I have to go get my sunglasses out the car at tea time, you know. Absolutely, it's blazing in it there, is. isn't it? It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Lovely shot by Veer Mulder. Curry's pitching the ball up. I think that's the right thing to do. Trying to induce the edge. Curry's on his way. Bowls. Mulder's hit on the pad. I think there was probably a little bat on to pad there and probably pitching outside the line anyway of leg stump and there is no run and there's a change in the field I think oh no Pajara's making a he's bringing up the deep mid wicket so the idea is here literally to bowl at Tom Scriven the number eight now he's, he's trying to get some instruction again we've got a delay here no great still just plus two so yeah, no, the, he, be okay he, yeah, they can fiddle that. <laughs> it, 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 it might be two point nine or something. You yes. never know. That's the is this true? <laughs> 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 trouble. In comes Curry. Bowls forward comes. And uh, mission accomplished as far as Sussex are concerned. Then they'll get to bowl to Tom Scriven, who is the new batsman. That's not doubting Tom Scriven's ability in any way, shape, or form. But uh, you always want to bowl at the new man if you can. And Henry Crocombe's going to get the opportunity. But to do that with figures of 2 for 68, and I agree wholeheartedly with Rich, and I think he's bowled a little better than those figures suggest. No question. And that is a huge breakthrough, helped by uh, the best batsman in the world, who is oh. also a pretty good slipper, it would yeah. appear. Uh, Gary Knight's been in touch. I'm not sure if you're aware, but you were captured on the live stream clutching some refreshments just after the fifth wicket was taken. So perhaps you might want to get some regular visits for the remainder of the Leicestershire innings. Was that when I came back from the cakes, presumably? I didn't see that. Yes, it must must have been. <laughs> Guilty as charged, I'm afraid, Gary. Could, could have got us with puddings earlier as yeah, well. Yeah, you could have done. In goes Crocombe and bowls forward goes Scriven. Back down the pitch on the onside goes the ball. So 40, just 40, the lead. Jara has, has a word with Crocombe, who's been admirable, really. Yeah, I think. This afternoon. He has. He's running very hard. He's going to give him another slip. Four slips. Come on, Henry. <laughs> In he goes. And bowls. Ooh, dug out rather by Scriven. Wait there, he says, as he pushes the ball out to Pujara, who's the only man in front of square on the offside now. Point is just backward, I think, of point. Or Pujara patrolling a large area. I suspect Scriven won't be inclined to drive unless it's absolutely in the slot. Crocombe 
Crocombe is in bowls and uh, leaves and not taken cleanly by Carter again. And uh, he's fortunate to get away with it. It bounces behind him, now having gone out of his gloves, and Allsop runs back to field. Carter looks ruefully down at the ground. Yeah, he's had, he's had a tough day behind the stumps as, uh, as Ollie Carter. He isn't the cleanest no, of the isn't. keepers, yeah, is he? You've got to be honest, he isn't. And, he, um, he catches the ones that, that matter, perhaps. Or at least deflects them to first slip. <laughs> in goes uh, Crokham, and uh, Scriven plays it firmly down into the ground. Crokham fields in his follow-through. Now, am I right in thinking he's a fisherman, Olika? He likes to fish. He likes to harry the scaly denizens. Uh, Joe, I can't remember who it was, or was that James Coles? I'll have a look. I see. can't remember you. I have it in mind. Crocombe turns. Runs in and bowls, and Scriven is driving through the offside, and oh, Pajara sure. does have a chase. He should drag it. No, he won't. Yeah, I right. thought he was going to, but he doesn't really have two gears, Pajara. He does his best, but... He doesn't really accelerate after the ball, and uh, off the mark with a boundary is Tom Scriven. Ollie Carter. Favourite toy as a kid, the Xbox. Describe yourself in three words. Relaxed, interesting, boring. Oh. Right. Something of a contradiction in, in terms there. Mm. Big Newcastle fan, apparently. I didn't realise that. I don't know why. And no mention whatsoever of fishing, so I don't know where I got that I from. I think that was my, you did, we did, there was someone you found around at fishing. In goes Crokham Bowles, and Scriven is playing positively, pushing it back past Crokham, who puts down his left hand, stops the ball, slows it en route to Pajara at mid-off, and it's the end of his 15th over, 2 for 55, his figures, but two pretty good wickets to his name, Rahan Ahmed. Uh, brilliantly caught by Steve Smith for nine. And the other one was Lewis Hill, Leicestershire's captain, neatly caught by Allsop at first slip without scoring. So 204 for six on Leicestershire. If you're just joining us this afternoon, wherever you're listening to us from, a very warm welcome. And it is a warm welcome to a lovely sunny Grace Road. Um, the first sign of summer, really. A lovely day. Lots of cotton wool cloud above the ground which looks an absolute picture. If you're watching on the Sussex, on the Leicestershire live stream or you're listening to us via the BBC website or app, a very good afternoon. BBC Radio's Sussex and Leicester, Adrian Harms and Richard Ray on what's an absorbing final day. Leicestershire 204 for six, effectively 44 for six. As in comes Brad Curry, who the wicket bowls to uh, VM Mulder, who lets that one go outside the off stump. He's on 63. Leicestershire were in all sorts of trouble on 65 for four before an excellent partnership of 122 between Rishi Patel, who made exactly 100, and Mulder rescued the innings. Since then, Rehad Ahmed has gone for nine. Sussex striving to pick up these final four wickets. There are 40 overs left after this. So we could be in for a tight finish here. You just get that sort of feeling this could go all the way to the last few overs of the day. In comes Curry, bowls to Mulder, who drives down the ground, lovely looking shot, and a rather tired, Harry Carvalhos chases the ball, that's a lovely shot, just drilled down the ground, he's a quality player, he's Vian Mulder, beautifully played, he goes to 67, and let's just shift to 208 for 6, and these runs are absolutely vital for Leicester, these are runs Sussex going to have to score, and as the score goes up and the overs come down, so the, equ I mean, the equation is well within Sussex's reach at the minute, but We've got to take these final four wickets. And if you're thinking about, well, is there a, a new ball um, available? Well, not until 18 overs after this one. And you would think probably that by then Leicestershire will feel they've got one foot in the draw, so to speak. In comes Curry again. And let go by Mulder. Good take this time by Carter outside the off stump. There is no run. Made a good start to their innings, did Leicestershire. They were 56 without loss at one stage. But then lost four for nine. And that shows you what a good partnership it was between Patel and Mulder. I can see Ari Carvelis is warming up at, uh, at mid-on. Trying to shuffle the pack is Pajara. And comes Curry again, bowls, and he 
again Carter doesn't take it cleanly claps his hands together I, I, I do understand standing up to the stumps because I think it does put that bit of extra pressure on the uh, on the batsman but if you keeps him in the crease isn't it so yeah I mean that's that, I mean, that's all it's, that, that is what he's doing <laughs> yeah you, you've got to be able to take the ball cleanly <laughs> yeah. I reckon he's probably had 10 in this inning oh well into At double least. figures well into double figures yeah it's, not, it's just an observation that you know I know you only improve but and it's good he is standing up it comes to curry again bowls and clipped to Minoma easy single I'm not sure there really should have been a single there to be honest but Mulder clipped it to the right of Carvalhos at mid on and goes through for one he's just exposing Tom Scriven to just one ball at the end of the over that was a, that was a bit sloppy actually um, but Mulder goes to 68 credit to him because he saw there was a single there Carvalhos slightly on his heels it was a comfortable single to mid on 209 for six Carvalhos is definitely going to come on to bowl perhaps that's what he was thinking about He's wheeling his arms around above his head, then out to the side. And Scribble with just the one more ball to face in this over from uh, Brad Curry. He's in and bowls, and Scribble drives nicely through the offside. He'll get a single, so he will be on strike for the next over, fielded out on the boundary by Finn Hudson Prentice. We haven't seen a lot of Hudson Prentice in this uh, second inning. Let's just have a quick look at the bowling figures at the end of that over with Leicestershire 210 for 6 so the lead is exactly 50 and there are exactly 40 overs uh, left in the match so just to give you those um, bowling figures which I will in a moment's time where I can get them up is it going to be Henry Croker? No. he's had enough right now It's Harry Carvalis. Yeah, he was warming up, wasn't he, sir? A little burst before tea, which is now just 14 minutes away. So at the most, it's probably going to be two overs, actually. Yeah. And you're likely to get more than four. Two slips and a gully. Or one of the second and fourth slip as Carvalis comes in from the Bennett end. Bowls to Scriven. Edges a little, a little bit of bounce. But he, he rides the bounce quite nicely there, Tom Scriven, as he takes his bottom hand off the bat and guides it down towards the gully. Yeah, I'm sorry, my, my computer went on a go slowly. Had some Prentice, actually he's bowled more overs than I thought. He's bowled 13 overs, eight maidens, one for 27. Uh, Rishi Patel took him for 10 in one over, which rather distorted his figures. Yeah, more, more. did he not take him for, I think did it was, was it three 14? boundaries, yeah, right. in, in okay. the over. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you take that out, it was absolutely sensational. In goes Carvelas Bowles, reaching forward is Tom Scriven. He eventually got there, and he blocked it out into the offside. It should be a pleasant drive back down to the south coast. Uh, well, sorry, not quite the south coast for you, is it? No, it's but not. No, but, but ra Around London, anyway. Yeah, and it's some... Um, you just never know with the M25 on a Sunday. That's no, yes, that... Yeah, there could be... Yeah, coming from the south coast... Maybe going the other way, hopefully. Yeah. Carvelas is in bowls. He's hopping around a bit there, is Scriven. He wasn't quite sure how to play that one in the end. He played it sort of off the pitch, off on his back foot, jumping into the air. And managed to fiddle it out into the offside, not entirely convincingly. What a lovely scene, Richard. Pleasant, isn't it? Mm, lovely. Carvelas is in. Bowl short outside off stump. Steered by Scriven off the back foot, but he didn't really get all of it, and it was a fairly comfortable stop moving to his left at backward point for James Coles. Yeah, I mean, the, the, we, we've, still got <laughs> we, we've still got the Chris Wright factor to come, and if he plays like he did in the first <laughs> innings, yeah. where he made 48 in very quick time, you know, he had 48 onto this lead, you know, and you're up to 100, and Sussex cannot afford for that to happen again. Carvelas in, forward goes Scriven, defending. Doesn't play those four defensives. Probably at the time the ball hits the bat, it is a quite a straight bat, but it's a little bit sort of in-out. Haven't seen too much of Tom with the bat. 
So get used to his style. Of course, it may not come to that. You know, these two may back through. I just get the feeling there's a couple of twists and turns in this, yeah. We've had a few already as Carvelas is in. Bowles, Scriven is forward, thick outside part of the battle on the ground all the way. It runs towards Cole's end of Carvelas's first over of his, I think, fourth spell of the innings. 16 overs he's bowled now, certainly it's his third spell. One for 31, his figures. Adrian has an update to do. He's heading next door for the Brighton game kicks off against the Arsenal Carter claps his gauntlets together he's standing back now and it is going to be Hudson Prentice who's going to have a, a couple of overs pre T 39 overs remain in the game Three slips as Hudson Prentice is in. Bowls full to Mulder who drives. Good work tumbling to his left by Pujara running away to his left from Deepish mid-off. Saves three because that would have run down the slope to the long off stroke deep extra cover boundary. Mulder takes one, moves on to 69 Scriven has five. New man to bowler, Hudson Prentice. Runs in, kicking up his heels. Bowls to Scriven, who is playing nicely off the back foot, forcing it through the offside. That might go all the way. It's running across the square. Coles is chasing after it, but it crosses the ropes around about two yards ahead of the hard running James Coles follows it into the netting in front of the Geary bar Scriven moves on to nine 215 for six Foxy Phil pointing out that the game is going in a very similar way to the game when the way the game went at Derby last week it, it is but even if Leicester should do go on to save the game they'll be been disappointed to have had to save two consecutive games so to speak to have sort of gotten so far behind the eight ballers hits and prentice bowls and it's worked off leg stump by scriven wide of mid on carvelas jogs to his right to field scriven takes one into double figures he moves on to 10 216 for six Ah, we do now have the lead up on the board. Jolly good. 56 runs. We can actually work it out because happily 160 isn't even isn't beyond even our elementary and uh, fallible mathematics. But nice to have it confirmed. Nonetheless, Hudson Prentice is in bowls outside off stump. It's left. Ignored. Shunned by Mulder. Seven minutes until T. How many balls in this over? Two. So we'll get one more from Carvelas for sure. Whether we'll get one after that remains to be seen. We won't if Hudson Prentice is going to insist on changing the field and delaying things a little bit. He sends third slip out to mid-wicket. Smith moves wider at second slip. Hudson Prentice is in bowls. A little bit squared up there. Mulder, but plays it comfortably enough, really. Thick outside part of the bat pushes it out into the offside. Picked up by Crocombe, moving to his left at uh, cover. Beautiful weather. At last. In Leicester as 
Hunt's apprentice turns, runs in and bowls. Mulder turns him into the leg side, more or less straight to that man at mid wicket. And you heard probably his call of no as both batsmen took a step forward but realised that he was going more or less straight to the field there. 216 for six then after 64 overs of the innings. Run rate up to close to three and a half as a consequence. Partnership 20 between Scriven and Mulder, who has 69. I think we will get two more overs. Scriven will be on strike to Aristides Carvelas. One for 31 from 16 for him. Tall man comes down the slope and bowls. Scriven is forward, defending off off stump. Or trickles slowly out towards Pujara. Come on, big dog. Big dog, there's a nickname. Come on, big dog, get us one here. Also, Smith and Tom Clark in the slips. All three of whom have their hands on their knees as Carvelas, big dog, comes in and bowls. Scriven drives him for four. Slightly tired delivery. It was full outside off stump. Scriven leant forward and uh, punched it away through the offside into the gap between Orr and James Coles into the advertising hoardings in front of the Upton Steel stand alongside the meet. 220 for six. The lead now 60. Adrian is back alongside. I've had to cover the um, hmm. our, our QB box, which is in, in, in full sun. In goes Carvelas. Forward goes Scriven, defending out into the offside. Just to, if they do overheat, just sometimes they can sort of switch themselves off. And uh, so using John Mallett's uh, calendar. Thank you, John. <laughs> he produces a calendar each year of uh, Leicestershire cricketing pictures. Oh, that's good. I'm Mr. August. No, I'm not joking. <laughs> Carvelas turns, runs in and bowls. Drags his length back a bit. Scriven defends the straight ball back down the pitch. Just a turn of the wrist. And he just leans back, pops his bat back into his crease. I mean, this really could go to the wire, couldn't it? You know, we've got 37 overs left, so we're going to go to T. We'll probably get one more over before T. So T, 36 overs to go. We would lose two if, if indeed Sussex take these wickets, which they may not. But, uh, you know, I, you, you certainly feel with a Sussex had to sc maybe score at 10 and over for a thrash. Oh, they'd go. They'd then fancy it. Why not? You know. you know, they'd have a go for sure. You can always shut up shop, can't you, if, if it doesn't quite come off. Carvelas is in. Scriven leaves. Late decision. It was a bit of an effort delivery from Carvelas. And it bounced a little bit higher. Scriven stepped forward, ready to drive. Realised he wasn't going to be quite in position and lifted his bat out of the line of the ball. You know, of course, you never know. Leicestershire will have, you know, you can you can put nine men back on the fence and, and put quite possibly they might do. But I think if if they've if it's ten and over or so, Sussex will have a will, will have a dip. I'm absolutely. sure. Absolutely, absolutely. It could be quite exciting. Carvelas. Bowl. Scriven is working it off the back foot, jumping in the air into the offside, runs out to James Coles at backward point, and that is the end of the over. 15.38er is writ large in green upon the electronic scoreboard, mm -hmm. so we will have one final over pre T, and it'll be bowled by Finn Hudson Prentice. 36 after that. There would be two off for the change of innings. 34, the lead. So it's sort of two. I I it's likely to be, even if the last four wickets fell in, fall in a clutter, it's going to be sort of two and over. So it's beginning to change the equation. Always good to hear from the former Sussex chief executive, Zach Tomaz. He was listening to us today. Here comes Finn Hudson Prentice bowls and Via uh, Mulder defends down the patch. Hudson Prentice was sort of keepy uppy with his feet, but in the end he leads it to Ali Orr to pick the ball up. 
Um, Zach says, um, hello, Adrian, from a very sunny Sanderstead, which is um, not that far from Croydon. Good to hear from you, Zach. It's an interesting match in progress. Fair play to Leicestershire for battling. Feel there's a twist left in the match. Now time for a barbecue, which inevitably means with Zach we'll get a photograph soon of some lovely sort of sausages on a barbecue and a picture of a pint of lager or something. So <laughs> in comes Hudson Prentice Bowles and played by Moulter down to deep mid wicket, fielded by Coles. I suspect Sussex will get a few people around the bat here for this last over for 14. Moulter goes to 70. This is the last over before yeah. tea, isn't it? So yeah. how many balls have we got? Four to come. Might as well. Well, I'd have thought so. You know, just, just stick a couple in close and just make Tom Scriven think that there's something going on. I'd, I'd have given it to Smith, you know. Just, yeah, just, just for the theatre, yeah, if yeah. nothing else. 221 for sixth. And the field hasn't changed. The, well, the only change is that they've brought up the deep mid wicket in saving the one. That would be a Mulder's batted throughout the session. He began the session on 14. 70 not out. Hudson Prentice into Scriven, who's forward defensively, gets everything right behind that, plays it out in the offside, fielded by all, and there is no run. And we said about wickets going in clusters, because suddenly that's what happened with uh, Rehan Ahmed and Rishi Patel when they were out, and certainly with the first four wickets when they went down. So uh, Sussex will just, you know, they're probably looking forward to some tea, just put their feet up for 10 minutes, have a rethink. Tell you what, though, Adrian, that the new ball might be a, a, a factor, you know, because... You know, even if Leicester bat through to it, they're not now scoring at a rate that will put them out of sight. No, you're quite true. That's, that's so very true. It could yet be important. That's Prentice in and bowls and driven by Scriven down the ground. <laughs> yes, we were saying, weren't we, if if they were scoring up four and over, but they're not doing anything like that at the moment. No, they were briefly. What is that? 60? This, this is the 66? Yeah. So 14 overs left. That would mean 14 of... You know, they, they might be leading by 100 at that stage, but, but there'd still be sort of 20-odd overs to go, so Imagine. that the new ball could yet be I I important, yeah. could yet make a difference. Um, and also, Zach was saying it was a grandson's fifth birthday party yesterday, oh. so happy birthday. In comes Austin Bradley's bowls, clubbed away, that's going to be four runs. In hot pursuit is Brad Curry, but he can't cut that off, the ball runs down to third man, and there's some people <laughs> sitting down <laughs> in the oh, hospitality on, area, and they're... Oh, they're, they're Someone running along the boundary board to chase the ball to try and throw it back. Little girl ran, ran yeah. along. She was hoping it was going to go all the way. Yeah. Dying to throw it back. Scriven goes to 18, 225 for six. The important statistic is that Leicestershire now lead by 65. They, they've kindly put it on the board now as well. Bottom right hand corner. Oh, great spot. Well done, Richard. Um, although we were in reasonable control given that the lead was, a, you know, that the. the, the the figure was 160, yeah, that, that so that's it. tolerably okay for us yeah. to work <laughs> with. <laughs> <laughs> with the two mathematicians in the box. In comes Hudson Prentice, bowls to Scriven. More runs here. I don't think this is going to go for four. Uh, Curry is in hot pursuit. It's probably going to be three, though, if they get a move on. Curry drags the ball back to Ali Orr with a little bit of a relay. Nor throws the ball in, but not before Scriven comes back for three more runs. These are all such important runs. Hudson Prentice that's looks two. like he's almost... Is it Hudson Prentice? No, he's okay. I thought someone had his hands on his knees. That is T. So, T is taken with Leicestershire, 228 for six. Vienne Mulder is on 70. Tom Scriven is on 21. The lead for Leicestershire is now 68. Um, and there are going to be another 36 overs left in the match. So, um, all to play for. I don't even really want to call this. I think probably the draw is still marginally the favourite, but not by much. We'll be back with you, BBC uh, Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Leicester, Adrian Harms and myself, Richard Ray, in around about 15 minutes' time. We're going to sample the uh, Friends of Grace Road's coffee and walnut and rhubarb offerings and have a welcome cup of tea and be back with you in good time for what promises to be a really fascinating final session of the game. Back with you soon. getting 
Wickets in hand and 36 overs potentially remaining to be bowled. Richard Ray of BBC Radio Leicester, Adrian Harms of BBC Radio Sussex. Adrian, which way is it going to go? Well, I, I mean, it's an easy thing for me to say, isn't it? But I, I think it's imperative that Sussex, you know, if they can get a couple of wickets in these next 10 overs, we've got the Chris Wright factor still to come. He patted really well in the first innings and there might be a place in this game for someone who just chances their arm. Um, I wonder whether fatigue might play a part. The Sussex boys have been out there now for the best part of two days, but they're young and fit. Whatever happens, I think we could, you know, and who knows? It may be that Sussex are late to chase 130, 140 and sort of 15 overs or something. So, But it's been a terrific game. And I have to say, you know, wonderful innings by Rishi Patel. We, we, we said in the first innings how well he played. And I thought he looked like a quality player today. He really did. And Mia Mulder, who you say has barely scored a run this season always scores runs against Sussex so well set up I, I've got to do, a, do an update to the listeners um, on BBC Sussex and I'll, I'll be back as quick as I can so I'm momentarily behind uh, one or two clouds that have, have drifted over the ground but basically we are set very fair and it's going to be Ari Carvelas the persevering Carvelas, I believe, who will continue from. Come on, Harry boy. That confirms as much. It is going to be Aristides who's going to bowl from the Bennett end. Continues the spell he started just before T, and he's going to be bowling to young Tom Scriven. Full, and that's uh, well, that was a curious one. It's I think it hit Scriven on the foot as he went forward outside off stump and managed to squeeze through to. Ollie Carter behind the stumps who claps his gauntlets together. One for 35 for Carvelas as he is running in and bowling. Scriven this time leaves outside off stump rather more conventionally. The ball travels on its way through to Carter. There's no run, of course. Fango Fox down in Melbourne slept through that session. Looks like we did okay. Yeah, we did. Rishi Patel, we being obviously Leicestershire, Rishi Patel dismissed a couple of deliveries after going to his third hundred of the season. Rahan Ahmed. In goes Carvelas Bowles. Scriven is working it off his off the stumps, hence the reaction from behind the stumps takes one, moves on to 22, 229 for six. And Rihan Ahmed was uh, quite sensationally caught by Steve Smith. Have a, have a look at the replay on that one. That second slip off the bowling of Henry Crocom, diving to his right, plucking the ball out of the air. Ahmed going for nine, 196 for six at that stage. But Vian Mulder batted through the entire session. He is 70, not out. Tom Scriven is 22, not out. Leicester shall lead by 69 now. Carvelas steps in and bowls. Whoa, and has it taken the edge of Mulder's bat? No, it bounced beautifully, and there was huge celebrations from behind the stumps, but they are choked off rapidly. Just bounce went past the outside edge, it seems. Things happening in this first over after the break, though. Encourage Sussex. Carvelas is in. Mulder is driving, but doesn't time it at all. And Carvelas reaching to his left feels in his follow through. Yes, if you can, have a look at the replay of the Smith grab. And I was saying to uh, my colleague Adrian Harms that if he does nothing else and in his time at Sussex, but they go on to win this match, then he can point to that catch as having made a serious contribution. Carvelas in to Mulder, who leans forward solidly to a very straight delivery, pushes it back down the pitch towards Aristides Carvelas. End of the first over post T. Hope given to 
Sussex supporters when that ball bounced nicely past the outside edge of Wilder's bat and all the slips and the wicket keeper went up. So too did Carbelas eventually. But the operative word there probably is eventually. Because it hadn't hit anything, it was just, just the bounce. Said umpire Middlebrook. And Hudson Prentice to continue his spell. This time obviously from the pavilion end. Runs in and bowls to Tom Scriven, who is very far forward. Big stride from the young former Hampshire all-rounder. Pushes it out to Pajara at mid-off, and there is no run. Well, I can't get the screen up again, unfortunately. Stream, that is decided to go on the blink again or at least it has on my computer Hudson Prentice is in Scriven is forward again on off stump this time pushes it out to Brad Curry in the covers there's no run 68th over going down so 12 overs and four balls until a new ball is available to Sussex if they if they need it if they get to that stage I was saying to Adrian, it could be a factor. The lead is only 69. There's still plenty of overs left, potentially, to be bowled in the game. Hudson Prentice is in. Scriven is forward. Again, pushing the ball back down the pitch on the offside. I haven't heard how Leicester Tigers are getting on in their Premiership semi-final against Sale. It's going to be hard to avoid it one way or another. Hearing the result, that is. Do a sort of likely lads thing and try to avoid hearing, but then catch the highlights, but I don't think that's going to work. Hudson Prentice is bowling forward, goes Scriven again. Blocking it out to Pajara at mid-off. Curry sort of running across the ball. He's full of, full of beans and energy still. <laughs> Fango Fox has seen the Smith grab. That's a brilliant catch. He says, we have high hopes for Smith being a decent player one day here in Australia. Hudson Prentice is in. Scriven once again is forward. I think the message probably imparted by Paul Farbrace to the Sussex seam attack is accuracy is absolutely key over the over the overs that are, are remaining until the new ball so that overs are in hand so to speak that, that Leicestershire don't get away to four or five and over in this little period and get away in goes Hudson Prentice and he's going to pick up at least one there Scriven as he works it out wide of mid off Pujara Stops the ball and tumbles and picks it up at the second attempt, but does enough to prevent a second. Scriven keeps a strike. He moves on to 23, to 30 for six. The lead, therefore, is now 70. Adrian's done his update, but he was going to pop round to the car park to get his uh, sunglasses from the car, which hopefully won't mean that we therefore don't get any more sun today but it's a bit more cloud building up to the west but it is a fine afternoon and evening late afternoon here in Leicester Carvelas is in and Scriven is going to not pick up any runs because although it was a bit thick inside edge it travelled very quickly into the onside but reaching to his right Brad Curry makes the stop bounces off his hands but bounces forward so no chance of Leicestershire taking any runs. Our thanks to the friends of Grace Road. Rhubarb cake, sort of rhubarb and custard cake, and uh, a coffee and walnut cake. Today, we tried. In goes Carvelas bowls, and Scriven is forward back to him. Back to the bowler goes the ball. What else did we try over the course of the game? The Sultana cake yesterday. And on day. 
noticed. We had them on days one and two as well. We have absolutely been piggies, I'm afraid, during this game. Inexcusable. But they've had a good game. Friends of Grace Road, that's for sure. So too has Harry Carvelas as he comes in and bowls to Scriven, who works him off the back foot into the offside. Just outside off stump, Coles sharply to his right at point, backward point to field. No runs again. Shadows extending towards the pitch now. Never seems to put the batsman off. As Carvelas is in. Again, Scriven is forward, determinedly. Being positive in defence, pushing the ball out to Pajara, who's at mid-off, standing very firmly right in the middle of the pylon shadow. The light's shadow, obviously. Slope comes Carvelas, bowls, and oh, bit of bounce, and Scriven is playing at that one, doesn't get anything on it, and then that little right-hand gesture, but there was a bit of extra bounce, has been from that Bennett end from, from time to time, just, just the odd one. Certainly, Henry Crocom got a couple to climb nastily at. Vian Mulder in the afternoon session. Carvelas is in. Scriven is driving, but again, doesn't really put his full weight into the shot. Pushes it out to mid off, and that is over. A maiden from Ari Carvelas. 19 overs now, eight of which have been maidens, one for 36. His figures. He'll be uh, tired on his way back to Sussex tonight. He's now gone over 40 overs. Indeed, exactly 40 overs in uh, what is his first appearance of the season. Yeah. 11 overs until the new ball. Might not make any difference, of course, but Hudson Prentice hoping Sussex won't need it. Runs in and bowls to Mulder, who just strokes the ball back down the pitch on the onside as far as mid on. No run. Quiet little start to proceedings this afternoon. Everybody else getting the stream okay? Because I'm, I'm not still. Whatever platform I try. Hudson Prentice is in. Leaning forward is Mulder. Out into the offside it goes to Ali Orr. Again, there's no run. Although the overs are sort of ticking over, 32.4 now remain. Sussex won't be dismayed because Leicestershire not extending their lead at the moment. And were they to be bowled out quickly, there'd be plenty, plenty left for Sussex to get these runs or the runs that they would need Hudson Prentice is in driving is Mulder but uh, pretty well timed it pretty well so it went quite quickly to Pajara moving to his left at mid off and no chance of a single Mulder irritated with himself raises his eyes to the heavens yeah Bango's getting the stream okay, so it must be something to do with my computer or the Wi-Fi or something. Stop whinging. In goes Hudson Prentice bowls and solidly forward and off stump is Mulder. Out into the offside goes the ball. And the gloves of Carter beat together. Come on, Finney. I haven't heard the nickname Jack Sparrow once being used for all that he maintains. It is his nickname. A 
Roberts and Prentice is in. Forward goes Mulder again. There's been good accurate stuff from Finn Hudson Prentice and indeed Eric Carvelis post T. As a result, only two runs added since the interval. Since Adrian uh, left the commentary box and, and not only did his update but went, went to get his sunglasses as well. Just the two singles added. Hudson Prentice is in and driving is Mulder and that is for that is a, a release final ball of the over that's a frustrating one for Finn Hudson Prentice just over pitched on that occasion Mulder relieved I'm sure drove it very straight through the offside for four. 234 then for six Mulder 74 the lead also is 74. I guess, um, you know, Richard, that's what I mean. Sussex haven't taken any wickets, so that will be a frustration. But at least they'll feel here that, you know, were they left to chase, that it's not beyond the realms of possibility. Now, there's a big debate going on between Pujara, Steve Smith, Tom Allsop. They seem to be his sort of trusted lieutenants. Yeah, I, was su I was suggesting that Farbrace's message might have been keep it tight after tea with the old ball. Don't concede too many runs. If we pick up a wicket or two, great. If we don't, well will have the new ball without with them not having too big a lead. Yeah, that's very true. Um, Eric Avelas is in bowls to Scribbon. He's done a good job for his county here. He's in 23, 234 for six, as Richard said, the lead. 74. We, we thought for a long time today the new ball wouldn't play a part, but it may well do now. Another nine overs after this. That would mean there would be 22, 22 left in the game. near our effects microphone but he's uh, he's moving away now in comes uh, Carvelas and bowls and forward clipped onto the on side by Scriven fielded there by Brad Curry there is no run 234 for six still think it's worth I know Cole's got a, a bit of tap I still think it might be worth an over it I like the look of him he's got a nice loop to his yeah. deliveries I wouldn't mind seeing an over a two from Smith seen throughout as we've said wickets have gone down in patches in this game um, email from John Malone who's been in touch I'll read that email in a minute and then we've got now Pajara is complaining the ball's out of shape no he's not he's, I think he's about to pick something up off the outfield no he's not he's asking about the ball yeah have a look at it so we've got another one um, so uh, John Malone in Bexhill says hi lads just wondering why Robinson has to be rested allegedly controlled by England but other England players can still play in the IPL what's your thoughts on this yeah, there's nothing allegedly about it. It is a fact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a fact. A, England no. have, have control. They do. But, um, but uh, uh, and what, what happens with the IPL, John, is that there's a, there's a feeling if you, if you start to prevent players playing in the IPL, well, that's going to cause all sorts of problems. So, yeah, I mean, you could say it is slightly double standards to a degree in that they're not stopping, you know, the Stokes and the Roots playing in the IPL. Um, but they don't play... <laughs> I think the feeling is that the, the, the workload in the IPL, though intense, isn't much. Yeah. Um, indeed, Roots barely played. Um, so he's been sat out there on his behind. He's playing today, but um, may even be his first appearance. Yeah. And y it's very hard to, to, to deny, you know, he could probably claim, <laughs> you know, he'd, he'd probably poss possibly claim sort of restraint of trade or something of... of yeah. Because so much money that that, that doesn't e that doesn't come close to the ECB can't come close to matching. So that's the difference. The ECB are, are effectively paying Robinson's wages to, to a big extent, aren't they? they and are. so oh, they are absolutely. So you know they are really his employers now. Uh, John goes on to say, "Do you just love county cricket for its variety of outcomes possible in a rain-affected game?" Yeah, we remember we lost all day on Thursday to rain. It's um, Eric Avelos who's coming in. I, I presume the ball has been changed. He's coming in from the Bennett end bowls to Scriven. He's up on his toes, plays down the track. There is no run. He's doing a good job for his calendar here, Tom Scriven. He's keeping VM Mulder company. Sussex would have felt the door was ajar when there was that brilliant catch by Steve Smith. The score's 196 then. So these two have now added 
38 really important runs and they've used up a bit of time. 31 overs remaining after this. Whatever happens, we're going to be, uh, be a late finish here at Grace Road. Three slips in place. And Carvalos is running in from the bandit end and bowls and Scriven just ducks inside the line and plays that to James Coles at backward point. There is no run. These two playing very safely, very securely, but as Richard was making the point, the, the scoreboard isn't really ticking over. The tea time score was 228 for six. So this is the fifth over since T. And Leicestershire have added six. What they have done, of course, is to is is to take valuable overs. But that's only that's only a good thing if um Abajara is still working on the ball. The Sussex are in real danger here, you know, I reckon, of, of um, a bit having problems with their overex. They're still showing us plus two. Yeah, it would have been changed at T had it needed to be. Yeah, absolutely. Carvelos in bowls and Scriven is going to get four runs. It's wide of Tom Clark, who's in the gully. He's cut away. And that's four more to Scriven, who goes to 27. The total 238 for six. The lead to 78. Yeah, it looked like he knew what he was doing there. Yeah, no, it wasn't a chance. It was wide of uh, Tom Clark, who did put down a difficult chance early on in the day when uh, Rishi Patel, who went on to get 100, was on 27. And then another tough chance to Tom Allsop on 47. And those two chances actually were... <laughs> when you think about the game, if, if, if Patel had gone then, he then went on to make 100. Yeah. That would have made all the difference. He's still working on the ball here, Bajara. It, has, it was changed it in was. the last uh, three three deliveries ago. So and Carvelis is in and bowls. And Scribbard is solidly full. Carvelis <laughs> looks heavenward. He, he, he's bowled his heart out, Ari Carvelis. He's bowled 20 overs in this innings to bowl to the 21 he bowled. So he's bowled 41 overs in the match. And for his first outing of the season, um, that's a pretty good effort, having come back from a, a pretty serious knee injury. Uh, during the winter months. So credit to him and his fitness. Uh, Brad Curry um, is going to be bowling from the pavilion end. We're reaching the stage again. We've said it several times today, Richard, where Sussex need a wicket, and you feel they need a wicket fairly soon. Brad Curry's going to try and uh, chisel one out mm. for the visitors. He's managed to pick up a couple in this innings so far most recent of which was indeed Rishi Patel bowling from this pavilion end nicely caught by Tom Walsop at first slip off the gloves of Ollie Carter so really good work by Allsop he is standing quite deep obviously well Coe uh, sort of can be a lively medium and Carter is standing up yeah to keep the batsman in their crease as he runs in and bowls outside off stump. Carter takes it outside off stump because Mulder, who scored, uh, who's just played the one scoring shot post T, has nothing to do with it. It was a lovely shot. Nice straight off drive. I wonder if Sussex get to the stage where they feel they can't win the match. Then suddenly we might get James Coles and Steve Smith bowling just to rush through a few overs to get those plus two back. But that won't be at the forefront of Pujara's mind at the moment. Curry is in. Ooh. Looks like he played at that one. Gets a bit Wasn't taken well. cleanly by Carter, no, but again, <laughs> he said a slight sigh in his voice there <laughs> from Adrian. But it is, it is a very difficult job Carter oh. is trying to do at the moment. Yeah. Stan standing up to um, you know a really lively sort of medium pace, probably bowling at sort of... I don't know, 75, something like that. Um, really difficult. I mean, it's a real art, keeping yeah. wickets, standing up to the stumps. You know, it, that's why the likes of Jack Russell, he just didn't realise just how good they were. So it's a real art. So, you know, good for him for trying. In goes Curry. Forward goes Mulder. Oh, my stream is back. Bizarre. And it, you know, and it, and, it, and it does put pressure on the batsman. There's no question about that. So it's a good thing to be doing. 
if there is a little nick or something, you've got to be fairly confident in your own ability. But you're only going to improve by trying. So he gets he gets 10 out of 10 for for doing it for the team. But when it doesn't work, it just looks a bit messy. Yeah, it is. It would be three and over now if these last four wickets were to fall quickly. Mm. So begin to creep up as Curry goes in and bowls. Mulder is looking to. to there's no way he's going to get that one. Pitched a long way outside leg stump and uh, came off the pad, runs towards backwards square. The leg by is taken. He would have had, he would have had to really swing it back in. <laughs> as up, it might have gone on to hit the stumps, but um, as I say, certainly pitched a, a long way outside the line. All he can do here, Pujara, is just to keep rotating his bowlers and just hoping he's going to pick up. Sussex won't have given up, but you know, oh no. they're just starting to tick away. Curry is in and bowling, and forward goes Scriven defending. It runs out to point, and there is no run. It, it, I guess the problem also really is that they will now be, be pretty tired, this quartet. Yep. Um, young and fit athletes, there they are, because... It hasn't been possible for Pajara to, to spell them with the spinner. Leicestershire attacked James Coles, uh, and so he's only bowled, you know, th was it three overs, yes, four overs yeah. at, at the very most. Yeah. Um, so these four have had to just keep going. There hasn't been a fifth seamer to, to spell them. In goes Curry and bowls. All edged just short yep. of second, third, I beg your pardon, third slip, and uh, Tom Clark got down, did well to make the stop. End of the over, 2.39 for six. The lead is 79. 80 then would be Sussex's target off 27 if all the wickets were to fall in the next over. Uh, two overs for 18, James Coles bowled. So, uh, so a, a new ball is available in eight overs time. Richard for that. Uh, I'll let you do this over, Richard. I'll just make a note of this uh, correspondence that's come in. From Wales. <laughs> Wales. <laughs> so I attempted to. At, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Eddie Bevan, one of the more, more most popular of the visiting commentators with the Leicestershire fans for the uh, mellifluous tones with which he imparts his commentary. In goes Henry Croke and bowls to Vian Mulder, who just leans forward and drops the ball out into the offside. There's a little bit of me wondering whether this is the right approach from Leicestershire to be just purely defensive because, because of the increasing proximity of the new ball before they are sort of safe, so to speak. If they were picking up three or four and over, they could go an awful long way towards making themselves safe in these circumstances before the new ball arrived. Crocom is in. Mulder is, gets a straight one that he blocks back down the pitch. Crocom does enough in his follow-through to prevent any chance of a single. With the new ball, you'd imagine then that they're going to probably give it to Hudson Prentice, I would think. Crocom is in and bowls outside off stump and uh, cut away into the offside. Good work out there by mm -hmm. Coles running along the rope and he keeps it to one. Mulder looks really disappointed that he didn't get that one through to the boundary. Another five yards or so would have made it impossible given that relatively short boundary on that side of the ground for Coles to get there. Get there he did though. 240 for six. Mulder on to 75. Is that just his second scoring shot post T? I think, I think it, was. it was. Goodness. The lead is 80. Scriven on strike as Crocombe goes in. Bowls to him. He clips him Runs off his pads. If he got anything yeah. on it, but it's going quickly enough to suggest he did get something on it. It runs down to fine leg. A for four. Brad Curry did his very best to get across there, couldn't quite manage to do so from long leg. Scriven into the 30s 
for the first time this season. On to 31, 244 for six. I suppose with the wall that is right, he was more than a wall in his last innings. It was a very aggressive wall to come. The Leicestershire supporters were beginning to breathe a, a touch more easily. Still plenty of work to do, though. Crocombe is in. Scriven is forward, pushing it into the covers, but the lively oar bounces to his left to field, and there is no run. This partnership's worth 48 now, Richard. So it is, yeah. We wondered when uh, Rehan Halfbeb was out, whether that might be beginning of something for Sussex. There's a bit more cloud coming in now. It's, it's fairly high level, but since I've got my sunglasses... <laughs> Yes, in, in inevitably. I, I said on, the, on air when you went across to get them, in goes Crokem and Bowles, cut, bounces back and over the stumps and over the leaping Carter for four byes. Goodness, that, that exploded off. a little bit, didn't it, off, off the pitch? There was no dust or anything like that, but Crokem, he has got the odd one to bounce from that end, wrapped Mulder, didn't he, on, on the fingers, and, and that one bounced and over. A leaping car. Again, he got his gloves to it, but couldn't prevent it running away to the boundary for four buys. 248 now for 650 partnership between these two, with Scriven doing the majority of the scoring. And you're listening to live cricket on the BBC. If you're just joining us, a very warm welcome to Grace Road. Adrian Harms and Richard Ray on BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Leicester. And you just get the feeling here that Leicester are just edging themselves into a position that they might be able to get the draw. 88 is the lead. 29 overs remaining in the match. So it's really given up just yet, but VM Mulder and Tom Scriven, as Richard was saying, with that 50 partnership, are holding up Sussex. In comes Brad Curry, comes in and bowls. Uh, Carter takes standing up to the stumps. Um, Mulder lets that one go, and there is no run. Just elsewhere around the country in the One Day International, Ireland 91 for one in reply to Bangladesh's 274 in the game at Chelmsford. Kent looks like they're battling to a draw at Canterbury, 212 for four in their second innings. Uh, still trailing Hampshire by 66. It'll be a draw at Old Trafford. Somerset 383 for five in their second innings, leading by 418. Surrey have beaten Middlesex to go top of the county championship by nine wickets at the Oval. Curry is in bowls, driven firmly Oof. down the ground. He's given that and has a good, good, good bit of fielding by Pujara, who gets the throw in. Oi! Well, it, it, it was a tumbling stop by Bajara, and he's got a good arm, and it only missed the stumps by a fraction. My feeling was that Via Mulder was probably in, um, but it was tight. It was. It would have required a decision, that's Mulder. for sure. Mulder's a 76, and Leicester's hit a 249 uh, for six. Um, in the second division, looks like it's going to be a draw at Derby. Derby now, or Derby Shear, I should say, 95 for three, trailing Gloucestershire by 37. Durham beat Yorkshire by one wicket in a thriller earlier on today and then we're here at Grace Road where Leicestershire are battling away for the draw in comes Curry and Bowles forward comes uh, Scriven plays into the onside Tom Scriven he's on 31 um, Leicestershire were in all sorts of trouble they lost four wickets for nine earlier on today from 56 without loss they slumped to 65 for four the partnership of 122 between Rishi Bertoli played beautifully for 100 and Via Mulder, who's still there on 76, steadied the ship. Two quick wickets fell. Tell out for 100. Uh, Rehan Ahmed to a quite brilliant catch by Steve Smith at second slip. But these two have again steadied the ship for Leicestershire. In comes Curry. Bowls driven into the covers by Scriven, fielded by Orr. And there is no run. So the equation, there are 28 overs left after this. Call that 26 because we would lose two for a change of innings. The lead is 89, so it's still on for Sussex. Um, a new ball would be available, which could be the final throw of the dice for Sussex yeah. in six overs' time. What Sussex have done here, they haven't taken wickets since T, but they have kept the run rate down. But you've only added 21 since T. In comes Curry and Bowles, taken by Carter, standing up to the stumps. This is the... This is the eighth over since T. So, yeah, there's 21 added in that time. Yeah, but uh, you sort of yeah. If these two get through to the new ball, then Sussex will have a a burst with it. You know, yeah. 
and, it, and if nothing happens over six or eight overs, and, and it, it maybe it won't because obviously it, it sometimes takes those six or eight overs, doesn't it, for it, it does. to start swinging? Absolutely does. Here comes Curry. Bowls down the leg side. That's a good take by Carter. That was very good, and he whipped off the bales as well. So, well done, Ollie Carter. That was a good piece of wicket keeping. However. Um, Tom Scriven's back foot was firmly anchored. End of another over, over drifts by. 28 remaining, 249 for six. The sun is disappearing, and I suspect it might disappear for the rest of the day because there's some <laughs> high-level cloud that's drifting across. It's your fault, you know. Right, you yeah, I know. Get your sunglasses. I know. I'm going to take her off. I thought we'd be standing <laughs> here. And I don't Blazing sun. We uh, were for a while. Yeah, there was a, there, I think there was some drizzle forecast later on, but not until oh, after right. dark, I thought. Okay. Oh. But um, let's hope it doesn't get in the way but at the minute you'd say the odds are favoring a draw here yeah it's it, uh, at 196 for six you kind of thought uh, 70 30 in favor of sussex as crocombe comes running in from the bennett end Ooh, Mulder wasn't quite sure whether that was going to bounce a bit yeah. and uh, played it carefully suspiciously on hmm. the back foot it didn't really actually so uh he played it comfortably, uh, comfortably enough in the end. It will be, he would be, he's eyeing his century, I suspect. Here, there's a real chance for Vian Mulder to oh, make absolutely. it a match to remember. With his five for, and his county cap, and indeed, as you say, his county cap. In goes Croak and Bowls to him. Comes back a little bit. He's found a little bit of sea movement somehow. Henry Croak and uh, Mulder. Pushes it out into the offside slightly uncomfortably. Crocombe into his 17th over. So he too will be a slightly weary young man when he wends his way back down to the south coast. And he goes and bowls. Mulder is forward. Have you been on the Sussex coach at all? Is it a luxurious one? I is it, can you put your feet up? And yeah, Cordery Coaches. It's a very nice local coach company. They do a bit of... Uh, uh, travel as well for the uh, for Brighton and Hove Albion. So it is a nice coach. There is plenty of room to put your feet up. I'd imagine the Sussex boys will... Well, they're not going to be back till late tonight, so you'd have thought tomorrow off, but I thought they'd probably back in on Tuesday and Wednesday in preparation for Glamorgan. They keep on coming. In goes... Crocom and Mulder is working it, rather, oh. slightly inside edgely into the leg side, the vacant leg side. He Getting on the front foot, trying to be positive, didn't quite go where he wanted it to. Ran out towards Hudson Prentice, and uh, Mulder takes one, moves on to 77. Oh. 250 up. Yeah. No bonus point, alas, in the second innings. Lead of 90. Crocombe in. Scriven, oh, inside edge that just misses the stumps, runs down to fine leg, fielded by Brad Curry. Well, we had one pre-T. Was it? Was it? Yes, Rishi, it was. Rishi uh, Patel, it was Rishi Patel, who uh, inside edge, yeah, within a coat of paint of his leg <laughs> stump, and that wasn't so much further away. It was a touch further away, but not much from Scriven. Crocombe will feel he hasn't had much luck. Didn't go for four because I say Curry ran across and fielded, but was very close. Scriven on to 32, watching as Crocombe comes in. Bowls to Mulder, drives. Pajari will get across and make the stop, but he had about five or six yards to go to his left. Mulder seeing that immediately called. Scriven through for a single and kept the strike in taking it. 252 for six. The lead is 92. It would be 24 overs were the wickets to all fall in this over so it's getting on for four and over now it, it's amazing how quickly it starts to climb the potential rate i agree um just talk about next week really because as i say sussex back tonight so probably tomorrow off and then back in on tuesday and i know that's the reason that a lot of pre-season work is done and fitness work in the winter so players can keep on with this really heavy schedule that there's been but some of these bowlers are gonna have to bowl in this uh this game coming up against Glamorgan. In comes Brad Curry. Comes in and bowls and clipped away down towards fine leg by Vian Mulder. He picks up a single and goes to 79. 253 for six. The lead now 93. Um, we understand Ollie Robinson will play in that game against Glamorgan, but 
apart from Sean Hunt. Um, so there might be a couple of changes in the side, but um, you'd have think some of these players will have to bowl again. But then they're young, they're athletes, and what would we have given to play county cricket? If it was every day, you'd, you'd do it, wouldn't you? So Think of worse ways to earn a living as in comes Curry over the wicket bowls and forward comes Scriven, who's been impressive. Coming in at a tricky time for his side. 196 for six when he came to the wicket. There are many worse ways of earning a living, but it but it's precarious, isn't it, for oh, so it many of yeah, them. It and, is. and it is. You know, I've you and I have both commentated for for a long time for our, our, our respective clubs, and I've seen a lot of promising young players come and go unfortunately you know not not quite been good enough to make it and your heart goes out to them a bit no, really does. as to what they do next no it really does and comes curry and bowls and covering up players down the onside of the track and i think particularly with a young player if you're 17 18 and we've come across some of these players who is a choice would you want a cricketing contract or do you want to go to university and you think well if i don't take the cricket contract it might never come around again but if i don't go to university i'll sort of miss out on my age group then his university is much fun, and it, it's a it's a really really tough call. Um, gloves are clapped by Ollie Carter. As in comes Brad Curry, bowls and defensively Scriven plays in the offside. There is no run. There's no re there's no real answer to it, Richard, is there? You, no. You, you you know if you if you're forever spending the rest of your days thinking. I had a chance to play, you know, join up for Sussex. You'd hope that in some ways you could incorporate your learning, but, you know, it's the, any sport is, it takes up a huge amount of time. Well, this is where the, 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 the PCA comes in, isn't it? The Professional Cricketers yep. Association and, and, and the clubs have a duty as of course. well to the young players to make sure that education is an ongoing thing. Comes... Curry bowls, Scriven forward placed on mid-wicket. There is no run. I was watching a program about, um, you know, a similar situation in football with the the percentage of young footballers who come through academies and actually make it and can actually make a living out of the game. And it's a Tiny. minuscule, minuscule yeah. proportion. Tiny. We were talking about T20 earlier on in this game and saying that not all T20 games are are cliffhangers and you get oh, just stretch out a bit of paper there. There we go. Um, there's a game in the IPL today, Royal Challengers Bangalore. I have no idea whether they're top or bottom because I, I don't follow the IPL. Um, you did in a minute. In comes Curry. Bowls. Let go. Take him. No, not taken cleanly by Carter again. He drops the ball and slaps his glove. He's not happy, is he? Ollie Carter. End of the over. Another over drift by. 26 remaining. 253 for six. So the lead is 93. And over's beginning to drift away. Uh, a new ball available in four overs. Yeah, this game, Royal Challengers Bangalore made 171 for five. Good for them. Rajasthan Royals all out for 59. So that's not a great game of cricket, is it? It isn't. So not all games are T20. I you know it's, it's an exciting game, but I think we're living in a slightly false world if we think that every single game of T20 cricket goes to the wire and it's six to win. Some of them are, but by no means all. Croakham. In from the Bennett end, bowls to Vian Mulder, who no big stride or b much foot movement, just plays it firmly out into the offside, more or less straight to or Then he, he gestures Mulder into, into the gap, which is a pretty big one, actually, bit between or at uh, extra cover, really. And Clark, who's at backward point, because out on the boundary between them, but out on the boundary is, uh, is James Coles. Crocombe is in. Well, that one has gone through the gap. Coles has to sprint around to his right and does so. Gets his left arm throw away in good time, but a single taken by Mulder, who moves into the 80s. Mm. You, you sort of get the feeling here, don't you, that, it, I mean, there is the new ball, which will, will really will be the final throw of the dice. And I, I, I get the feeling Sussex are just bowling for that. I mean, they clearly, if they could get a wicket, they would like to, but the new ball just might represent... It's going to be the last. The, chance, the last. So the first, you know, five or six overs with the new ball. Crocombe in Scriven driving oh. goes through for four Does right off the edge and the slips didn't move. Well, it went in between gully and third slip. Uh, uh, sorry, second slip and well. well this is what I mean. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not standing. The gaps aren't no. ridiculous. I'm just wondering why nobody moved on that occasion. Let's have a, a look at the uh, at the replay if we possibly can. 
course. And that's not the replay, that's the ball before, so we'll have a look at it in, in a moment. But that was a my slightly odd, odd one. Yeah, my feeling was that, that Clark's at sort of almost gully and it went between Smith and Clark. There's a third slip in there, he's... There's a few hands on hips out there, though. A few t double teapots. There are. Not least Crocombe steaming as he comes in and bowls. And Scriven is forward defending, which will give us a chance to have a look. There, there is a slight gap between second and sort of fourth, isn't there? Where did it go? Straight between them. <laughs> From our angle, the slip's obviously in an echelon. There yeah. doesn't look to be a big gap between Smith at, at, at second and, and Clark at third slash fourth. And there, there probably isn't now, not as big as there was, but there was a slight gap and it absolutely bisected them. Neither moved. In goes Croak and Bowles. Scriven is forward, pushing the delivery out into the off side. Could so easily have flown to one or the other. It only needed to be a sort of foot nearer one or the other for presumably one of them to stick out a hand. I mean, it was travelling because he flung it his was. hands at it. But um, given the quality of the catch that Smith took off Ahmed, yes. he might have flung himself and pulled off another worldie. In goes Croak and Bowles. And that oh. is going to be four to Tom Scriven. It was full outside off stump and didn't try and over hit it. That was the key. And with Coles having come up for Scriven, no sweeper on the offside boundary. All he had to do was get it into the gap, and he did. And slightly despondent looking, Henry Crocombe makes his way with jumper trailing and cap in his right hand to his fielding position. Scriven into the 40s, onto 40. Mulder has 82, 62 for six. Partnership is 66. 25 remain, so it would be 22 if all the wickets were to fall in this over, and the lead is over 100 now, so suddenly it's five and over, yeah, potentially. It is. Well, the game is starting to drift. You feel towards a draw, but you have to give a huge credit here to Ian Mulder and Tom Scriven. They batted really well here. Because Leicestershire were only in the lead by 36 when these two came together. Brad Curry is in over the wicket, bowls, and... Oh, thump down the ground. That's going to be four runs. Well, it was in the air... I think Brad Curry probably got a fingernail to it, but it was belted down the ground by Via Mulder. Um, it would have been the court and bowl of the century if he'd hung on to that. <laughs> it would, and he's cross with himself for not doing it, but well, he fairly whacked oh it straight Lord. back at him, didn't he? And Absolutely. Low down, he oh. stuck his hands down, and it would have had to go straight in the palms, wouldn't it? And it <laughs> Probably as well for him that he didn't get anything on it, to be honest, because that was a finger-breaker. I just wonder whether Mould was thinking to himself, we're virtually home and dry here, and I'm just going to, you know, quick 20 or 30 here, and it almost does the job. He'll fancy his, he'll want his 100. 106 is the lead. As Curry is in again, bowls, and Mould lets that one go, taken well by Carter outside the off stump, and there is no run. Filling in a bit, isn't it? It is, yeah, it is. There's Dark clouds around. Yep. Van Gogh Fox, who studied that to... Half chance. Oh, um, carefully says it's a, it was actually closer to Smith than the one he caught. Really, that's interesting. So he just didn't see it, perhaps. Or uh, now Charlotte's been back in touch. Charlotte Burton, who's the Women and Girls Development Officer at Hove, with an update on the cricket at Hove this afternoon. As Curry is in bowls, and Mulder just edges that one. Doesn't edge it at all. That's a poor description. I'm sorry. He plays it confidently onto the leg side and picks up a single to Coles. He feels it deep mid-wicket. Mulder to 85, 267 for six. So Charlotte says, just an update for you. Uh, Sussex won their semi-final against Berkshire by 64 runs with Mary Taylor scoring unbeaten 82. Sussex now take on Hampshire in the county final happening now at home. Thank you, Charlotte. Well, let me know how it gets on. We've got a couple of Sussex cricketers joining our commentary uh, this week at Hove. Uh, Georgia Adams, Chris Adams' daughter, is joining us on Thursday. And Beth Harvey is joining us on Saturday for commentary in the game between Sussex and Glamorgan. So looking forward to both uh, Georgia and Beth joining us. And Liam O'Brien, the England disability cricketer, physical disability cricketer, joining us as well for two days. So really looking forward to next week. In comes Curry, bowls to uh, Scriven. But Coles gets in the throw, but they're safely home and Coles misfields anyway. And they take a comfortable single, 268 for six. And 
another single towards safety with the lead now 108. So thank you Charlotte for the update and well done the Sussex women down at Hove today. I'm sure lots of club cricketers and village cricketers up and down the country are just glad for a bit of dry weather and a chance to dust off the pads and get out and play some cricket. Here is Brad Curry, he's running away from us. In and bowls and forward come. Oh, there could be a chance for a run out here. It was played onto the onside by Via Mulder. Uh, initially they thought of a single, but it went straight pretty much to Finhuth's apprentice at mid on. And there is no run. So after this, there are 24 overs left. There are two overs left until the new ball. We will lose two overs, whatever happens, with a change over a side. So once we get past this over, this ball, actually, there'll be 21 overs left if a wicket doesn't fall. As in comes uh, Curry. Bowls and clip down to long leg by Tom Scriven. Sorry, by VM Mold. He goes to 86. 269 for six. So the lead is 109. There are 24 overs remaining in the game. There are two overs before a new ball is available. Sussex certainly won't give up until they've had a bit of a thrash with the new ball. I'm, I'm thinking 24 overs. So two to the new ball. That'll be 22 overs. Um, I reckon they'll give it seven or eight overs with the new ball. Um, if that really... I think, uh, I think <laughs> if James they don't Cole, take any wickets, I think James Coles is coming on. There's a long debate now going on between Pujara and Tom Alsop, and Sussex need to get a move on here. The over eight is still plus two, which could be a reason for James Coles coming on. I think it's just to, just to get through to the. Yeah, he's only going to get the one, isn't he? <laughs> Possibly. But they are going to. They, they could lose. Uh, I, what, what are the odds, Smith? Sent the, the last. Oh, I oh, think please, that's a, come I, on. I think that's a reasonable. I think that's a good call. I think it could well happen. Come on. We well, take it a catch. You know, he might. He might. Uh, he might get a wicket. Will James Coles. He's going to try from the Bennett end. Steps in and bowls round the wicket to Mulder, who just leans forward and works it out to. The only man saving one in front of square on the leg side, who is at mid wicket. That's Fuller this time from Coles and is driven by Mulder, but Pajara moves smartly enough to his right mm. to make the stop. Coles bowls full on the leg stump, whipped away, flicked away really by Mulder out towards. Deep square, where the hard-working Curry picks up and throws. And Mulder settles for his single, 87 now to him. Coles in to Scriven, who's looking to sweep, and it was down the leg side. Carter took it, and he, d he was out of his ground, but it was so slow, the delivery, bouncing down the leg side, he was able just to get back into his ground before Carter could take off the bales. Coles in, gives it plenty of air, worked into the gap by Scriven, out to the sweeper on the offside boundary. One is taken for two to Tom Scriven. I think this is his second highest score for Leicestershire. Highest score, I think he made a 65 last year when he came into the side towards the end of the year. Coles in to Mulder who sweeps and sweeps for four. That was, shot. A, uh, was a bit of a... Bit of a gimme. It was a bit of a gift, wasn't it? It was uh, down the leg side. Mulder just rather contemptuously swatted it, helped it on its way down the leg side. No long leg, just curry at deep square. Sideshaver of resignation, I think, at the moment. I, I feel sorry for Coles, really. He bowled two overs early on, and that was just one over, and it's yeah. very difficult to it is. come in and make any sort of impact. Now, could it be Smith? Uh, Last over before the new ball. No. Um, oh, you spoil sport, Pajara. <laughs> um, Mike has been in 
touch from North London. He's multitasking, listening to football on one device and cricket on another device. Um, and he thanks us for the commentary and talking about the IPL. <laughs> that rather poor game in the IPL today. Um, new ball is available in one over's time. 23 overs left in the match. The game heading towards a draw, you feel now. 115 is the lead. For Leicestershire, as in comes Brad Curry. Comes in on bowls outside the off stump taken by Carter. There is no run. I would imagine that, you know, for, for half a dozen overs, Sussex will get everyone around the bat and just see if they can pick up a couple of wickets. Um, well, it would be 19 now, wouldn't it, if all yes. the wickets were to, to fall in. Well, it would be 20 if they were all to fall in this over, but 115. So it's sixes now. nudged onto the on the side fielded by Coles there is no run here's a thought for you um, Richard I mean I just imagine if there was a lead of 150 for Leicestershire and Sussex had 10 overs in which to get them and Steve Smith has played in the IPL hasn't he? <laughs> okay, and they thought well go on go and have a just see what happens what declare no 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 no. I mean say Sussex oh, have a whack. Oh, they'll, yeah. they'll go for anything you know, I'd, sure. I'd imagine they might push Smith up the order and just say well go and have a I think anything under 20s they'd have a go for I think they need to shake hands if, if, if they don't bowl Leicestershire out, basically. Uh, Curry's on his way. He's got something in his eye. Uh, the umpire hasn't even turned around. I don't think no. he's realised that he's stopped halfway in his run-up. Has he? He hasn't moved. <laughs> no, he must have heard he the footsteps come him. to a halt behind him. But uh, I think I think, I think, think the square leg umpire has said, actually, yeah. He's, he, but the <laughs> Where is he? Is he gone? Well, that's quite funny, isn't it? <laughs> Not funny for Brad Curry. He's still trying to get this fly out of his eye. Which you assume it is, or some sort of an insect. Anyway, here we go. Here comes Curry, round the wicket, bowls, forward, stretches, scribble and plays to mid-wicket. There is no run, footed by Tom Clark. He's still in a bit of discomfort. Um, more cloud drifting in behind it. There are some brighter skies, but the beautiful clear blue skies of earlier today have, have disappeared. That's, your, that's the summer done, Richard. That's the end of that. Oh, I do hope not. I'm anticipating blue skies in Hove when we come down well, in er so. early September. I hope so. Curry's back to his mark. A little gloomy, but I like perfectly good. Curry is in. Oh, stretching forward is Tom Scribble. There's been a really good partnership between these two. The credit where it's due, because these two have added 79. As I say, when these two came together, the lead was only 36, and Sussex would have harboured hopes after tea of picking up a couple of wickets. But Vian Mould has played beautifully, and he's found a, a resolute partner in Tom Scriven. And Sussex perhaps just with those four seamers bowling all day yesterday and all day today have just maybe run out of steam, which is, you know, understandable. In comes Curry. Bowls and driven away through the offside. More runs here. Henry Crocom is in hot pursuit down towards the backward point boundary. He slides and prevents anything more than a couple of runs, but Scriven goes to 44. The total to 277 for six. The important statistic is that means the lead is 117. And there was one more ball, and then the new ball will be taken. I would imagine that's going to be Hudson Prentice and Carvelos. I would imagine probably five overs each. Nothing much has happened yet. I can see Finn Hudson Prentice warming up down to our right hand side. That may be when the skippers will shake hands, but you never know. In comes Curry, round the wicket bowls, and lofted away by Scriven, and that's gone all the way for a maximum six. What a way to go to your half century. That's a wonderful shot by Tom Scriven. He raises his bat towards the pavilion. And that is an excellent half century. It's coming 74 balls. A beautiful shot picked up over long on for six runs. And it's a partnership between these two that could well have saved the game for Leicestershire. A partnership now of 87 between the pair. And what a way for Tom Scriven to go to a half century. Eight fours and one six. What a pickup that was. Seen a few of them, haven't we? Yeah. Yep. Beautiful Chris shot. Chris Wright has played one. Rishi Patel has played five or six. And now Tom Scriven has got in on the act. So 
New ball time. Yeah. Presumably. Well, you would think. Hang on, Steve Smith's taking off his cap. Oh, Steve well, Smith. they may not be taking it. They may have accepted their fate. Sussex, it is uh, two minutes to five. They may now feel that the game cannot be won. So poor James Coles, after he's won over, he's being taken off, and Steve Smith is going to have an over. Will there be a cheer? You'd have, you'd have thought there was. It would have been a, a cheer for the, the best batsman in the world, going to ply his leg spin. I'm a little surprised. I thought Sussex might have taken the new ball and had maybe half a dozen overs and just, you know, just see what happens. But may, just maybe the feeling is the bowlers have, have flogged himself into the floor here. He did. He has bowled 2.4 overs, hasn't he? So was that in the first game or? Presumably, because this is just his uh, second, isn't it? So did he bowl must at Worcester? He, yeah, 2.4 overs, it says. He must have bowled at Worcester. I don't remember him bowling. <laughs> he didn't take any wickets. <laughs> he conceded six runs from 2.4 oh, overs. Oh, it must have been right at the end when Ollie Robinson went off. Smith is in. Forward goes Mulder, who will not want to get out he to won't. Smith. Mulder it was who dismissed Smith, which is a very different thing. He will not want to be dismissed in his turn by his international rival. Smith is in. And Bowles, that was an off spinner, I think. It was a weird delivery anyway, but um, whether he's mixing it up, Mulder went back and tried to chop it away through the off side. Mid-off, who's halfway back, ran across and uh, fielded. And Mulder takes one, then walks down to have a word with Scriven, probably saying, don't give it away. Of course, the other thing is here, um, Richard, that Sussex may be thinking about this over eight as well. They may be thinking, well, we're not going to win I here. Th I think they will. Yeah, maybe, but they're all right, aren't they? Plus, I mean, they, they, usually the scorers in goes, oh, a horrible full toss from Steve Smith. And uh, Scriven sweeps it calmly out towards backward square, settles for one. They usually put it up if it's sort of going to be plus three or plus four in, in terms of warning if you know what I mean, the, the, the side that's bowling, that they're getting into a dangerous area. Smith is in, drops short this time. Mulder goes back and forces it out into the offside. But straight to Pujara, and there's no run. Smith is in, tosses it right up, Mulder <laughs> hits him very hard and straight for six. I think that went the distance, I'm pretty sure it, no, it no, didn't. I thought that, that did, uh, but anyway, I, I'm, I'm clearly wrong. So four to Vian Mulder, he is within one blow of his century and uh, probably deserves it. Could he become the well, second Leicestershire player to go to his century in this inning. 289 for six. Mulder on 96. Smith goes in, bowls to him. He on drives, but it, oh, it is going to go. Oh, it bounces, and uh, it will be just the single on that occasion. I thought it had actually gone through mid on, but it does mean that Mulder keeps the strike. He's on 97 now, 290 for six. I think once he gets his 100, the fact that Smith bowled that over suggests as Coles yeah. takes off his sweater, he's going to have a go from this pavilion end that Sussex have decided that uh, the game is no longer winnable. I think that that plus two on the scoreboard will be... Uh, I, mean, so I was talking to Graham Irwin, the Sussex scorer, about this, and he said they're quite strict on this, the umpires, and whereas in the old days you could sort of say, well, how about this and how about that? Um, yeah, but it, it does also mean that they've accepted, doesn't it? Because they would be prepared to loop, prepared. They wouldn't mind losing a point if it meant they were going to win the game. Of course, <laughs> no, of course. If you, if, you know, if you know what I mean. In goes, do you mind? No, you do. In, in goes Coles and Bowles. Mulder, a little paddle sweep attempted, but it uh, is not connected with. And, Co and uh, Carter, behind the stumps, takes the ball, takes off the bales, Mulder's feet had gone nowhere. That would have been the ball, you would have thought, because there isn't a long leg. Coles round the wicket. Bowls. Again down the leg side. That is the four that Mulder needed for his century. Well batted, Vian Mulder. He has struggled with the bat this season. What a match it has been for the Leicestershire and South Africa all-rounder. Five wickets 
in the innings when he was bowling and now 100 it's come off 164 deliveries and has we're basically saved the game for Leicestershire 16 fours in that 164 deliveries Mulder will feel he is back with the bat if he ever went away brilliant knock wasn't it you know just when his county needed him just when they were in a degree of trouble um, he's found his form as in comes James Cole's bowls and he said to the bat pad is via Mulder there's a an yeah. appeal that lacked in conviction. It was the most plaintive appeal I think I've ever seen. Yes, it was, Poor it was. James Coles. Um, what a knock that is. And as I say, he's had a willing partner here. And that, that was the... Just break off for a minute. It's forward he comes, plays to the offside. Is that the 100 partnership between these two? Uh, 98. Right. So a partnership which has um, taken Leicestershire to the draw here. Bowls flicked to long on by Mulder. He goes to 102. But it's been a wonderful effort. And Sussex are denied. Of course, we lost a game in this match to Rain. As in comes James Coles around the wicket. And just tries to tuck low out of the leg side as a loud appeal. Only from James Coles, there is no run. So we're just going through the motions now. 295 yeah, for ten, six. 10 past five. Yeah. 20 overs remaining. Um, I'm just going the details of uh, VM Mulder. What a good cricketer he is, and what a good acquisition for Leicestershire. And you have to say, Richard, you know, Leicestershire with the likes of Rishi Patel coming to the club, Rihan Ahmed. Oh, might, are they, are they might, deciding might now? Might be it. I think they're all holding If, if Leicestershire declare now, that will be it. That's yep, it. hands are being shaken. Hands shaken. The declaration, and that is that. Yep. Well, I don't think that Sussex supporters, they will obviously be disappointed that they couldn't enforce victory in the end, but I think they drove the match. Remember, they lost the toss yes, they did. in difficult conditions. They made a very impressive 430. They, they bowled well enough in the first innings to enforce the follow-on, and they bowled pretty well throughout most of today as well in difficult conditions and they had Leicestershire on the ropes at 196 for six but uh, to a certain extent they ran out of steam and goodness me who, who can blame them but remember they were bowling with an old ball on, on a flattish track in much much better conditions so they do take Sussex 12 points from the game and go back into second and can be pretty proud of their efforts I think as they go back down here comes an update for BBC Radio Leicester Players are leaving the field because they have shaken hands on the draw. Leicestershire have saved the game. It didn't look as though they might do so when they were reduced to 196 for six in their second innings. But Vian Mulder and uh, Rishi Patel both scored a hundreds to ensure that the game was saved. A lot of positives to take from the game, but also the fact that for the second game in succession, Leicestershire found themselves battling to save the game. That they've done so is good, that they're in the position to have to do so, less so, and much for Paul Nixon, the head coach, to think about. But in the meantime, a celebration, I'm sure, especially for Vian Milder, who took five wickets in the game and also scored 100. He finishes 102, not out. The Fox is 295 for six, and the game is drawn. I was just, that was a little update from Sale, so I was trying to sort of earwig into that just to see if the Leicester Tigers had, had won. I still don't know. Best if I don't find out. Applause for the players as they leave the pitch. Paul Nixon uh, raises his thumbs to the crowd. It's been a good crowd. They're very pleased that Leicester have saved the game, obviously. But as I say, Sussex, I think, have plenty of positives to take from the game as well. Indeed, they do. I think the performance of um, Tom Alsop, a lovely innings of 182. Um, that was a real highlight. James Cole's batting very nicely for his 70. Uh, I thought the bowlers, you know, you hear here without Robinson and without McAndrew, um, it was always going to be a tall order. And perhaps they run out of puff a little bit at the end. 
Um, and they'll need to think about how the attack's going to shape up for the game against Gamorgan. But a thoroughly good game. I mean, I think you have to give a lot of credit uh, to Leicestershire because, uh, you know, when Scriven and um, Mulder came together, um, they were in a bit of a pickle. But uh, just leading by 36. But they batted very sensibly. And um, in the end, they've, uh, they've comfortably held on for the draw. Thank you for your company throughout Thank these you. last three days and, and to Adrian as well, of course. And... Uh, Thank you to the Leicestershire Club for looking after us so royally, I think, oh, uh, in excellent. this game, as they so often do. Very much looking forward to our trip down to Ho for the four days, weather permitting, <laughs> in, in September. It can only be better than the first couple of days here, that's for sure. Uh, Leicestershire head to Worcester next, whereas you are at home to Glamorgan, we as, as we know. Safe journeys to all Sussex supporters back down to uh, the south coast and, and to you Adrian and, uh, and thank, thank you, you again and thank you for your hospitality Richard it's always great fun here and thank you as you say to everyone at, at Grace Road it's been a thoroughly enjoyable few days so from a rapidly emptying Upton Steel County